morning. Good morning. Morning. Papers get out on time, did they? Uh, yes. Uh, why? Oh, just checking, Kenneth. Just check. Ah, I'll take that. Thank you. We, uh, we seem to be accumulating empty cardboard boxes out here. Yeah, cos I stocked up the crisps. Yes, well, boxes don't need to be saved, do they? Just flatten them and put them out by the bins. Uh, Alec, uh, are we being oversensitive, or do we detect a curiously proprietorial manner about you today? Just think of me as Rita's representative and act accordingly. Uh, excuse me, representative? Last time you were in here, she wouldn't even speak to you. Yes, well, unbeknownst to you, all our misunderstandings have now been resolved. More than that, as a matter of fact, from now on, you can consider us an item. A what? You and Rita. Yes, so while she's still on the mend, it's only natural that I should be looking after her interests, isn't it? Been thinking about Curly again. Why? Because I don't think he's over you at all, really. I think he was just bluffing me. Is this because I said I thought he was going to stalk me? Well, I can't imagine he's feeling too good about himself. You're too nice, you. Let's go out tonight, cheer you up. Do you think that's a good idea? You know, maybe we should lie low for a bit. Don't be daft. I'm not living my life to suit him, nor are you. What a girl seeing him, eh? Did they want to wash his clothes for him or something? If we didn't see now in Spider, we still wouldn't see it in a sad old fart like you. Oh, I thought we were going to be stuck with him here all day. It just doesn't add up. Him and Rita. Well, I think she's going to have to be careful, otherwise he's going to end up giving the orders round here. Quite. I mean, you wouldn't think she'd be interested in Alec Gilroy. It's not like she's totally past it, is she? Oh, hello, Rita. Morning, Ken. Uh, another tea, please. Uh, thanks, love. Did the papers get out on time, Ken? Yes, yes. Uh, did Alec not tell you he asked the very same question? What do you mean? As your representative. Sorry? Well, that's how I described himself. Looking after your interests now that you and he are an item. We're what? That's what he said. Yeah, he did. An item. Me and Alec Gilroy? Are you joking? I must say it baffled me, Rita, after your little misunderstanding. I wouldn't trust Alec Gilroy anywhere near my interests. That's exactly what I thought. Then what's he doing saying these things? Ah, uh, I just wanted to pretend to ask you something so that I can say I have. You what? Well, whether we've got any plans to do all-night shopping, which I hope and presume we have not. Too right we're not. What, just to make life convenient for a bunch of sad shift workers and insomniacs? Nah, tell them to get lost. Well, I obviously won't tell them that because if I had wanted to be rude and unhelpful, I would have been. I'll just say that it's unlikely and that you'll tell head office that there's been a request. Which I won't. Which I'm not to know. Right. Alma, hmm? how old do you think I am? Sorry? Seriously? I mean, don't try to flatter me. Just tell me what you think. Well, why are you asking me? Just tell me. Well, I don't know. I'm not very good at people's ages. Leave off. Women over 40 are brilliant at guessing people's ages. Ah, well, I'd say that that was uh, probably about what you are. What? Well, near and near abouts. You think I'm 40, don't you? Well, I've obviously offended you now, haven't I? Because you've probably only just... I'm nowhere near. I'm 35. <laughs> You're 35? Yes. Evidently going on 45, because you tried to flatter me by telling me I was only 40. Oh, well, that just absolutely goes to show, doesn't it? Show what? Clothes. I mean, just how absolutely you judge people by what they wear. Are you trying to tell me that like, clothes make me look older? Oh, they must. By a whole decade? I think I'd just better get back to that customer. Hi. Hiya. Um, I, I need to talk to you about some overtime. We need some volunteers for this new order. So, um, did you get back in all right last night? Yeah, fine. Good. He was half asleep, thank God. 
No more chats about his plans, then? No, but I have been thinking about what you said. Yeah? Yeah. And I've been mad to tie myself any closer to him. You really would. I can't stand it, Greg. I want to go home to him. I just want to be with you. Oink. Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll ask Mike about that. But I'm sure it'll be OK. Sorry about that. That's what it's like all the time, this, isn't it? I want to put an act on just to please everybody else. It won't always be like that, though. See you later. Oh, dear. You two look like you've had a bright morning. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Ken, but I'm about to whisk this lady away out for lunch. Are you asking for a clout round the head with my handbag? What? What do you think you're playing at? Calling yourself my representative? Claiming that we're caught in? What the hell do you think you're doing? I'm just like, well, oh, what just do you mean? Just get out, Alec. Just get out. What? <laughs> I've just told you to go. Rita, please. Look, there is no point in prolonging this. Listen, Rita, have you forgotten what we said last night? How we made up, you know, and how we, how we look forward? The only making up I'm aware of, Alec, is what you're telling me now. But it's true. I came round to your flat yesterday lunchtime, you gave me a whiskey, then I asked if I could smoke, you found me an ashtray, and then we talked. And we both agreed that we wanted the same thing. To cherish each other's friendship and be there for each other. I can't cope with much more of this. But it's important, Rita. Alec, stop doing this to me. Alec, I don't know what's going on here, but it's pretty clear you should just leave it for now. These are really great if you want to give veggie bangers a gun. Right. Yeah, they're really tasty. They're great with mustard and bun. Let's go to a club tonight, shall we? Hey? We could check out this new place, Soft City. 80s retro, yeah? Well, what, you mean dancing? Yeah. Do you fancy? Well, you know, clubbing's not really my scene, but... Yeah, OK. I'll give us a break. What? Your cat school girl. Hiya. Hi, Toya. Uh, just getting some shopping in. Oh, yeah, I've come for some of those as well. They're tasty, aren't they? Great with mustard in a bun. I thought you were still a dead animal eater, Lorraine. Me? I'm an omnivore. You're what? It means I'll eat anything. I wonder if you wanted to come round to tea tonight, Spider, because I'll be more and less are going out, you see. Oh, that's really nice of you, Toya, but me and Lorraine have already arranged to go to this club. Sorry. What club? Uh, what's it called? Oh, yeah, Soft City. Oh, yeah? Well, come with you then. Oh, great. Are you kidding? No way. That's definitely not happening. Hey? Eh? Bye, Toya. Uh, could you initial this for me, please? Yeah. Yeah. How does he do it, eh? What do women see in him? Who? Emily's nephew? Yeah, can you explain it? Well, it's not my idea of a dish, but he has got a nice way about him. What do you mean, way about him? Well, you can see him, him, him being assured in himself with that nice warmth he's got. Well, it makes it seem quite attractive in a way. Uh, plus a sense of humour, which always goes for a lot with a woman, doesn't it? Cheers, right. Okay, bye, Leanne. See you Monday. See ya. Oh, good night. See ya. Rita isn't here. Uh, no, I know. I, I've just come to lock up for her. I rather thought she wanted me to do that. No, 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 no. You, you, you get off. Leave that to me. But uh, I'm not sure I can do that, Alec. What I think Rita actually wants is for you to back off and leave me and Leanne to look after here for her. Ah. Uh, but that's where you haven't got the true picture. I mean, come on, Ken, what do you take me for? 
Rita's very, very dear to me. Do you think I'd deliberately be playing games with her feelings like this? Well, I'm not saying that, Alec. It, uh, all I know is what I see. Yes, well, trust me. I'll sort it out. Don't say I'm not still a good, bad influence on you. Did you knock him off? Did I? Because, like... It's all down to your neck, that, isn't it? You won't never smoke anymore. I do when I want. Do one of these, then? No, they're for you. See what I mean? He's really changed you, hasn't he? Life changed him, too. Wow. Oh. Mm, lots of ways. Not necessarily what other people would know about, though. That he's changed you more than you've changed him. Well, you've changed and all. Since you've been keen on Spider, you've changed loads. Just wish I could change him back to the way he was. How do you mean? Back to himself. Before he got stupid over that tarty Lorraine. Hey! I think he just used me, Lee. He did, didn't he? Oh, come on, don't get all upset. I am upset. You only ever wanted me around when I was useful. Saving the Red Wreck. Helping him win votes. You don't give a toss about me, really. Oh, come on. I'm gonna spoil your fag. Oh, you don't need him, Toya. But I do. I don't want to be suspicious. It's just you keep finding excuses not to see me all the time. This is about yesterday lunchtime, isn't it? Yeah. I know for a fact Mike Baldwin didn't send you on that errand, because when I came in here, he said he didn't know where you was. I know. He told me later, thinking he'd done me a favour. What? <laughs> you don't know what blokes like Baldwin are like, do you? They feel they're honour bound not to give the game away to somebody's bird in case they drop him in it. Because basically, right, all Baldwin's mates are cheating on their wives like mad. Honest, Max. He kept stung because he thought he was doing me a favour. He'd never be straight with you about me. You'll always know with me. I may not tell you what you want to hear, but I won't lie. It's all right to know. Aye, aye. Anyone sat here? No, it's all right, Kev. No, no, that'll be great, won't it, Greg? Cheers. I'll get the drinks in. It's time again, love. Uh, yeah? No, let's get off now. Yep, yeah, uh, no time, Betty. We're going to a nightclub. Not dressed like that, you're not, are you? How I always dress. Well, I know that, love, but you'd expect to make a bit of an effort for a night out, wouldn't you? No. I'm not changing the way I look for anything or anyone. Never again. Going to the loo. Are you happy with that? I'm not just anything or anyone. Just waiting for him to realise. Now, what I'd ideally like to do is run a three-man team, you know, expand the recovery side a bit. Right. You think there's enough demand out there, then? Oh, yeah, I think so. And that'll be the beauty of buying Natalie out, giving the freedom to give it a go, eh? Thanks to my lovely wife here. It's all right in here, isn't it? Quite like it. Do you? Because I didn't know whether it'd be your sort of thing at all. Oh, what? You reckon I'm too serious to have any fun? Just you don't look much like a clubber. Ah, uh, yeah, well, you haven't seen me in action yet, have you? Thanks, Well, wish you all the best with it. Cheers, thanks. Uh, another white wine? Yeah. No, we ought to be going. Mm. Yeah, I suppose. You're so busy these days, and I gave them to myself at weekends, don't I? <laughs> well, that's a shame. I was enjoying this. Do you mind if I run you straight home, Max? Eh? I'm just feeling exhausted. I'm just going to come back and hit the sack. Mm, story of my life, that. Uh, sorry to be a drag, folks. Never mind. If you're driving. That's right. See you then. See you, Max. Uh, See you, guys. Night. How can we get so tired all of a sudden? Look at him. I feel terrible. You can't blame yourself for telling the truth. Doc, there is such a thing as tact, you know. No, you don't know, do you? Look, just make me happy. Let, let's keep him company. Oh, well, no. Uh, <laughs> all right. Hi, Curly. Oh, hello. Alma thinks we should come and join you. Take your mind off your sad and lonely life.
is it now? I've locked the cabin up for tonight. And I propose to open it again on Monday morning, unless you insist on taking these keys from me. You're determined to make me snap at you today, aren't you? I'm determined to make you tell me what it is I'm supposed to have done to change your mind about me. You know perfectly well what you've done to upset me, Alec. I don't. I haven't a sniff of a whisker what I've done, Rita. But I tell you this, it's wearing me down. Getting the green light one minute and a kick in the teeth the next. So you make your mind up what you do feel for me. Well? I'm trying to remember. It's all a blur. Look, Rita, yesterday lunchtime, we had a long talk. And then you came in the Rovers about 8, 8.15. I gave you a V&T on the house, and I said, no arguments. And you said, no, no, we've had enough of them. I honestly can't remember. You wouldn't think I'd forget something as big as that, would you? There you are. I wonder where you've got to. I should think that's totally obvious. I'll leave it out. Look, it's not like we're alone alone anyway. We're surrounded. Yeah, well, I was hoping to be here as a couple. Not with you and your groupie. You're right, Lorraine. Yes, I'm just beautiful. Why don't you and Spider carry on twirling? Sounds good to me. You coming, Spider? Uh, I think we ought to go now, don't you? Don't spoil your evening on my account. I think it'll be better all round. Look, maybe I should go and leave you two here. Yeah, maybe you should. Oh, look, no, she's too young to be wandering around on her own. We'll all go together. Oh, do what you like. Oh, Lorraine, wait. Your door. It's been a right lap in the 80s. I like great music. Yeah, but personally, I'd be like the 60s, you know, at the forefront. I'm out of here. Bye. Hang on, I'm coming with you. I'll see you later, Twin. Thanks for everything. Lorraine, wait! Why? You seem much more interested in her than in me. Oh, don't say that. Our first big date, and what happens? You bring another girl with you. I didn't bring her. You didn't tell her to go away, though, did you? Well, I couldn't very well, could I? Oh, look, Lorraine, I'm sorry. So am I. Because it just makes everything totally pointless, letting things happen that you don't want. And you could have said something to her. You're too soft. Fine. I'll call you a cab, then, shall I? No. No. What? You're going to sleep under a bus shelter, are you? Only, uh, my Auntie M's away on holiday. And it would have been nice. What? Just you and me? Yeah. If I hadn't totally blown it. Huh? I don't know. Would you be cool with that? If things had been different? Might be. If you guarantee me Toya's not going to pop down the chimney and join us. I think she's a bit large for that, don't you? Right. This is our real first date starting now, OK? Right. Come on. <sighs> I couldn't believe it when Kevin asked if we could join you. <laughs> Although... <laughs> Although... I did find it quite a turn on. I wanted to die. Like I do now. You sneaking out of bed to talk to me? Well, I had to. It's quite mad lying there listening to him snoring. I can't bear it, Greg. I just want to be with you. How do you know I don't snore? I just get so jealous seeing you and Maxine. Well, I thought 
thought she was going to be with you tonight. I just couldn't stand it. Neither could I. Especially not after seeing you. What, you mean is that why you said... I didn't face it. Actually, she was pretty cut up. I don't care. Oh, I'm just so glad you feel the same way as me. Oh, hang on a minute. Mum? I'm going to have to go. I love you. Came to find you. Well, I just came down for a biscuit. Do you want one? I thought we were on the pool. <laughs> no. Just muttering to myself. That's nice Bath. Yeah. Who was that on the phone? Hey. No, I was talking to you this time, wasn't I? Oh, uh, a girl called Anna. Anna? Who's she? No idea, actually. She was after someone called Mike. Anyway, she seemed quite happy to talk to me, so... Uh... You were talking to a wrong number. <laughs> <laughs> I think she had a few too many. <laughs> Great Kelly. What you trying to do to me? Make me jealous? Just passing the time. Passing the time to what? So I can show you you're the only girl for me. Decent magazines in here. What, like Kickboxers Weekly? Yeah. Well, what about Boot Your Head in Quarterly? Well, I've asked Rita, but she doesn't get that much call from around here, apparently. Strange, that, isn't it? Funny. I love that. Only 16. Look, do you want your money or shall I take it somewhere else? Ten top tips on how to nail your man. Oh, Toya. Oh, well, there's other stuff in it as well. What, like, interesting things to do with blusher? Oh, right up your street. Come on. Yeah, well. Or is it ten top tips on how to nail your spider, maybe? Enough off, Leanne. You've no chance. And what makes you the flaming expert? Because you're flaming being there already. He's told you already that he's not interested in girls of your age. He doesn't know what he wants. Well, he doesn't want you. Look, take it from one that knows. The deeper you get involved with someone that's not for you, the more you're going to get hurt. You don't need to worry about me. Well, I do worry about you. You're my kid's sister. Now, what you want to do is... is get on with it. Have you done the papers? Uh, no. No, well, they won't do themselves, will they? I'll do them. You bring the Chris in. They're out the back. Right. Oh, there you are. Thought you'd done a runner. Not after last night. Yeah, good, was it? Well, depends which bit you mean. Eh? Not the bit when you were doing your wild man of Borneo impression. Uh, Allegedly dancing. Oh, right. Or the bit when you were playing infant school teacher. Huh? Looking after Toya. Ah, well, um... It doesn't leave many bits, does it? Enough for me. Come here. Make the most of your eyes by looking at your hunk through lowered lids. Hey. Eh? Impress your dream boat with a wide and varied wardrobe, which can be achieved by a clever use of coordinated separates. Take the initiative. Surprise him. Go around his house. He's probably only watching telly anyway. Oh, no! Bills! 
Double glazing, win a car, go on a holiday. Somewhere. No, they just after your money, sweetheart. Oh, this looks more like it. What is it? Solicitors. It can only mean one thing, unless you take him at a court, are you? <laughs> Brilliant. Um, Kevin, girls, why don't you go upstairs and go and get your bags? Apparently Natalie's solicitor's been in touch. <laughs> Finally. And the deal's nearly done. So, what do you think of that, then? All right, well, that's good, isn't it? It's what you've been waiting for, isn't it? <laughs> you can say that again. So there's no stopping us now, sir. Good. Now, I better go to work anyway, mate. See you, girls. Mwah. See you, love. Bye. Mwah. I told you to go upstairs. Now, in future, you do as you're told, when you're told. Move, both of you. All right. Well, I was wondering if you'd had enough. No, no, I just got a bit caught with some... Right, OK, sit down, sit down. Let me see what you've been doing. All right. OK. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Crap. Don't be so hard on yourself, Toya. A lot of it is, yeah, but... <laughs> no, I'm only putting your leg. Actually, it's not bad, not bad at all. You know, the main thing here is the difference between you now and when you were at school. How do you mean? Well, what I see now when I look at this is someone who's listened to what I had to say and tried her best. It was never like that at school. Yeah, well, that's not what school's for, is it? Yes. Not if you've got mates, it's not. So it's all right, then. It's improving. You've still got a way to go, yeah. Have you got that specimen letter I gave you? Yeah. Oh, is that your magazine? Yeah, it's uh, a load of rubbish. That's what you're going to tell me anyway, isn't it? No, look, Toy, I just want you to read. I don't care if you read the labels on soup tins, just so long as you occupy your eyes and your brain. If this is what you want to read and you enjoy it, fine. Oh, no, well, it's not. It's rubbish. So, uh, <laughs> why are you reading it? Interesting articles on cooking. Leanne? What? You still haven't done the papers. What's the point of me telling you to do one thing if you go off and do another? <laughs> Don't be daft. Don't be cheeky. Rita, I was doing the papers and you told me to go in back and get crisps. Don't. I was standing here with Toya. Toya? Yeah, and you said you go in the back, get the crisps and I'll sort out the papers. Did I? Yeah, you did. Are you all right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just a bit tired. Excuse me. <sighs> What's the matter? I don't see why I have to be so posh in letters. I mean, why can't you just talk normal? Hiya. Send me the stuff or I'll come round and break your knees. Love, Toya. <laughs> well, that might not get the response you're looking for. Well, it works when I say it. Well, yes, I'm sure it does, but that's in conversation when you're face to face and people can see they don't really mean it. Well, for the most part. In letters, you tend not to see the people you're sending it to, so you need to create a good impression. Look, I'll tell you what. Instead of talking theory, why don't we put it into practice? You think this magazine's rubbish? No, it is. OK. Well, then let's write to the editor of the magazine and point out how they can improve it. Well, he wouldn't take no notice. Why not? What, if I tell him his magazine's bobbins? Ah, yeah, but you don't. That's the point. You can do all sorts of things with words. Now, why don't you think that magazine's good? Well, it's full of skinny lads with no shirts on. And what's bad about that? It's naff. Why? Now, look, you've got to think things through. No more one-line responses. Cos, well, it's like saying that all we're good for is going out with lads and now else. Instead of? Doing things we want to. Like? Kickboxing. No, I'd like to do quad biking. See, that's what I'd be good if it told you how to go about doing exciting things. Right, OK, that's where we start, then. What do you mean? You start by writing to the editor of the magazine. Camilla Morgan. Oh, sounds a right snotty cow. <laughs> well, come on, let's put pen to paper, then. So, you're not interested in boys? No, I go for older men, me. Oh. I said older men, not geriatrics. Oh, uh, Alec. What? I'm worried about Rita. Oh, really? I'm surprised there's room for anyone else in your little world. 
Look, I know we don't get on, but it doesn't mean that I'm not worried about her. Really? Well, apart from anything else, I don't want you taking over if there is something the matter. What do you mean? Something the matter? Well, she's not been herself. She keeps forgetting things. So I'm right. There is something wrong. Uh, no, no, there isn't. Certainly nothing that concerns you. No, she's just, just a bit tired, that's all. Come on, what's up? What about? I... Well, come on, Alec, you heard the girl. What's up? Oh, Vera. Get you, eh? If there's a bar or a counter anywhere, you'll be behind it. How about getting behind ours for a change? <laughs> just, just, just helping Rita out, uh, you know, while she's convalescing. <laughs> yeah, he's supposed to be doing me a favour. Aim, a favour? Oh, I know, don't remind me. I'll probably have to return it. I dare say I'll end up behind the bar at the Rovers. Much better. This is really good. Really good. I've conducted research amongst my friends at school and at home, and they would definitely support some articles on extreme sports. It's why? Yeah, well, she doesn't know that, does she? In any case, if you were serious, that's exactly what you'd have to do. What gave you that idea? The sort of thing Spider would think of. Well, you learnt from his technique and applied it appropriately. Well done. I'm very impressed. This is great. Yeah, it was just that small problem about the spelling, but we fixed that, didn't we? Anyway, it's easy enough to learn how to spell. What isn't easy is to have good ideas and the passion to see them through. Well done, Toya. I'm very impressed. Now let's post it. Yeah, well, I'm dead impressed with you and all. Oh. You're a good teacher. How come you're ever this good at school? Oh, thank you. No, I mean it. Dead good. Next week, eh? No, 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 come on, we've done the work. Let's get the result. Are you sure it's OK? I mean, you're not just saying it cos... cos I'm paying you. No, I don't work like that. Look, now we've polished it up, I reckon it's pretty good. But, to make sure that it goes, I'm going to post it. See you later. Morning. Oh, hiya. Hey, Martin! Listen, hiya, uh, do you fancy a bit of a night out tonight? Oh, I can't, mate. I'm working. Come on, late's this week. All oh, right. What about next week? Come on, early. I'll get my head down. Oh, maybe some other time than eh? Mm. Hey, listen, it's a good idea. I'll have a word with Gail about it. All right, mate. See okay. you. Okay. Yeah. See you then. Yeah. Morning, Alec. Uh, oh, Mart. Are you uh, going inside? Yeah, I was. Yeah. Look, can I have a quick word? Yeah. I know when everyone takes advantage of your professional capacity, so to speak. Yeah. But uh, I wondered if I could jump on the bandwagon. Why well, you not feeling well? No. Well, yes, I, I am, but it's uh, it's Rita. Oh, I see, right. Since she's come out of hospital, she's not been herself. How do you mean? Well, mainly forgetting things, getting confused. I, I wondered if it was part of this carbon monoxide thing. Mm, well, I can't say I really know much about that, Alec. Has she better see a GP? Well, no, not yet. Well, that's the main thing. That's the first thing she's got to do. Now, I'm not saying there's going to be any problem, but, oh. um, well... She's not as young as she used to be, is she? And she has had a major shock. No, I'd be more surprised if she wasn't showing a reaction. Oh, well, that, that, that's good to hear. Mm. Yeah, thanks, Martin. It's okay, but get her to see a GP. Yes, 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 I will. All right. And thanks. Oh, uh, not a word. Yeah, okay. Right, see ya. Bye. Hi. Sure. Uh, toast and tea for me, please, and... Scrambled eggs and bacon. Bacon? Have you not got a wide and varied wardrobe, Lorraine? Eh? Well, cos then you could do clever things with coordinated separates. What are you going on about? I just think you had that same gear on last night, didn't you? Yeah, well, I ain't been home yet to have a chance to change. <laughs> It's like, you know, we're veggies. So? Well, it's difficult. Well, why does she work here, then? Me? Eh? If she's that fond of little animals, how come she cooks them for other folk to eat? It's like me being behind the bar and being anti-alcohol. Don't make sense. 
Well, she just gets confused, doesn't she? Oh, she's all right as Toya. What's up? Nothing. Come on. What about her? She didn't go home last night. So? Oh, you mean she stayed with... You know, I'm sorry, Toya, but I did tell you. <laughs> oh, thanks a lot. Go and get a job with Citizens Advice, why don't you? Excuse me. <gasps> oh! I am so sorry. I do hope you don't have to go home and change your top. Anyway, it's great to have you back at the helm, Rita. <laughs> and it's nice to be back. I mean, hospital's all right when you're ill, but I were glad to get home. Oh, what, for a proper cup of tea? Oh, don't, what did they make theirs <laughs> with? And you know you can't complain. I mean, I knew where they were brewing it up, where they washed them bottles oh, out. Oh, don't! Yes, young man? <laughs> You see, you can't get the help these days. <laughs> now, have you got everything? Yep. You've got your magazine, mm. and you just want to cancel the papers for this weekend? Yeah, that's it. Oh, right. And it's good to have you back. Oh, thank you. Take care. <laughs> I'll see you. Bye. <laughs> now what? Nothing. Nothing. Yes, there is. I keep catching you looking at me out the corner of my eye. What's going on? Oh, I'll take a notice. It's, it's just that I'm... I'm glad to see you back on form again, that's all. Take the initiative. Go round to his house. He's probably only watching telly anyway and we'll be glad to see you. Confused, actually. What about? Kevin and the garage. I can't tell him. Well... I want to back out, believe me, but it's not easy. Yeah, just let me know if you have any more problems. It's none of my business, but it's one word, no. And the sooner the better. I'll get Mike to check these samples. Thanks for keeping me in touch with developments. What are you up to? Oh, nothing. Just taking a bit of initiative, you know what it is. Ah, yeah. Am I interrupting your telling? No, I only had it on for the news. That's better. Is it? Yeah. Can I sit down? Of course you can. So, what do you think about age differences? Between who? Men and women. I don't know. I never really thought about it. Yeah? Oh, I knew it wouldn't bother you. What wouldn't? What wouldn't bother him? Age differences between men and women. Oh, there isn't that much difference between us, is there? No. Nah. There you are, then. Why? You doing a homework project for school or something? Yeah. I'm trying to work out why so-called vegans go out with people who eat meat. Ah. Or why they flaunt themselves in leather. Oh, no, it's not her jacket. It's her dad's. Why are you wearing it? Don't let us keep you, Toya. Spider and I are planning a quiet night in. <laughs> Cheer up, love. That never happened. It already hasn't. Hey? Eh? I said it already hasn't happened. And it's not likely to happen. I live my life in a vortex where absolutely nothing happens. Nothing happens here, nothing happens at work, and nothing happens at home. Basically, I'm a nothing happening person. Yeah, that's right. We didn't like to tell you. Oh, you okay, then. Right, you having another one then? Nah, there's no point. I'm off. Right. What, home? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe I'll go to London, seek me fame and fortune. Maybe I'll meet someone beautiful. Get a life. What could they see in you? <laughs> oh, look, take no notice. I mean, you could look very attractive. What do you mean, could? 
Yeah. Well, if you wanted to, you know, if you made a bit of an effort. Hi, Kev. What? Oh, hi. Yeah, so it came this morning, so it's all happening now. Sounds like it. We'll be free again soon. Well, I'm sorry to have been such a burden. Hey, no, come on, I didn't mean it like that. We had some good times in that garage, you and me. Yeah, I, uh, I get the picture, Kev. It's all right, love. I'll serve Ken. Uh, usual, is it, love? Yes, please. Yeah. So what's Alex's little game, then? Oh, I really don't know, Vera. Yeah, well, summer's going on. He's got his feet firmly under the counter at the cabin, hasn't he? Yeah, well, you know, I don't indulge in idle gossip or speculation. Absolutely. But on this occasion, I think you're dead right. Do I want a luxury holiday for two? Yes, but not with you, thank you very much. Do I want a loan? No thanks. Do I want my windows cleaned for free? No, sir. Do I want two free vouchers to introduce me to new white? Yeah, all right, I'll have a bit of that. Well, well, well. Raquel. How are you, then? Oh, you're fine. Well, that's good. And you hope I'm OK too? Ah, oh, cheers. Things are going really well. <laughs> Scuba diving. Oh, very nice. Have you met anyone yet? <laughs> <laughs> I have. Better for all concerned, me, you, and Justin. Justin? Divorce. Divorce? Shut up, will ya? Can't you just shut up, please? Oh well, another day, another dollar. Yeah, well, I hope it's more than that, love. Oh, it's good to see you back to your old self again. Oh, love. You know, feeling better again. Again? From what? Oh, nothing. Well, that's a funny thing to say, lass. What do you mean? Come on. Well, you've been a bit unwell, haven't you? But you're over it now. Right, best be off then. See you tomorrow. Alec. Evening. The aunt says I've been ill. Uh, yes, you have, but you, you're better now. <laughs> Rita. Rita. Oh. Rita, what on earth's the matter? I'm frightened. This is, this is how it feels, Alec. This is how it feels, Alec. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> Morning, Alec. Have you had any breakfast? I'm not hungry. See, hungry or not, you've got to eat something. I'll make it. What do you want? Cornflakes? Or I could do a boiled egg if you like. I've told you, I don't want anything. 
and stop bossing me about and telling me what to do. I'm all right. I'm OK. I've done nothing wrong with me. Oh, you're OK. You sit there and tell me that you... Listen, last night in that cabin, you were practically hysterical. Damn it, you didn't even know who the hell I was. Me. And how far do we go back? You're looking at me as though I was a creature from the Black Lagoon. That's how everybody looks at you. You never notice. See, lady, you can't laugh your way out of this. You're not OK. I know it and you know it. You can't carry on as though there's nothing amiss. Yes, I can. And I'm going to. I've got the shop to look after. Oh, I'll the paper. What's it? Look, they've been done two hours since by me. Oh, Alex, thank you. You are kind. Oh, give over. Well, the paper lads are all out. Ken's serving in the shop as we speak, and Leanne will be clocking on any minute. The shop's all seen to. All you've got to do is worry about yourself. Alex, was I really as bad as that last night? You're not just saying that to put the wind up me. I wouldn't do that. Greta, do you really not remember? I knew there was something. But what it was. Right. That settles it. You're going back to the doctor's. Oh, no, Ali. Oh, yes. Hey, I was just thinking. Bit of a brainwave, actually. While your aunt is away, it gives us a great chance. For what? Having a party. What do you think? Yeah, great idea. Hi, Toya. Oh, come on, what's wrong? Take the notice. Did you see that? She's not even talking to me now. Yeah, must be your lucky day. Oh, yeah. He's all fancy talking, just like the rest of him. Who, Spider? Gone off him, have you? Or are you just jealous of his girlfriend? Me? Jealous of her? That'll be the day. He's an hypocrite, she's welcome to him. Oh, yeah, I can see that. Well, Mrs Sullivan, how are you feeling? Well, the nearest I can tell you, I feel like you do when you're getting flu. Only all the time. My head's mozzy, I'm dizzy. I feel awful. I feel irritable. I'm snapping at people. I feel confused. I go in the stockroom at the back of the shop for something, and by the time I get there, I've no idea what I've gone for. I keep forgetting things. And now, sometimes I don't know people. People I've known for years. Well, I can see it's very upsetting for you. I can only tell you that it's part of the after effects of the carbon monoxide poisoning. And I can only say that it does eventually clear up in most cases. So this is it? I'm stuck with it? I'm afraid so, for the time being. You're on your own at home, I see. I am, yeah. Yes, that does worry me, I have to say. Oh, but uh, my neighbour, Mr Gilroy, he's in the flat next door. He's very good, though. He's right there next door. And he's a very old friend. Oh, he's been very good. Very good. It was him that made me come to see you. He's outside waiting to take me home now. Ah, well, uh, I think we should have him in here for this discussion, if you've no objection. Come. Um. Come for the rotor. What? For the checkout. She said you've got to do a new rotor. Oh, no, I've not got round to it yet. Checkout rotors. What the hell do they matter? Well, if we didn't have them, there'd be nobody on the till to take the money off the customers. Hey, what's up, Curly? What's wrong? So that's what it's all about, is it, eh? Shifting tins of beans and bags of frozen chips from one door to another via the uh, punter's shopping bags, of course. And that is supposed to be a life. No, it's a living. Life's what you're supposed to get in your spare time. Hey, come on, Curly, what's happened? I got a letter from Raquel in sunny, exotic Malaysia. Oh, I know. Far away places, no stuck here. Makes you want to rush out and get on a plane. 
I nearly did that once, you know. I thought I'd just jet off and walk back into Raquel's life shouting, surprise, surprise. Well, I'm not sure that that would have been such a good idea. Well, I wouldn't worry about that now, not after this letter. She wants a divorce. She's met someone. Must be someone special, eh, if she wants her freedom. Must be, uh, Mr. Wright. I thought I was Mr. Wright. Not for long, though. Oh, Kelly, I am sorry, but... Well, I suppose this was bound to happen. I mean, how long have you two been separated? Two years? Well, sooner or later, it had to come to this. Well, no, I was just kidding myself. Thinking that one day she'd come back, say she should never have walked out on me and we should start again. I'm very good at kidding myself, Alma. Telling myself that everything's gonna be all right, things will book up, my life's not a total disaster waiting to happen. Well, it isn't! Oh, I know. It's already happened. It's been happening for years. If Mrs Sullivan is to cope, you see, it's a question of her getting support. Oh, it'll be there, Doctor. Don't, don't you worry. And she needs to reorganise her life, of course, to make things easier for her. Oh, you don't have to convince me. I've said to her, take it easy. Let me handle things, haven't I? Mm. Yeah. No, no, she'll be well looked after. I'm sure she will. Oh, uh, by the way, Mrs Sullivan, just a thought. Try keeping a notepad by you, jotting down the events of the day. A sort of diary, if you like. Help you keep track of events if your memory's a little unreliable. Yes, I'll try that. Time is your best ally here. To give yourself the chance to get better. Anyway, um... Come and see me again next week. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, can I just say something, Doctor? Yes, of course, Mr Gilroy. Uh, she has this shop. Uh, it's a news agent. It's hard work and long hours, even when you can get decent stuff. Now, should she be doing it? Well, ideally, no. Not in my opinion. There, you see? What did I tell you? It's not just me. No, I, I keep telling her that she ought to put a manager in. I better still get shut of it altogether. I mean, it's a decent little business. She'd get a good price for it, you know. What Mr Gilroy's saying does make a lot of sense. Well, it might to you, and it might to him, but it doesn't to me. It's my shop, my business and my life, and it's not up to Mr Gilroy to make my decisions for me. Thanks. Hi, Toya. Yeah, what can I get you? Nothing. I came in for a word with you. It's a cafe. They pay me to serve food. Now, what are you ordering? Hey, listen, don't be awkward. I came here to make things right between us. You totally blanked me this morning on the street. What was that all about? You know what that's all about. Her. Lorraine, you mean? Oh, come on. Ever since she's come along, you've been rotten to me. You never talk to me anymore. Not like you used to. You never tell me interesting things. You spend all your time talking to her. Be reasonable to her. She's my girlfriend. I've got to talk to her. I mean, that doesn't mean that you and me still can't be friends, does it? Yeah. Now, excuse me, I've got a customer to serve. No. Come on. As far as I'm concerned, you're still one of my best friends, all right? Yeah, what can I get you? You know, Fred, I'm sick of that town hall already. You can't believe how boring it is. Refuse disposal, park toilet arrangements, and should we twin our town with somewhere in outer Mongolia or something? beginning to regret I were elected. Nay, no. nay, this is never the real Audrey I'm hearing. This is not the charismatic councillor Mrs Roberts we all know and love. They're all just sat there, you know, swapping favours. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Well, there's no wrong with that. You'll be right with me and I'll be right with you. The motto of mine is that always has been. Oh. And the women councillors, honestly, <laughs> I don't think I'm on the same planet as them. Do you know... If I was to mention Giorgio Armani, they'd think he was a communist hero. Oh, well, not everybody's into football, are they? <laughs> what you want to do is to think of a way Weatherfield can celebrate the year 2000. Fred, I cannot think of anything on an empty stomach for heaven's sake. What's happened to our dinner? Oh, yes, I Jack! What? Me and Councillor Mrs Roberts are famished here. How long's us dinner going to be? Six inches. It's a sausage. <laughs> Six inches, it's a sausage. You've got a lot from here. No. Do you know you are a misery? That was one of old Mother Riley's best gags, that, you know. Oh, really? Well, that was before my time. Alfred remember that. Fred, what's up with you? That's it. Fans had a millennium problem. It's brilliant, though I say so myself. It'll put Weatherfield on the map. 
I've met you famous. What will? The world's longest sausage. Pardon? The world's longest sausage, made, cooked, and served right here in Weatherfield with a decent length for every man, woman, and child in Borough. It'll grip the imagination of the country, will that? Am I right, Jack? How long does it have to be to break the world record, Fred? Offhand, I don't know, but it doesn't matter. We can do it better. My word, Audrey, this'll get you talked about. I say, this'll get you talked about. <laughs> Girl, you're an intellectual, aren't you? Well, I suppose, compared to some people... No, 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 no. I mean, you, yeah, you read a lot of books, don't you? Have you got the one with all the world records in it? What if I have? Eh, you, you were an intellectual. Right, nipple on the Yeti for his son. Jack, I'm in the middle. There's a pint in it for you. Yeah, all right. Uh, I don't know why I bothered. Good lad. Come on, Audrey. See, you'd be an household name. The woman behind the world's biggest sausage. I don't think it's me, Fred. No, I'm sorry. You'd get your picture in papers, and I don't mean the Gazette. I mean the tabloids, the nationals. They love out like a big sausage, them. Yes, well, I suppose so, yeah. This is cool Britannia. Tony Blair, I say, Tony Blair, I'd come and eat the first link, I bet. Oh, yeah. I can see a title in this. Dame Audrey, I shouldn't wonder. I was very impressed with your doctor. I thought he talked a lot of sense. Well, you would, wouldn't you? The pair of you sorting out my life between you. With your best interests in mind. I don't want to stop work, Alec. I know it's hard, I know it's tying, and I get fed up with it from time to time. But it's what I do. And something tells me inside that I'd be a fool to give it up. I mean, if I got shook, what would I have to get up for in the morning? Who's are these hot pots? Uh, Fred Elliott's and Audrey Roberts. Oh. Alec Gilroy's in the sitting room. Who do you think's in there with him? Oh, Rita Sullivan. What's she doing in our sitting room? Don't ask me. Here, did you hear that? Rita Sullivan and that Alec in our sitting room. He's showing her the property, isn't he? There's all sorts of things you could be enjoying. I mean, Travelling. All sorts of things. And I tell you straight out, Rita, I wouldn't mind enjoying them with you. Yes, I admit I'm not just thinking of what's best for you. I'm thinking of myself and all. Is that some kind of offer, Alec? Well, I, I get lonely, you know. Running this place with the Duckworths under my feet. I mean, they're not my idea of company. You and me, though, I think we could be a good team. Jack? Yes, yeah, come on. What? What? They're in there plotting now, that Rita Sullivan and Alec. They'll be showing their books, see how much this place is worth. Oh, you bet you. You, you didn't actually see them? No, but... Well, you stop getting your knickers in a twist, Mom, I heard him. I was listening at the door. I heard him say to her that he was sick of working with me and you and he wanted her in. Look, he wants rid of us, Jack. He wants us out of this pub. <laughs> Yeah, the world's biggest sausage, 1995, Ontario, Canada. 46.3 kilometres long. Ooh, what's that in proper money? 28 and three quarter mile. Give over. 28 flaming mile? And three quarters. Cheers, Jack. Oh, yeah, well, that's torn a piece out of that pair of trousers, hasn't it? Let's have a look. <laughs> Hey, good Lord. Well, there you are, Fred. Look, I'm due back at the salon. Actually, I never thought a sausage was quite the right image for me, anyway. No, hang, hang on, hang on. Wait this way, though. And now, uh, well, perhaps I were a bit ambitious thinking about the world's longest sausage. How about going for the world's biggest meat pie? Meat pie. Oh. Now then. Oh, I'm not, I can't. I've not got my glasses. It is. Uh, it's meat pie. New York City. 10.6 tons. <laughs> Flaming yanks. Uh, what? Out of your league, Fred. I'm off to that. No, don't be hasty, love. No. I'll, I'll see you for a drink this evening after work. In the meantime, I'll get my thinking cap off. Yes, all right. Ta da, all. Shut up. Innkeeper! I'll have a refill in that. 28 mile. It's out of all proportion. Tell you what, Fred. Why don't you turn the idea around? <laughs> what do you mean? Go for the world's smallest sausage. I bet you could compete there. 
I shan't dignify that remark with a rejoinder. OK. See ya. It's looking good, this party. What's up? Oh, I don't know. It's, it's just this thing with Toya. Oh, forget it. She's just a mixed-up kid, isn't she? She's that funny age. Yeah, so am I. But I have been all my life. Oh, come on, Spider. Why let a sulky kid get to you? Oh, look, you know what people are like round here. Half of them think I'm a freak. She's been a help. You know, a few campaigns, shake them up a bit. She's been there in the thick of it with me. I'd best get ready for work. I'm due at the Rovers at five. A kid like Toy, she's got ideals. Maybe kids forget them all. Maybe she will, I don't know. I just don't want to feel responsible if she does. You're making it complicated and it's not. She's got a crush on you, that's all. That's why she hates me. And if she's going to stop tagging round after you, well, if you ask me, I've done you a favour. How can you lie there dozing when you're in trouble? I wasn't dozing, I was thinking, or trying to do. Give over. There's only me does any thinking round here. No, I will sit down and give your brains a rest. Jack, you've got to do oh. some of I heard Alec Gilroy and that Rita plotting to get us out the pub, and I know that's what he wants. Peter, what he wants and what he gets will be two different things. Yeah, but he's, he's crafty. He's cunning. He can run rings round you. Oh, I'm going to tackle him about it. Oh, for it. God's sake, don't do that. Might be what he wants. See, you're worried and all, aren't you? You sit there cracking on, there's not to worry about, and you're as fretted as I am. Oh, come on, let's go and open up. All right, Sawyer, so, uh, I saw you from upstairs. What are you reading? I'm not, I'm writing. Well, all right, then, what are you writing? None of your business. Oh, look, come on, Tori, it's always you going on about me being awkward with you. Now you've been dead off with me. Lorraine must be out, cos you will not be talking to me over your backyard wall if she was around. Well, actually, Tori, I'm talking to you over my backyard wall to invite you to a party at mine on Friday night. I'd like you to come. Party? Yeah, that's right, and you're invited. Dunno, I might be busy. Oh, look, don't do me any favours, will you, Toya? Look, I want you to be there, OK? Thank you. The world's longest sausage. It were a belting idea, you must admit. Oh, Fred, stop harping on about it. I mean, 28 miles or whatever. I mean, you couldn't possibly make one that long in Weatherfield, could you? Tricky, I grant you. Mm. Any row, we're in the right area. I mean, they were out in that book of Curly Watts about top pots, were they? We could go for the world's biggest top pot. Oh, I can't say I'm smitten with that. Black pudding, then. The world's biggest ever black pudding. Do you know, it's just dawns on me. All these schemes you keep coming up with, there's always meat involved. Well, I'm a butcher, aren't I? It's what I know about. Yeah, and I suppose if one of these ideas is taken up, you will provide the meat at a very nice price. What's wrong with that? Somebody's got to supply it. You make a name for yourself and I make a fair and reasonable profit. Oh, right. You scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. Sounds good to me, Audrey. Not only in the way of business, neither. <coughs> Oh, are you suggesting something naughty? Naughty but nice. <laughs> I tell you what, let's uh, continue to discuss these matters somewhere decent, you know. Over dinner, somewhere nice in town. My treat. Go on, seeing as it's business. Certainly it is. Business with pleasure. Now, wrong in that. No. Oh, hello, Audrey. Martin, hello, sweetheart. Mm, can't stop busy, busy, busy. Oh, yeah, council stuff, is it? Oh, I'm telling you, I'm running off my feet. Yeah. See you, love. See you, then. <laughs> we'll go to Luigi's. Oh, lovely. He does a wonderful lamb shank. Mm, lamb shank. <clears throat> Evening. Pint, please, Lorraine. Right. Hey. Your mother-in-law wants to watch herself with that Fred Elliot. Why? Well, I've just heard him talking to her. Yeah, going on about his high-quality sausage. Uh, don't tell me any more, Vera. You know I'm too young. Well, thanks for the lift, Alma. Listen, uh, what I was telling you about Raquel, uh, I'd be obliged if you keep that to yourself. Cross my heart, I won't say a word. Even Michael. Especially him. So what are you going to do, give her a divorce? 
Well, that's what she expects me to do. Good old Curly playing the gentleman yet again. What I've discovered is when you're nice and considerate to women, well, they don't respect you for it. In fact, they practically despise you for it. They think you're soft. Yeah, well, I know what you mean. I but... bet you're thinking, go on, Curly, write to her, give her the divorce, aren't you? Yes, I am. But for your sake, not Raquel's. It's no good hanging on to what's gone. You've just got to go forward like she's doing. Yeah, well, I'll think about it. See you, Alma. See ya. Oi, Curly, just a mate. Look, just... if you want favours, I'm not in the mood, all right? Oh, yeah, well, uh, in fact, it was to invite you to a party. Oh? Yeah, my place, Friday night. A few friends, a few drinks. I hope you'll come. Lorraine will be glad to see you. Right. Oh, hello, stranger. Uh, give us a large Irish, will you? Oh, well, customer tonight, are we? You'll have forgotten what it's like this side of the bar. There's enough of you, isn't there? You can cope without me for once. Yeah. OK, I was only kidding. Uh, well, anyway, have a drink with me. All right, I will. Look at him. He'll be stood there, supping while we do all the work. Just leave it alone, Bill. He thinks he's a cut above us. Won't care, he's done hardly hands turn for the last fortnight. But he'll expect the same money, won't Peter, he? Peter, will, will you just leave it? Will you leave it? Simmer down. Yeah, well, I'm going to tell him I want a meeting. Hey. I don't care what you say, I'm going to tell him. He's not going to walk all over me. Alf! All right, mate. You have any pint? Ah, huh, why not? Pint for Alf. Same again for me, please, Peter. Uh, there's Audrey not here yet. She should have finished work by now. Yeah, she was in. Uh, <laughs> she went out of here with Fred Elliot. Ah. She what? Uh, Vera means she went out of the pub with Fred Elliot. <laughs> Council business or something, wasn't it? Yeah, well, it'll be funny business if it's up to do with Fred Elliot. <sighs> Cheers. Cheers. And I'm sorry if I was a bit snappy with you earlier on. It's all right. Anyway, how's Rita? Any better? Well, she thinks she is, but I don't. She doesn't hardly know what she's doing or where she is sometimes. But she'll not take any notice of me. I tell you, it'll all end in tears, will this? Rita! Hey, hello, hello, Betty. I am glad to see you. How are you feeling now? <laughs> oh, a lot better than I was, Betty, oh, good. thank you. Good. Tired, though. Yeah, you look tired. Mm. I think you should get off home and put your feet up. Do you know that's just what I'm going to do? Yeah, me and all. <laughs> da -da -da. See you later. Bye bye. bye. Too well, so I've got to sort out papers. You going to Spider's party tonight? Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, me and all. Oh, have you been invited? Yeah, Spider asked me. I thought he was with Lorraine. Maybe, maybe not. Well, you don't give up, you do you? It's hmm. unlocked. Peter? Oh, no. <laughs> about? It's a shop, Mr Gilroy. We've had a break-in. A break-in? Where? Rita! Yeah, it was a right mess. Sweets all over the place. Mustard flag's gone. Poor old Rita. That's all she needed. The door went broken or out. Just open. Are you off to Spiders tonight? I don't know. Been invited. Given up on Lorraine, have you? What do you mean? Oh, don't tell me you don't fancy her. I'm here for a bacon butty. Not to discuss my private life, all right? Sorry, just trying to help. Oh, yeah. You're just too straight, Curly. That's your problem. Is that bad? Well, if you want to pull a girl. All right, Toya, in your expert opinion, what should I do? Haircut, new clothes. You just need to make yourself look more interesting, that's all. Oh, cheers. You really know how to start a person's day off, don't you? Hi, Al. Hi, Hi Curly. Curly. I'll have a cup of tea, love, and a slice of currant bread with real butter and none of that chemical nonsense. Right, Alf. 
Now, what is it that's so urgent that it can't wait and can't be said over a phone? Have a shop to open and a living to make, you know. I know all about you making a living. I don't think you'll be too pleased to hear what I've got to say in the shop. I'd hate to embarrass you in front of your customers. Well, come on, then. Put us out of my suspense. What is it bothering you? I'll tell you what's bothering me, Fred Elliot. You are. You and your involvement with my wife. I mean, where are the police? It's been an hour. Well, there's no rush now, is there? Yes, well, they wrote, come nine o'clock, I'm getting on to your insurance people. I've told you, it could be my fault, Alec. I could have left the keys in that lock last night. Yes, you could have, but you're not sure, are you? Well, I've looked high and low this morning. There's no trace of them. No, because they've stolen them. Well, if they did, they stole them from that lock. Yes, well, the insurance company don't need to know that, do they? Yes, they do, Alec. I'm not starting lying for the sake of a few fags. Yes, but it's not just fags, is it? I mean, it's your locks and all the inconvenience. All them locks will have to be changed, you know, and that's going to cost. So it'll cost. Well, I'm still going to ring your broker. All right. Uh, Alec, no hard truths. All I did was come up with an idea. If it's not to your taste, that's fair enough. I know you're big on the Millennium Trust, and I don't wish to cause you any embarrassment. I'll make sure you don't and all. Well, I do realise that when you're talking sausages, then there's meat to be sold. And I also realise that I may well be one of them who puts in to supply it. But I do not want, nor do I expect, any favours. Is that so? It is. Then why did you take my wife out for dinner last night? A simple working meal to evaluate the probable advantages of such a project in promoting her council career. I know what you're after. I know what you've been after for a long time. And I'll tell you this, Fred Elliot, you keep your sausage to yourself. I beg your pardon? You'll do more than beg my pardon if you ask my wife out to dinner again without asking me first. Now stay away. Understand? Hiya. Hiya. What can I do for you? I just wondered, uh, is Fiona in? Oh, no, it's a day off. Can I help you? Well, yeah, yeah, I suppose you could, yeah. What is it, then? I was just wondering, uh, could you fit me in at lunchtime? Yeah. Just a trim, is it? Well, a bit more than a trim, actually. <laughs> Go on, then. Sounds interesting. Well, I want to change, you see, but I'm not quite sure what. Oh, well, I've got some pictures you can look at. Really? <laughs> yes, the cuttings from magazines. Shall I go and get them? No, I haven't got time now. Could you have them ready for me at lunchtime? Yeah. Should we say about one-ish? Yeah, one-ish, yeah. All right, then. See you then. Thanks. Hi. <laughs> oh, hello. Yes. All right, I'll tell him. Bye. That were Vera. You should have been at a meeting ten minutes since. Oh, did you, uh, did you tell her I was busy? No, I said you'd be there. I can manage now, thank you, Alec. You've got your own business to run. Well, if you say so. I do. And I'll get Leanne to make that list when she comes back from papers. Right, well, I'll see you later then. And thank you again. I told you you'd be there, didn't I? Well, he will be. He lives next door to the woman. Yeah, and he'd like to be closer still if he could. Vera, Alec's private life has got nought to do with us. If he wants to shack up with Rita Sullivan, then that's his business. Well, it is our business if we don't get it sorted out. So get your head out of that paper, cos I want some backing when he now, comes look, through that v, door. V, V, we are partners. We have a legal document that says that we own half this pub. And as long as we have that, nobody and nout can do out to shift us. Yeah, but... It could sell out, couldn't it? He could sell up and force us into buying him out. We couldn't afford to buy him out, V. No, but with her money behind him, he could buy us out. Oh, you're in, are you? Yes, and this better be important, Vera, because you've dragged me away from a very delicate situation. I bet I have. So, come on, then. What is it you want to talk about? Right, right. Well, well, we are partners, aren't we? Well, I'm well aware of that, Jack. Right. Well, as partners, do you Yeah, say? as partners, we want to know if there's going to be any alteration in your marital status. No, no, no. no. But... What, what Alvira means, what Alvira means, she's feeling a bit edgy, you see, at the moment, about this partnership. And she wants to know, is it still just the three of us? 
Unless you've a sleeping partner under the bed, Jack. Well, they are, you see, V. So we continue, then, uh, as we were, just the three of us? Well, that rather depends on you. I mean, keep dragging me back from important business to answer stupid questions, you could well be down to two. Well, I'd hardly call having a cup of tea with Rita Sullivan. Important business. Vera, for your information, the cabin was burdled last night. Rita, needless to say, is very shocked and very upset. So if there's nothing else, I'll get back to her, because I think her need's slightly greater than yours at the moment. Somebody's been selling the family silver. You'd need to, the price of this lot. Let's have a look, then. Ooh, very nice. Mm. Lovely. You old devil, you. Hey, less of the old, will you? Well, I mean, you look as old as you feel, don't you? And I feel old. Well, you'll look like a spring chicken by the time I finish with you. Just cut a bit off the side and round here, and then... I... Ooh, you have been busy, boy. Well, I wasn't sure, you know. I... No, it's really nice. Really? Yeah, well done, mate. It's really cool. Cool. <laughs> And have I got the haircut for you? Yeah. Here you go, take a seat. Thank you. There you go. Oh, come on. No, it'll knock years off you. It's a bit bold, isn't it? Well, it makes a statement. Does it? Yeah. Right then. Let's make a statement. Thanks for doing it so quick. Uh, right, you go and have your break now, Liam. And uh, that's for all your hard work this morning. I'll be back in an hour, then. Right, love, and, and thanks again. Uh, Rita, there's something I need to have a word with you about. Oh, yeah? I found these uh, when we were tidying up earlier. What are they? They're bills. And you opened them? Oh, Alec, you uh, know... Unpaid, mostly. And several reminders. Oh, Alec. Uh, look, I didn't want to upset you, but I thought we'd best have a word. I must have just forgot. Oh, honestly, they talk about, I mean, leaving keys in door and now not oh, paying oh, bills. It's easily remedied. I'll see to them for you. You just go and get your books and I'll sort these out. Would you? Yes. On one condition, that you go upstairs and have a lie down. You look whacked out. I am. Right, well, I'll wait for Liam to get back and then I'll bring these up when they're sorted. Thank you, Alec. What sort of parties? Fun parties, Greg. Bottles of extremely cheap bubbly and lots of sexy knickers. Where? Other people's houses, be advertised. And for using their house, they get free drinks and uh, cheap prices. And who does the selling? You're not thinking of me. No. I wanted to try the knickers on, not take them off. <laughs> <laughs> now I thought of Liz. Liz McDonald? Yeah, she's sexy, she's intelligent and she can work evenings. Don't you think she's a bit, well, cheap looking? I mean, she might frighten your regular housewives off. No, she's sexy. But we're selling to women, not men. No, we need someone who'll give them a bit of confidence, make them feel it's all right to buy this gear. Well, I suppose we could advertise. Why bother? We've got the perfect woman on the factory floor. <laughs> who? Sally Webster. Sally? <laughs> oh, Sally wouldn't do it. Well, she might if I persuaded her. Well, I couldn't. What chance have you got? Do you mind if I try? No, no, not if you feel so strongly. Be be interested. Yes, of course, but I'm telling you. Sally won't do it. Leave it with me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hiya, Greg. Mike. Hey. You're not going, are you? Ah, afraid so. See you later. Hey, I thought you might like to know. There's a party tonight over at number three. Our toy is going. So. Well, I thought we might have a few bevies here, then slide in when no one's looking. There's free nosh, and there's bound to be plenty of ale. Sorry, Les, I'm a bit booked tonight. All right. Where are you going, then? Well, I'm meeting someone. Alas, I'll bet. Could be. See ya. Right. These, uh, These bills that I found, uh, I've checked your books and I've made a list. Did you find some more? Well, one or two outstanding, but, I mean, they're no real problems. I've sorted them all out, see? So if, uh, if you'd like to go and get your checkbook, we can knock them off while I'm still here. Make sure I don't forget them again, you mean? No, Rita, it's not your fault. Maybe not. But how much longer can I go on like this, Alec? You'll be fine. It's just 
Well, the way things have been, it's worn you down. What you need is a good rest. I think I do. How do you like to go away for a few days? With who in shop? Well, Leanne and Ken and me overseeing job. I don't think I fancy going anywhere on my own, Alec. Well, you wouldn't be on your own, actually. You'd be with Mavis. Mavis? Mm. In Carmel. <laughs> I took the liberty of ringing her, actually. She said she'd be delighted to see you for a few days. Well, she doesn't know what I'm like at the moment, Alec. Yes, she does, because I've explained everything. And if you're agreeable, she's expecting you this afternoon. This afternoon? Mm. I'll run you up there. Hey, nay, Alec, you've done enough. No, it's no problem. That is, if you really want to go. Oh, a few days in the lakes, Alec, would be wonderful. Right. Well, we'll get these knocked off, and then you can pack, eh? <laughs> Where have we got anybody for it? Well, the boat came from CID this morning, dusted everything down for fingerprints, but it was a waste of time. And how's Rita? Well, she's gone off to see some mates somewhere, so Alex's looking after the shop. <laughs> but that's a blow. Well, I suppose it could be an old woman at times, but he's a bit of a down. I happen to open up every morning and saw papers there. No, I don't mind. She must trust you then. Why should she? No reason. No. Well, keep your opinions to yourself, then. Uh, yeah. shall we see who's at the door tonight? Yeah, OK. Yeah, it's all right. Do you want a swig? Uh, no. No, no, no. So, um, and listen, go easy, eh? Strong stuff, is that? I just want to thank you for inviting me to your party, Spider. Yeah, right. Um, shall we see who's at the door? Hey, hey, hey. It's, it's, it's all right, Spider, mate. Um, I'll get it. Curly. Curly. Bottle. <laughs> uh, Toy, can you put that in the kitchen? What? Yeah, on second floor. Lorraine! You look terrific, Curly. Don't I? I really like the jacket. Yeah. Hello. Oh, Lucy. Lucy's a friend. Beautiful friend. Can I get you a drink? Where's the booze then? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, on. it's party time. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he looks great, doesn't he? Fantastic. I mean, fancy you believe him. <laughs> so? It's a bit old for you. It doesn't mean me. Ah. Sorry, I'll stick to Spider if you don't mind. <laughs> Is he still not back yet? Don't worry about it, Vera. We can manage without him. Only because I'm stuck out here every time anybody wants a sandwich. And he knew Lorraine wanted night <laughs> off. <laughs> Will you just leave him alone? Don't you think he'll upset him enough for one flaming day? Well, I was thinking, though, uh, if she's bad enough to be shipped off to Mavis's for a few days, it might not be long before she packs it in at cabin for good. So? So where's she going to go then, eh? Oh, come on, she's either going to swap a, a shop for a pub. That is frying pan and fire, isn't it? No, what I mean is they might both decide to cut the losses and up it. Uh, and that, where does it leave us, eh? We'll be looking for somebody else. Vera, Vera, when that happens, we'll worry about it. Until then, we won't. All right. Yes, Greg. <laughs> uh, point, please, Jack and Fred. Scotch and threat. Right. So go on, tell us then. What? Do you get as many chances with the ladies on road as they say you do? No, it's just a big myth, Fred. It's not, is it? Oh, well, I'm very sorry for you, then. I thought a good-looking lad like you would be pulling them all, single or married. Married? Aye. You ever get involved with married bins? No, it's too risky, Fred. You do say it adds a lot of spice to a fellow's life. Yeah, well, I wouldn't know. You want to... Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be in. Hey, oh. <coughs> Excuse me. There. Thank you for the drink. Uh, two packets of cheese and onion crisps and two cans of lager, please, Jack. Take away. Coming up, sweetheart. Cheers. Hiya. Have a drink while you're waiting. Uh, yeah, go on. I'll have a bottle of lager, please. Right, lovey. I've got an offer for you from Mike Baldwin. Oh, aye. And what's that, then? Well, he wants you to go to people's houses and organise knicker pies. Eh? Knicker parties? <laughs> you can organise a knicker party. You know what I was sending out of the week, so I love it. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. Yes, sir. <laughs> What sort of a woman does he think I am? A person with the power to persuade. Yeah, well, you can tell him to stuff it. I'm not doing knicker parties. I can't think why he asked me in the first place. Because I suggested it. But 
If you want to sabotage our only chance to be alone without suspicion three nights a week. Modern astronomy is divided up into several branches. There's astrometra, which is the observational study of their celestial bodies. And then there's celestial mechanics, which is the mathematical study of their movements, which can be explained in the theory of gravitability. You see, and then there's astrophysics, which is a study of the physical and the chemical reaction to the spectral zone, you see? And then there's cosmology, you probably know this one, which is the study of the universe as a whole. We're so clever. No, not really, no. It's so elemental. Yeah, it all goes back to the Big Bang. I've often looked up yeah. at the stars on a bright night and felt so... Insignificant? Yes, insignificant. When I think that life has taken so many millions of years to get there, and by the time it does, the star's perhaps not there anymore. Right, it makes you think, doesn't it? It must be great to see it properly. What, through a telescope? It's been wonderful. Do you like that? It's always been one of my dreams. Well, Lucy, yeah, I think I can make one of your dreams come true. Sorry. I've got an observatory. What? Next door, an observatory. And you'll never guess what's in the observatory. A telescope? Only an eight-inch refractor. You're joking! <laughs> and can I see it? Would you like to? And can I look through it? Lucy, you can do what you want with it. Cool. Right, you just stay there, and I'll set it all up, OK? Fantastic. And don't talk to anybody, all right? Okay. Oh, not now, will you, spider? I've cracked it there. Right here, bro. Oh, not now, not now. See you in a minute. Yeah, hold that. <laughs> what are you doing? <gasps> Sawyer, please, not now. Well, Rain thinks she look great. The rain is with Spider. She could be with you. <laughs> I heard that. Sawyer was here. Yeah, she's, she's in there. Just checking. Still, I might as well have a drink while I'm here, eh? Look, I'm doing all right on my own. Now, excuse me. We what? Excuse me, Les. What do you look like? I mean, have you done to yourself? Les, Les, just excuse me. <laughs> Can I join you? Why not? Les. Lucy. Nice name, Lucy. I'm a nice girl, Les. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> Right, well, I'll see Mike first thing and I'll tell him that I've slept on it. Great. I don't know what I'm letting myself in for, mind. I've told you. Three nights alone with me. <gasps> I get paid as well. <laughs> yeah, but you have to earn over time. Hey, I work very hard. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'd better get back or else Kevin's going to be wondering where I am. You said anything about the garage money yet? No, I haven't. So you haven't decided? I've just not found the right time. I oh, know, it's difficult. Anyway, I'm sure you made the right decision. Yeah, I will. Right, I better get going. Oh, Greg. You knew the Beatles? Oh, I. I rode it for them in Hamburg. They wanted to put me on a, a retainer at Apple a bit later on, but I decided I like life on the road too much, so I opted for Dave D. Oh, Dave D? Dave D, Dozy, Beaky, Mick and Titch. I did a year with them before I joined the fair. Hello, Lucy. It's all ready and set up for you. We're talking. Yeah, well, thanks for keeping the company, Les, but I've arranged for Lucy to see my telescope. Your telescope? Get out of it. She's very keen to look at the stars. So leave her here with me, OK? I'm sorry, Les. And so am I. Excuse me, love. Curly, a word in your shell like. It's all right. Now, I'm chatting this young lady up and I'm getting somewhere. So why don't you push off? No, because I was getting somewhere first. What, dressed like that? She's just humouring you, Les. She's just a sensitive young lady. So why don't you shove off? Me shove off? If you want to see walking, pal. And now, understand, I won't let you get blood on your new jacket. Are you threatening me? Yeah. OK, you think she wants to stay and talk to you and I think she wants to come with me, so why don't we just ask her? Go ahead. All right. Oh. Oh. Les? Go away. Curly? Not now. I just want you to know that I don't feel very well. I don't feel very well at all. <coughs> oh. So, are you all right? Is she all right? Look, Les, take her home, OK? She's just about all in. What? I said take her home. I'll clean up the mess. What are you doing, drinking like that, eh? I'll fix some water. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Why did you trap me up? 
I was just trying to be pleasant. I could see you wanted to fit in, that you'd made an effort, so I'd talk to you. Oh, thank you. I really am interested in the telescope. Right. Show me it. I don't think so. It's been a long time, haven't you? Yeah, I met a couple of the girls in the pub and they asked me if I wanted a drink. You don't mind, do you? Oh, the heck. Look, I've been thinking. Did you get a chance to transfer that money over to my business account today? No, I didn't. Look, I don't, don't want to bang on about it, Sal, but I'm meeting Natalie tomorrow. We've got the solicitors dissolve the partnership, so if you can do it first thing. Well, I'm going to be at work. You can get time off, can't you? I can't do that, Kevin. Look, if you're worried about Baldwin, I'll see him. I'm sure he can spare you for half an hour. It's not Mike. It's me. I've had second thoughts about the garage. Hey. I've been thinking about it and it's not what I want. I don't want to sink my money into a garage with you or anybody else. Well, you said... I know what I said, but I've changed my mind. I don't want to go along with it. So there'll be no money transferred anywhere tomorrow. I'm sorry, Kevin. All over me new shirt. It'll wash out. Not the smell, it won't. It never does. It lingers, does vomit. I don't wish to wear that. Especially not at breakfast. Do you know I don't know who's worse? Her for getting drunk, or you for letting her. Right, you're gonna eat out? I can't face it. Buy carbon soda. That'll sort her. Won't cure a broken heart. You are? That's what's wrong with you, isn't it? Don't talk daft. That spider. All over that new barmaid. At it like knives. That's what your problem is. Yeah. Well, do you know what your problem is? You don't know when you're not wanted. Date crashing at your age. You're pathetic. Switched around over there. So, why did you gate crash the party? Who need I ask? Oh, what's up with you now? Looking for Totty. That's what you were doing. I was there for one reason. To keep an eye on our toy. Oh, I? Well, you didn't do a very good job of it, did you? Why didn't you stop her from drinking? Because I'm cleverer than that. I was using my psychology. How does that work? That little girl's learnt a lesson that'll stand her instead for the rest of her life. Well, if you're out to go by, God help her. Listen, I know how to pace myself and when to stop. So why have you got an hangover? It isn't an hangover, it's a flaming headache. I must have been drinking from a dirty glass. Oh. I, uh... I, I think I'll have the day off. Yeah, well, I think I'll go and have another word with our Toya. Cos she's learnt now to you, love. Set out to make a fool of herself. You knew it was all going ahead. I told you last week. I said I'm sorry. We discussed it from every angle possible. I mean, did they try and push you into it? Well... When? I didn't say you did. I should flaming well hope not, cos I offered to get a bank loan and pay it off myself. Yeah, I know you did. You even said it's what your man would have wanted you to do with the money. Free us and Natalie. Yes, I know, I know I did. So what's made you change your mind? It's difficult to say. Yeah, well, try. Cos it's even more difficult for me to understand. Well? It's a lot of money. You knew how much it was. What I mean is, the more I thought about it, the more I realised I owe it to the girls to put it somewhere safe rather than your garage, like a building society. My garage? Our garage, Sal. Well, it could be. Our income, our future. I know, but... I... You just don't have any faith in me, dear. But I do. Yeah, not enough to give us the money. I just hope you know what you're doing, Sal, that's all. Yeah, well, time will tell, won't it? Anyway, she'll be in as soon as she gets herself together. I was young myself once. <laughs> Bet you were never in state she were. Hey, and don't forget to dock her wages. She's got to learn hard way. The clock won't start till the pinny's on. It's all your fault, you know. But I didn't see her drinking. <laughs> well, we all know what you were up to. What, minding me own business? The next time you have a party, don't let my Les through the door. <laughs> As if I'd want to. Anyway, I don't think there'll be a next time. Seems I get blamed for everyone else's misfortunes. I just wish you'd told me about that, Lucy. Oh, I tried to. I made a right turnip of myself, didn't I? I thought I was on a promise. I turned me back and the next thing she's talking to Les Battersby. And then she's snogging some young kid. Alan, her boyfriend. 
I thought she was a free agent. Nah, she's just dead friendly, you know, a kind person. Thought I'd find you here. Mm. Are you not coming into work? Mm. Toya's not turning, so I'm just helping out for ten minutes. Are you better? Oh, not 100%. Mm, should have stopped off till next week. <laughs> and like to find somebody up in machine. You know what Baldwin's like. Mm. Well, are you coming? Mm -mm. Hurry up. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yeah, Rita's gone away. Yes. Well, I mean, she needed the break, didn't she? And uh, what is it you've got there? Only 16. God, you must be kidding. My interest is purely academic. Oh, I'm sure, yes. The only reason you work in this cabin is because of them mucky magazines. Uh, hardly, hardly. So, when's she coming back? A few days, maybe a week, maybe more. Uh, oh, have you seen your sister this morning? She should have been here half an hour ago. Oh, yes, yeah, she's telling you she's gone to the doctor's. Oh, marvellous. I shall be running this place by myself in a bit. So, what do you think? How are you fixed? Uh, yes, yes, I'm happy to help out again, but you better let me know for how long in case something else crops up. Expect you're in demand for all the top jobs, eh? Hardly, hardly, but one has to keep one's options open. Hey, you'd have thought when Leon were in your class that you'd have ended up behind the same counter. Oh, education's a wonderful thing. It's a great leveller. <laughs> She'll be able to get her own back now. Tell you off for slacking. <laughs> so, who's in charge then? Uh, Him or Alian? Neither. I am. And if you're not here? Oh, I think you'll find I shan't be far away. Any problems? Talk to me. Right. I have run a business before, you know. And I hope you don't spend all your time brewing up. Mm, it's time for that. Public relations were never his strong suit. Uh, have you got any of those fizzy tablets for an headache? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I've got some over there. And, uh, one of these? Hot from the press? No, Tom, I told you, it's crap. Even page 22? Reader's letters? It's not in, is it? Matter of the week? I've won ten quid. <laughs> well done. Do you want a sandwich from calf, Mr Baldwin? No, I don't. And I'm timing you. Ten minutes. Is that all you've done? Hardly seems worth coming back for that. How was your holiday? I have been flat on my back if you must know. <laughs> Laid up. Oh, well, that sounds like hard work. I could do with a bit of that myself. I do have a doctor's note to prove it, if you don't believe me. I do believe you. It's a terrible thing, back pain. You should have done twice as many as these in the time. You sure you're up to it? I told you. I had this machine to reset, didn't I? Mm. Mr Baldwin? Mm. Can I have a word with you? Yeah, of course you can, mate. In private? Oh, right, well, uh, come in the office. Take me notice of him. Oh, he's got it in for me. He'll be at me all day now. Oh, are you all right? Oh, I can't get comfortable. Oh, damn it! Oh, yeah. Let me give you an hand. Ah, oh, you've got your own to do, Joke. Give him here and say no. Hey, you know what you are. You're a right little treasure. This thing you mentioned yesterday, I've been thinking. What, the knicker part is? Uh, yeah, uh, I'd like to give it a go after all. But you were dead against it. I was, but I don't know, maybe it's just what I need. A new interest, a chance to earn a bit more money. With the girls getting older, they just seem to need more and more stuff. Yeah, but you do realise you'll have to be out, what, three, four nights a week? What does Kevin think about that? What's he got to do with it? I don't have to ask his permission, you know. I'm sorry, darling, sorry, just asking. I mean, as long as there's no problem, then... It's not a problem. And the sooner I start, the better, as far as I'm concerned. If they're not already made up, I'll have to come back. In a right mood, is Baldwin. It's just the BLT, if they want me a minute. All right, then I'll hang on. Feeling sorry for herself, is she? Well, uh, actually, she's, uh... Quite perky. Well, how's your head? Horrible. Don't let it happen again, Toya. Look. What's this? Read it. Oh, you don't read that trite, do you? There. That's me. Ten quid? Hey, when did you write this? You're a dark horse. I always said she were clever. Except the cider. Hey, come here, love. Give us a kiss. <laughs> oh. You're 
not going to get changed to go and see the solicitor. Where have you been? I've been trying to phone you. Hairdresser, so I switched it off. Well, you're going to have to go as you are, otherwise we'll be late. There's a problem. Don't tell me Sally forgot to get the cheque. No, she didn't forget. So what then? She's pulling out. She can't. You are joking. You're not, are you? Do you know something? I am sick and tired of all this chopping and changing. You're going to have to get a grip, Kevin. Look, I don't know what's going on myself, but it's not my fault, so don't blame me. Janice, Ida, Sally, catch. Hey! What's this bonus? Bonus? I'll give you one of those next week. Yeah, what you said last week. <laughs> like tomorrow, next week never comes. Tell I'd you. watch it if I was you. Hey, where's yours? Hey, Mr. Baldwin. What about Ayla? Oh, yeah, um, come in the office a minute, will you? What's going on in the office? What's that all about? I don't know. What is it, Mr. Baldwin? Is there something wrong with my work? Oh, no, no. If that lot out there worked as hard as you did, I would give them a bonus. Is it? Oh, no, not again. I've been paying emergency tax for three weeks now. You said you'd sort it out. Yeah, I'm trying to fix it. The thing is, I shouldn't be paying tax at all. I've been unemployed for four months out of the year. Yeah, well, don't worry. you get it all back. Yeah, but when? I'm, I'm paying nearly £25 a week. Well, what can I do? I've given them your national insurance number, right? And according to them, you're not Hayley, you're Harold. That shows you how stupid their computer is. They think you're a flipping man. I mean, I said to him, I said, look, she works for me. She's a mate of me missus. What do you think I am, stupid? Do you think I don't know the difference between a man and a woman? And then I said, oh, what's the matter, love? No, I, I just get air fever. Oh, look, you come and sit down. Yeah. <laughs> They'll see me crying. No. I bet they have. No. He just had a quiet word with Nick Baldwin. Set to see how you were. He's not told anybody else. Let's see. But he did tell me what had upset you. Then what did he say? It's just air fever. Oh, I. He, I understand, love. I've been at St. Boat myself, you know. I were paying emergency tax for weeks. We're a good job back at the end. You'll get it all back. <laughs> Hey, come on, love, you're getting this all out of proportion. Would you like me to have a word with him? Get your soap. No, no, it's fine. I don't, I don't need to say anything. I just... Oh. Just... Here. I'll not tell anybody I've seen you crying. Come on, Thanks, love. Thanks, Adam. I'm OK. OK. Rita's gone away, Weto. Well, he didn't say where or for how long. In fact, he's playing his cards very close to his chest. Mm, what do you think he's playing now? Oh, I'm the faintest. The only thing he's made abundantly clear is that he's taking charge of the cabin. Well, I don't know what to think. He you don't think she's gone away to get away from him, do you? On the other hand, he might be trying to take over her business, you know, before he goes the whole lock. Man, she's got a business here, hasn't she? Well, half a one. And he hasn't done Anne's turn for over a week. Well, at least you haven't got him telling you to tidy the magazines every other minute. Is that what he's doing? Well, he might be better off stopping over there. Oh, thanks. Uh, well, five and a half minutes, so I'll have to clock on for the afternoon shift. Nope, five and a quarter. I better drink up. Oh, I'll put another scotch in there, will you, love? Right, love. Ah, oh, there you are. I've got some good news for you. What you can have? Uh, a bottle of lager, actually. A uh, bottle of lager without scotch, please, Vera. Right. So, uh, how's it going? You won't believe this. Sally's changed her mind. You're joking. Done a complete U-turn. So it's just what she needs to uh, broaden her horizons or something like that. Anyway, she can't wait to get started. Well, here's to success. Cheers. Mind you, she hasn't done anything like this before, so uh, I'm counting on you to show her the ropes. Don't worry, Mike. Leave it with me. 
Yeah, it's really good. You're not just saying that? No, honest. Straight from the heart. Well, I think some of the other lights were better. I mean, I don't know why they chose mine. Because it says something meaningful. Well done. I'm sorry about your carpet. Yeah, well, I had a go at it with a scrubbing brush. Hardly shows. Well, it's just as well you weren't on Red Wayne. I'm going to fool on myself. Neil, don't blame me. I'm not. Your mother does. She reckons I got you drunk. Oh, what's she going to say that for? So I'd appreciate it if you'd have a word. I will. Of course I will. We are still mates, aren't we? Yeah, cheese and tomato. Thank you. You're welcome. Goodbye. Hello. This is a pleasant surprise. I'm glad if I park myself over here. Oh, well, any way you like. I thought you'd be at the Rovers for your lunch, as per. Felt like a change. Well, it's as good as a rest, allegedly. So, what shall we have? A table d'hote or a sandwich? Oh, just a tea, please. What, nothing to eat? No, I'm, I'm all right. I'll just have my tea and read my book. Thanks. Are you sure you're... Uh... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, don't worry about me. Just carry on. Right. I hope it doesn't give our Les ideas. <laughs> oh, I like a man who hears things. It brings out the gypsy in me. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. I'm just walking home for a See you later. Vera, two lemonades and half a lager, please. Right, love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, everyone's talking about you over there. Mocking the afflicted, you mean? No! Ida Clough reckons you look dead cute. Ida Clough. That's really made my day, thanks. Hey, Curly, did you take those things out at night? No, why? Bloke in Florida had to have his ear off. Went septic. Really? <laughs> Good job it was only his ear. Oh! <laughs> That's right, they wear them in some very funny places these days. Hey, maybe he's got another one that we can't see. <laughs> well, I haven't, all right. Oh, come on. Two thirds in love. Thanks, Vera. Sally, I was just telling Greg about our conversation. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he was dead chuffing. I told him you'd change your mind, weren't you? Do you know what? I think you two are going to make a great team. I'll just take these drinks over. All I said were, it were his party, so we should have kept you straight. Mum, I'm 16. Yeah, too young to drink. Yeah, and too old to be shown up in public by my mother. Look, I'm sorry, love, but I still think he's irresponsible. Him and all. What have I done now? Letting her get drunk. Oh, we're not still batting on about that, are we? Here, second post. All right. Oh, it's my check for my letter. Let's have a look. Hey, well done. I'm proud of you, Chuck. Oh, mm. we both are. Listen, we would like you to submit an article on a subject of your choice of not more than 500 words with a view to possible publication at a fee of £50, payable on acceptance. Is it a wind-up? Of course it's not. 50 quid. I could have been a writer. It was my best subject at school. This is proper writing, not felt tip on lavy wall. Well, go on, what are you going to write about? I know. You could write about me. My life on the fairgrounds. Oh, no. If it good, would that? I'd tell you all my adventures. You write them down and we'll split the money. I don't think so. We could call it fair dues or fairground fun. Or our sad dad. I bent over backwards to try and be fair to her. Even offered to raise the cash myself. Look, Kevin, Sally is your problem and you've got to sort it out. <laughs> oh, no regrets then. Moi? Je ne uh, rien regret. <laughs> right, well, I don't care what anybody else thinks. I think you look great. Do you really? Yeah, I do, honest. Listen, do you fancy going for a drink sometimes? Or, or maybe we could go to a club or that. I've got a boyfriend. I know what'll change your mind. Tell her she's got to pay the bill, whether or not. What bill? The bill for my solicitor's fees. For drawing up the new contract and for wasting his time. It was Sally who backed out, so it's Sally who's got to pay and you've got to tell her. And how much will that be? Well, hundreds, I reckon. And I can't see her parting with that kind of money if she's got nought to show for it. All right, love. You know, you're about the tenth person that's asked me that today. Well, I just, uh, you know, I just thought you looked a little bit out of sorts. No, I'm all right. I've got a day off, money in my pocket. Life couldn't be better. Mm, not as simple as that, is it? Never is. 
Exactly. You know, nowhere to go, nobody to go with. Raquel wants a divorce. Oh, I see. And you don't. Oh. I am sorry, love. Anyway, I won't say a word to anybody, love. Thanks, Betty. OK. So you won't be ready for another hour. I've only just got back in from work. How's the kids? Around at Gales. It's all Natalie. She had something to say. Well, what do you expect? We was due to sign the papers today. Disappointed, was she? Not getting her money. It's not just that, Sal. We don't know what to do next. I mean, do you still want Natalie to be my partner? Is that what you want? I've told you. My main concern is protecting my mum's money. Yeah, well, you've just wasted two or three hundred quid of it. How have I done that? Because you're going to have to pay the solicitor's bill. Why? Well, Natalie's not going to pay it. Why should she? Is that what she said, the cheeky cow? Yeah, well, you're going to have to, unless you're going to change your mind again. I think that's a flaming nerve. Yeah, well, you've no other choice. Right, then. I'll pay it. Because she's not getting her hands on my money. I mean it. Not now, not ever. Oh, oh, step over. Has Gail gone? Oh, I told her to. We've not been busy. Oh, let me give you an hand. Oh. Yeah. How are things at work today? All right. Oh. Uh, you seem a bit uh, quiet. Uh, I've not upset you, have I? No, not at all. I mean, you would say. Because, yeah. I mean, I like to think that we can be uh, open and honest with each other. Well, that's what I was attracted to in the first place. Your honesty. You won't let me down, will you, Roy? Because I don't think we're all a bit worse yet. Do you know what I'm talking about? I, I think I do, yes. Well, you, you will tell me in your own good time. I, I, I will be there. I'm a lot stronger than a lot of people think. I suppose you have to be if you've got uh, unfashionable beliefs. I know, me and all. As long as we've got each other. I, I won't let you down. You know your mate Hayley? Oh, yeah, how is she? I'm seen her for ages. Best machinist I've ever had. There you are, you're seeing you were dead against her. Yeah. Funny girl, though. What do you mean, funny? Well, this morning she got in the right state about her tax. Well, what was the problem? Well, apparently she's a fella. <laughs> what makes you say that? Because the computer said so, and the computer's always right. She's not Hayley, she's Harold. Harold Patterson. You haven't told anybody else, have you? Well, she's a fella. No, I don't think so. Why? Well, look, you mustn't. Look, just promise me. Look, it's only a computer error. I mean, can't she take a joke? Mike. What? It's not a joke and it's not a mistake. She is a man. Well, she was. <laughs> you having me on? No. Because <laughs> you nearly succeeded that time. You're not, are you? Flipping Ada. I'll ask you one more time. You having me on? Look, if I said yes, would you just forget about it? So, uh, he was born a man, but now she, he's a woman. So he's now a she and she's a... Look, why do we keep calling him she? Because she is a she. Well, she is now. That is what I am trying to tell you. Well, because he wears frocks? No, because she's had a lot of treatment and therapy and operations. Oh, well, anyone could do that, couldn't they? I mean, I could. Wouldn't make me a woman, though, would it? Well, in your case, no, but in her case, yes. Because in her head, she's been a woman all her life. Well, in my head, I've been a millionaire all my life. Hasn't made me one, though, has well, it? You're just not trying to understand, are you? Yeah. What I'm trying to understand is why you couldn't have told me about all this before I took her on. Oh. Why you couldn't have told me this way back when she was sitting... No, no, no. He was sitting there... Right? Having dinner, invited round by you because you were supposed to be one of his best friends. Because I didn't know myself then, did I? Oh, 
So what I've done is I've taken on a fella that wears a frock and queues up for the ladies. No, you have taken on a transsexual. Well, that's what I said. No. You know what? When I was a lad, these people used to be in sideshows at South End. Oh. You know, bearded lady and all that. Come on, make your own mind up. Is it a man or a woman? You choose. Yeah, it used to cost me tuppence to get in. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Mike, but they're not in sideshows anymore. No, they're all working in my factory now, aren't they? Well, <laughs> they were, till I found out. Hey, so what does that mean? Hey, what are you going to do? Well, I can't leave it as it is, can I? Yes, you can. Of course you can. You must. But what about all those women that work alongside her? Don't you think they've got a right to know? No, I don't. Hayley's no threat to them. She never will be. I didn't say she was a threat. She's a... he's a... well, an embarrassment. Oh, an embarrassment to you, you mean? <laughs> no, not to me. Everybody. Mike, if you do this, it'll be the cruelest thing you ever did. Would it? Yes! Well, I don't know how you could say that to me. Because I haven't made up my mind what I'm going to say yet. Yes, but you're not going to sack her and you're not going to tell anybody else. Well, what I'm going to do is, uh... Well, what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to think about it. Yes, but you'll, you'll keep it yourself. Till I've thought about it, yeah. See you later. So you don't dress trendy all the time, then? Are you trying to be funny? No. Look, I am the manager of a supermarket, so I dress like the manager of a supermarket. Is that a problem? No. Of course you do. See you then. Yeah, see ya. Right, here. We'll fix this later on. Be good girls. Give us a kiss. Mwah. Bye, love. See you later. Bye. 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 Daddy's taking you today, so go and wait in the car. I won't be long. Okay, okay. Oh, we know what that means. In fact, they probably know what that means by now. What? It means you won't have a go at me or criticise me about something. Well, come on, get on with it. Forget it if you're going to be like that. Fine. Well, what's going on, Sal? Why do you keep changing your mind all the time? Because I feel like I'm under pressure. What, from me? Who else? We'd hardly have my mum's funeral than you were planning on what to do with her money. We was planning, Sal. We were... No, I'm sorry, Kevin. It didn't feel like that to me. It felt like you were doing all the planning. You were pushing me. Now I'm saying, wait a minute, I want to think about a few things. Yeah, well, you're costing us money while you're thinking. Well, I don't care. Is there anything else? No. Right, come on. Let's go, or else we're going to be late. Oh, I hope he's here again. And you're telling me you, you're just good friends? You are. Well, if I had a friend like that, <laughs> my husband would be crackers. Hey, is that for me, love? I don't know. No. I'm only joking. Ah. See you later. Yeah. I told you, Roy, you have to stop doing this. You're going to have me putting weight on. Well, it's all low fat. Oh, go on, then. <laughs> no, no one's ever looked after me like this. <laughs> well, it's about time they did. Mm -hmm. Morning, Mr Baldwin. Morning. Right, let's go in. Don't want to get in trouble with your boss. All right, well, uh, I'll see you then. I just get fed up having to write everything out again. Well, that's because you're still making mistakes. I know. I was thinking, what I need is a computer. A computer? Yeah, well, that would be useful, yeah. I wondered if you had one I could lend. Ah, oh, I'm sorry, mine went kaput about two years ago. I never got around to replacing it. Of course, in my day, we were taught to read, write and add up. We didn't need computers. Well, thank you. That's really helpful. Oh. We were taught manners and all. So, how are we doing, then? Ship still on its course, is it? I think it is, yes. Good, good. It could be a bit tidier, though, couldn't it? I mean, we don't want to let standards slip. Perhaps you could wipe all the shelves down. Do you think you could manage that? And if you could lay your hands on a chamois leather, I mean, then windows would benefit from a good clean. Would they? Then I suggest you call a window cleaner. Oh, oh, it's like that, is it? And here's me thinking we're all pulling together to help Rita. Well, thank you for making your position clear. Well, it's perfectly clear to me. I'm here to help with the papers, not jump every time you click your fingers. You know, I can see now why you've had such a chequered career, Ken. I mean, there's not many who'd keep you on with that sort of attitude. <laughs> well, I don't like doing this, but you did say to give you the bill from my solicitor. Yep. So, who's going to be paying this, then? You or Sally, or shouldn't I ask? You can ask. I would have thought being a married couple, it wouldn't make any difference whether it was me or Sally, but it appears it does. Funny how some people change when they come into money. <laughs> She's changed all right. Whether that's the reason, I don't know. 
You seem to be having a really bad time. I am. What makes it worse is I don't even know why. Oh, I'm sorry. And don't think I'm taking any pleasure in it because I'm not. Me neither. Yeah, I thought I might have a web with Sally Webster about these underwear parties you're talking about. Yeah, I'd do that. She's a smart girl. Got her head screwed on. Trust me. I do. Good. Oh, hello. Hi, hi, Greg. Good morning. Um, can I have a word? Yeah, of course you can. Oh, I'll uh, go and sort that out. Yeah, the sooner the better. Sure. <clears throat> you haven't said anything to Haley, have you? No. Because I feel absolutely awful. Why? Because I was the one that told you, and I was told in absolute confidence. I'm going to feel even more awful if it's all now dragged out in the open because of me. Does Cropper know? What? Well, he's supposed to be going out with her, isn't he? I mean, does he know? Yes, he knows, and he's been very helpful and supportive and kind. He didn't used to be a woman, did he? No. Ooh, that's a relief. Oh. I mean, you hear about one and well, it starts your thinking, doesn't it? Listen, listen, all I'm saying is, look, please, please don't sack her and please don't tell anybody else. I mean, don't even tell her that you know. You're asking a lot. Why? Well, you're asking me to pretend I don't know, like asking me to join in all the lies, like asking me to cover up for her. I don't think I can do that. All right, then, look, I'll tell her that you know. Will that help? I'll tell her then you won't have to lie or put an act on, but just please, please don't tell anybody else. I wouldn't tell anybody else anyway. I haven't got time to stand around gossiping to that lot out there. Oh, OK then, all right, and thank you, and, um, well, I'll see you tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Good, so we're in here at 7 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen you for ages. Do you, uh, do you fancy lunch today, just you and me? Yeah, that'll be smashing. Yeah, well, it'll give us a chance to catch up on things. Les, can I have a computer? No. But it dealt with my schoolwork. So I'll get school to buy you one. How many mates have got them? Yeah? Well, all your mates are in for a big shock, aren't they? Because come the year 2000, all these computers are going to blow up. It's called... The Millennium Bug. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Yes, I do. There was a bloke going on about it down the bookies. Oh, hiya, love. Are you going to make us some dinner? Unless some miracle's happened and you've already done it. Cheers. Only uh, can you make it quick? Then I can get out for a pint. Mum, can I have a computer? You could if I could afford one. Now, are you going to shift all this off table and give us an hand? But I need one. Toya, we all need all sorts. I'm telling you, wait a couple of years and they'll be giving them away. Because they won't get any of them to work. Oh, it's a long time since I were here. How long ago were it when you back for oh, dinner? Don't know. Um, are you still on uh, orange juice? Oh yeah, that's fine, thanks. That was when I met Roy, you know, that night. Uh, Hayley, I I've got I've got a confession to make. Uh, you can see I haven't made lunch. I mean, I will. I'll I'll, I'll make us a sandwich later. Oh, but that's fine. No, no, no. There's there's more to it than that. Haley, I've got you here under false pretenses. False pretenses? Well, I want to tell you something. And then I want to apologise. And, oh, believe me, Haley, I do apologise. What? Mike knows. He knows your history. And why he knows is because I told him. I mean, accidentally, but I told him. Haley, say something. So now everybody will know. I mean, I know Mike likes people to think that he's a stupid, insensitive male, but that's just an image he likes to put across. I mean, there's, there's more to him than that. I, I mean, a lot more. There must be, else you wouldn't be married to him. Well, no. But, but I made him promise he won't tell anybody, and he won't. I know he won't. 
These things have a way of getting out, though, don't they? Oh, Hayley, I am sorry. No, you've explained. It's not your fault. I thought you already knew. Of course you did. I mean, I didn't know you was only joking. Alma, whatever happens, I'll never blame you for it. Never. Well, I won't let it happen. I'll just make sure of it. Come and have a bit of your sandwich. Tell you the truth. It was something that crossed my mind when I applied for a job, whether with him being your husband and that, you'd feel like you had to tell him. Oh, no, I didn't think that. That's how we survived, not telling one another things. I remember. You know when you were working at Furman's? Well, why did they never find out? Well, they nearly did, but the girl who did the wages just came to me one day and said, look, they're calling you Harold, and we just made a joke of it, and that was the last I heard. Oh, right. Oh, I could just, just cut my tongue out. Oh, stop it, it's not your fault. Anyway, I had to tell you. And he's promised me that he won't tell anybody. And, you know, Mike's more human sometimes than he seems. <laughs> OK. All right. <clears throat> now, when I was a kid, grown-ups, that should be hyphenated, used to say, act your age. Now, I'm saying to them, dress your age. Uh, uh, this is for the magazine, is it? Yeah. Oh, right, right. Why, what's up? No, 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 no. Dress your age. Keep your thieving hands off our clothes and off our hairstyles and off our fashions. All right, we know, she'll be a comma after all right, we know that yours are boring, all suits and shirts and ties, but that's no reason for stealing ours. Hmm. You don't like it, do you? Oh, no, no, it's fine, fine. We all know that imitation, 1M, is the sincerest form of flattery, 2Ts, but come on, oldies, wear your own boring grey clothes and leave the good stuff where it belongs with the teenagers. Hmm. I can tell you don't like oh, it. Oh, no, no, I think it's well written. Oh, because it was a mistake. No, 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 look, you've got a point of view and you're expressing it forcefully. But you don't like it. Look, um, can I just ask? Not that I mind, but, but I'd like to know. Is it, um... Well, is this article an attack on me? You? No. Really? It's all about Curly. Have you seen the way he's been dressing lately? It's seen him that's made me write it. Curly? Yeah. Oh, well. Then it's very good, yes. I think it's just the sort of article the magazine are looking for. They spend half their time in the toilet, don't they? Yeah. Which one, though? Me? Oh, nothing. That's Lee called in the garage. Give us a bill for a solicitor. Thanks. It's all right. I'll pay it. No, I'll pay it. I said I would, and I will. Which is one reason why I'm going back to work tonight. Back to work? How do you mean? Well, Greg's asked me to go back in to talk to him and Mike about some new ideas they've got. Greg? Yeah, and Mike. They're both going to be there. Well, you're going to have to tell them you've got a family to see to. Let's be honest, you've been out nearly every night as it is. Yeah, because you said you didn't mind. I don't mind. Except you do. It's obvious you do. I mind. Oh, what a mind is. You mind me having a life of my own. You're doing all these extra hours. You've got all that money from your mum. I'm earning from the garage. We don't need any more. Yeah, well, maybe I do. And maybe it's not just the money. Well, what is it, then? It's nothing. I'll clear these away. Look, leave it! You've got to go to work. I'll do it. Just go and say goodnight to the girls, then. Hey, Curly. Off with the supermarket gear and on with the motley. Yeah, um, anyway, I'm writing this article and I need a computer. I know you want something else to Spider and I was wondering, could you lend it to me? Please? Spider knew what he was doing. Oh, so do I, honest. Oh, look, I look after it. Go on, Curly, please. You know, those clothes make you look a lot younger than uh, your suit. All right, as long as you look after it. I will. All right, go on. Cheers. By the way, I got your bill. Check will be all right, will it? Check will be fine. What exactly are you trying to do to him, Sally? Eh? Get him to lie down in the road so you can walk all over him. You've got a nerve. And you don't, do you? 
In fact, I get the distinct impression that you hate him, though I don't know what he's done to deserve it. I'm not discussing my marriage with you. Well, at this rate, you won't have any marriage left to discuss. Come in, come in. How are you? Oh, all right. Just having a check up what we're short of. I think we're overdue a visit to the cash and carry. Oh, well, ignore me. I'll just make myself a coffee and wait till you're finished. Oh, would you mind? Only I've got the cruets to fill as well. No, no, you carry on. I'll make you one as well, shall I? Oh, please. So, how are you? Things still going well at work? Do your orders and we'll talk afterwards. All right, yeah. Uh... Hiya. Pint, please. Uh, oh, no, uh, can I have a, a, a bottle of lager? No glass. Right. Curly, <laughs> you used to employ Hayley Patterson, didn't you? Hayley, yeah, yeah. Well, saying that, I mean, uh, Furman's did. Yeah, and did you find... How'd you find her? Hayley, yeah, fine, great, yeah. Good worker, reliable, honest, great, yeah. That's 180, please. Thank you. Thank you. No, what I mean is, was there anything uh, peculiar about her? Well, I wouldn't have said so. She kept herself to herself, you know. But some people think I do that, don't they? Yeah, yeah. No, I'll put it this way. Did any of your other staff find her peculiar? Well, no. I mean, not that I noticed. But anyway, why are you asking me all this? Why don't you ask Alma? I mean, she could tell you more about her than I know. She already has. I suppose we ought to spend five minutes talking about this party idea, then I've got something to report <laughs> back to Mike with. Well, I think it's a good idea, and I think we should do it. All oh, right, that's it then. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, I think we ought to come up with something more. Oh, um, well, is it going to be local? Well, I hope not. With a bit of luck, we might be able to spend a couple of nights away. <laughs> Kevin won't like that. Mind you, Kevin doesn't like anything I do at the moment. Oh, um, how are things at the garage? I've told him straight I'm having nothing to do with it. He can buy her out, keep her in, do what he wants. But you're right, I would have been mad to hand over all that money. Well, especially when you don't know what might happen. Um, and you're not putting any more money into the house? No, I'm just going to leave it where it is. All 50 odd thousand of it. Which is where? Oh, sorry, it's, it's none of my business. No, come off it, Greg. If it wasn't for you, I would have got rid of half of it already. No, it's just in a building society. In your own name? Yeah. Not joint? No. <laughs> Are you serious when you said that we'd have to stay over at these knicker parties? Oh, probably not to begin with. You know, start small and build it all up. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know... If you were to stay with Kevin for the time being... Yeah. I was thinking, the way things are now, that money's under your control. Whereas, if you were to get into a divorce situation, he might be able to claim on it. And, well, things wouldn't be so simple. No, I suppose you're right. So what I should do? He's drew it all out without him knowing. <laughs> Some people would do that. And then go and buy a nice house miles away from <laughs> anywhere. And one day just go and pick up the girls and he'd never know where I was. <laughs> yeah. But you would tell me where it was, I mean. <laughs> I might. <laughs> Daddy. <sighs> Is Mummy out? She is, yeah. She's out working. And if she wasn't, she'd be out somewhere else. Anywhere but here. Hey, you know, I didn't mean that. It's just Daddy being silly. So what have you been doing? You gonna show me? Yeah. It depends how busy they are down the cash and carry, but I'll apologise now if I'm not there with your 11s is tomorrow. You're very nice. In fact, you're so nice I don't want to tell you about this because I know you're going to worry about it. And I don't want you to worry. Sorry? Mr Baldwin's found out about me being a transsexual. 
Oh, no. Well, wait, like I say, I don't oh, want dear. you to wait. Roy! What are we going to do? You're not letting me explain. Mr what? Baldwin, of all people. I mean, I've seen him say some very unkind things at that bar when he's had a few drinks inside of him. Yeah, well, he's not going to be saying them about me. I wouldn't count on that. Well, I think I can, yes, because Alma's made him promise. You see, you didn't let me tell you the full story. It was Alma that told him, not meaning to. She'd just let it slip, but she's made him promise not to tell anybody else. Do you think you can rely on that? I'm going to have to. Oh, this is great. You know, I love steak. Yeah, I know. Oh, by the way, I was talking to Curly in the pub about your mate, Hayley. Oh, Mike, you didn't... No, no, I didn't. Now, before you start, I did not tell him. Honest? Yeah, well, I said I wouldn't, didn't I? But he gave me the distinct impression that although, although he employed her, he didn't know what was going on. You know, he didn't know that she wasn't all that, uh, well, she should have been. No, he didn't. Oh, well, that made it easy for him, didn't it? I see, I can understand someone employing her and not knowing, like I did. But, I mean, once you know, but it sort of uh, changes things, doesn't it? Eh? Well, I don't see why. Well, because you're putting one over on your other workers. Making them share facilities and all that. Oh, do you know what? I reckon if they found out, they could probably sue me. They wouldn't be at all pleased, I'll tell you. No. Nope. She's going to have to go. Go? Yep. I'm sacking her tomorrow. All right. Come on, say it. Get it off your chest. It's like having breakfast with a waxwork. I thought you said there was nothing else to say on the subject. There isn't. Haley or Harold, he, she or it, whatever they want to call themselves, is fired. I'm going to do it as soon as I get to the office. My mind is made up, but I don't suppose it's going to stop you having your say. Oh, too right it isn't. So she was a fella, so big deal. <laughs> It's a bit different than changing the colour of your hair, isn't it? Well, it's about as important when it comes to working for you. I've told you, I can't stand a disruption if those girls were to find out. You know what they're like. Do you know what? I'm probably doing Hayley a favour. A favour? Mm. Oh, you are priceless, Mike. You're a bigot. Do you know that? What are you talking about, woman? Oh, all right, all right. Look, what if Greg Kelly was a woman who'd had an operation to turn into a man? Or would you fire him? <laughs> Don't be stupid, Alma. They can't do that. Can they? Anyway, it's different. I mean, uh, he doesn't work on the shop floor. He works with me. I can handle that. Now, any disruption on those machines would lead to cancel orders, and I'm sorry. No, she's just got to go. Sorry. Hayley, are, are you sure you want to go in today? Why don't you ring in sick, a tummy bug or some such thing? I've got to get on with my life, Roy. I can't hide away just because Mr Baldwin's found out about my past. I suppose not. Anyway, Alma's told me she's persuaded him to keep it to himself and keep me on, so... After all, there's no complaints about my work, has he? M Mr Baldwin has never struck me as a particularly broad-minded man. He could make life very difficult for you. Perhaps you'd rather have taken a job further away then, Roy. Like Amsterdam, maybe. Uh, hey, Hayley. What do you reckon, Ken? A pocket-sized dictionary I can take everywhere with me, or this brick of a thing? Well, where dictionary is a concern to her, there's no compromise. Size really does matter. Well, like, more words, more word power, you mean? That's right, yeah. You know, you might do better with a thesaurus. A, th a what? Yeah. A thesaurus. A dictionary explains the meaning of words. A thesaurus gives you an alternative word that means the same thing. What's the use in that? Well, sometimes another word is a better expression. You mean sound cleverer? Uh, well, yes. So, you mean it'll make anything all right sound embrainy? Uh, it can have that effect, yeah. No, it's not all right. Okay. This and another copy of, uh, of, of the magazine. Yeah. There we go. Uh, Alec, what on earth are you doing? <laughs> Bit old for paper rounds, aren't you, Mr Gilroy? I think it's disgusting, is that? Taking jobs off young kids. Look. Just less of your cheek, if you don't mind, young lady. 
As a matter of fact, I've just been checking on the rounds. This is what is left of that Gatley lad's delivery up Bessie Street. Oh, what happened? Oh, well, I only caught him pushing the papers through the letterbox and lifting the milk off the step at the same time. What, stealing? Yes, bold as brass. Any road, I sacked him on the spot. Don't, uh, don't suppose you'd like to earn a bob or two, would you, and uh, finish the round off? What, delivering papers? Sorry, but I've got to say it's not like things. What, in the next hour? Uh, look, I'll uh, make it worth your while. Fiver. Two pound fifty. Uh, and uh, you'll be grateful. Three fifty. You're desperate. Good girls. Lost some at? Not anymore. What are you doing with them papers? Well, seeing as you've gone cold on lending me the money, buying Natalie out, I've got to find someone who will, Anna. What, are you going for a loan? Got a bank this afternoon. You're putting up this house as security? No other choice, have I? And when were you planning on telling me? This is my house and all, you know. Yeah, and some blokes would say that money of yours is mine as well. That's my inheritance, Kevin. Fine! But how do you think I'm supposed to feel having to go to the bank for a loan with my wife sitting on 50 grand doing now? Yeah, well, I'm sorry, but my mind's made up. Right. Been the Rovers before I go, if you change it again. Men who dress like teenagers are seriously sad. No, I'll pity for you. Tea, please, Roy. Yes, of course, sir. Curly, do you mind if I ask you something personal? Well, you can ask, I might answer you. It's just that I, I noticed you've changed your image. Well, not as such, no, Roy. It's more of a development, a, a development of my personality. Ah, I see that. Well, that, that's interesting. Oh, great. Because my point is, if you'd needed to do more than just change your clothes and cut your hair, would you have done it? How do you mean? Well, I mean, if, if your body was demanding other changes in order for your personality to develop. Oh, I'm sorry, Roy, I'm not with you there. No, no, perhaps that's best. Uh, 40 pence, please. Oh, cheers, thanks. There you go. Thanks. Hiya. Hiya. Also. What's all this then, eh? A love letter to Leonardo DiCaprio, is it? Well, it's me article, actually. Yeah. Anyway, what's another word for nerd? Oh, I don't know. Uh, laughing stock. Brilliant. Cheers. See this? Toya's going to be the next editor of the News of the World. Is she? Well, I'll have plenty to write about round here. <laughs> there we are. We don't want your scoop falling into the wrong hands, do we? Cheers. Any good, is it? It's, um, well observed, I'd say. Oh. Ah, oh, there you are. I wondered when you'd show your face again. Well, I only just nipped to the Rovers, check everything was OK. Well, maybe you ought to spend more time looking after Jack and Vera and less messing things up over here. I don't follow you, Ken. Where's that Battersby offspring? Is she not back yet? Yeah, she's back and I sent her out while we sorted out this little mess that you've left for us. And which mess is that? Why? How many are they going to be? I'm talking about Mrs Gatley, Alec. The mother of the boy you fired this morning. Oh, come to plead for leniency, had she? Come to post your head through that letterbox in Bessie Street, more like. What? Coming on a bit strong, was she? Still, I'm sure you handled it with great tact and diplomacy. She said that her boy claims he wasn't stealing. Well, he would, wouldn't he? I mean, you know that. You're a teacher. Yes, and I also know you don't go clipping kids around the ear. Well, what was I supposed to do? Give him a sweet? You're not supposed to do anything, Alec. We're lucky you didn't get the police involved. The police? For assault. Oh, nonsense. Look, I'm warning you, Alec. God knows why Rita had to ask you to keep an eye on things while she's away, but I'm not going to let you run her business into the ground while she's gone. Hey, you say, look at her. I know she's a proper little workhorse, but she's never lifted her head up once yet. It'll be man trouble, bet you. It's a good job he didn't take the rest of us like that. We'd all be on half days. Hey, up. Hayley? Come in the office, will you? What's all that about, then? You better not be giving her the bonus, because of all extra stuff she's shifting. Shut the door, Hayley. Mr Baldwin, I know what this is about. Yeah, I'm sure you do. 
It's a pity you didn't let me in on it when you asked me for a job. I didn't see it as important. You didn't think it was important? Mr Baldwin, it doesn't affect how good I am at my job. Oh, it's, it's not as easy as that. And Ted? I've got that lot to think about. I've got to consider the repercussions if they find out the truth about you. Well, they wouldn't. There's no reason why they should. I'm sorry. I've got to let you go. Please, now, Mr. this Gordon. is the best way. Look, don't worry. Your secret is safe with me. Just pick up your stuff and go. It's uh, best this way. Less awkward. Less, less time for questions. Yeah, I suppose. I'll send your pay on to you. She loved that job, she did. She'd never late, she'd never been thieving, not early. Oh, not her. It just doesn't make sense. I'd have thought Baldwin would have been more likely to sack rest of us and have Ailey as a one-woman factory all to himself. All dressed up for the bank manager, are you? Yeah, looks like it, doesn't it? What do you know about uh, Baldwin getting rid of Ailey? Sorry, Janice, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, come on. You and him as thick as thieves in that office of his. Talking sales, yeah. <laughs> How he manages his staff's up to him. Sacking your best workers for now is a funny way of managing staff, if you ask me. Hey, I'll be back. Here you are. You've got to keep your strength up. Thanks, Roy. I'll get you another cup of tea. That's stone cold. <laughs> Very kind. I do care about you, Hayley. Very deeply. You do know that, don't you? Why can't everybody be like you, Roy? I suppose the world would be a very strange place if they were. Hayley. I've come round to see if you're all right, love. Hayley has been unfairly dismissed. She's fine now. She's with me. Well, we were gobsmacked. What was it? What did you say you'd done? Thanks for dropping by, Ida, but... I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. Well, don't you worry, girls are behind you. Every one of us. And we'll get Baldwin sorted out. He can't do that to one at lasses. But we'll see. I'll see you. Yeah. Well, at least I've still got a friend's made at factory. Yeah. Don't you think you'd better go after her? Why? Well, he clearly hasn't said anything yet, but if Mrs Clough and the others put pressure on Mr Baldwin, he might feel obliged to explain his actions. Oh, I don't know, Roy. Maybe it's best if he does. But at least there'll be no more secrets and we all know where we stand. I'm, I'm going to be alone. I'll, I'll come with you. Sorry, Roy, but I want to be on my own. Listen, Sal, I know you're not keen on using the house as security, but... I can't think of any other way of raising the cash. If I'm not prepared to use my mother's money, you mean? Yes! Look, Sal, it should be OK. The business is sound and I work like a dog at it. What if it all goes wrong? What if you have an accident like Jim MacDonald and you can never work again? I'm not saying there's no risk, Sal. But what happens if Natalie sells up and I get lumbered with another partner who wants me out? I could end up losing the business I've worked all my life for. You better get going or you're going to be late for your meeting. It wouldn't be a risk, though, Sal. Not with your money. I've told you the answer to that, Kevin. And I'm not going to change my mind. I swear. I don't understand you, Sal. Here comes Mr Saturday Night Fever. <laughs> I wonder if his voice has gone up an octave since he started wearing them trousers. You'll have to serve him, Natalie. I can't trust myself. Yes, Curly. Pint, is it? Uh, no. Uh, a bottle of lager, please. No glass. So, how are you settling into your new image? 
Oh, this isn't a new image. I've always been like this on the inside, Natalie. I've just decided to, you know, let it out. Right. Well, you know what they say, don't you? Some things are just best left hidden. If Baldwin can sack Ailey just like that, if you ask me, no one's safe. Well, maybe he's sick, because he don't know what he's doing. Maybe he's got a split personality, you know, like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. No, there's only one side to Baldwin. The bad one. Yeah. Well, there's only one other possibility, then. He's been trying to have his way with her. You are? Now, some bosses are like that. They get these young lasses, and when they won't play ball, they sack them. You reckon Ellie? Look how she got job. Out of nowhere. She was so grateful for it. She's right picking for a little swine like that. Well, that looked a bit heavy just then. Kevin's gone to see his bank manager to see if he can borrow the money to buy Natalie out as I won't give it to him. And do you think he'll get it? I don't know. He reckons his business is rock solid. He wants to use the house as security. And how do you feel about that? I mean, half the house is yours, isn't it? Well, yeah, I know it's a risk, but I know that Kevin will work hard. I don't doubt it, but, you know, if ever you were to split up, and let's face it, it's probably only a matter of time, isn't it? You'd never be able to get hold of half the value of the house. Not if it was tied up as security for a loan. I'll have a packet of fags before I clock back on, Ken, please. Oh, yeah. Best make the most of my little pleasures while I still can. Yeah, that sounds ominous. Yeah. Why? What's going on? Oh, Baldwin. Sacked early this morning. If he can fire an eager beaver like that. Been out. The rest of us had better look to his backs. Hey, mind you. I'd have reckoned that he had a bit more on his mind than his saw him when he got rid of her. Honest? Anyway, if he's in firing mood, better not be late. All right, there you go, Janice. Ta. Oh, before you go, uh, I wonder if I could... if I could interest you in a packet of these. Uh, they're new, you know, just the thing for sucking on during a long afternoon's hard toil behind a sewing machine. They're very good, very tasty. What, are you giving him away? Promotion, like? No, no, but they're very good, very chewy. I hate chewy mints. They give me awful phlegm. See ya. What are all that about? Selling, young lady. In case you hadn't noticed, this is a shop. You're lingering in like an upturned goldfish. She came in for a packet of fags, not mints. The trouble is, the customer never knows what they want until the shopkeeper tells them. And from the look of these figures here in this book, no one's telling them they want these here mints. But my mum don't like mints. I could have told you that. Well, whether she likes them or not, it's irrelevant. Just a moment, Alec. I'm not sure I like what you're suggesting here. There's no to like or dislike. It's a mere technique of selling. Whenever a punter comes through that door, whether it's for paper or fags, I want you asking them if they want a packet of these chewy mints. Yeah, but if they wanted them, they'd ask for them. No, Doyle's right. What you're talking about is pressurising the customer to buy something that they don't want. Look, Kenneth, I wouldn't expect you to understand. I mean, you're not a professional in the line of commerce. What we're talking about is an accepted tool of the trade. Well, it's one that I'm not using, and that's final. I see. Hey, Natalie! Yes, Curly? Listen, what did you mean when you said earlier that some things are best left hidden? Oh, nothing. Now, come on, tell me. Well, it's just not you, is it? All the flash gear and the earrings. Well, how do you mean? You're a lovely bloke. At least the old Curly is, and I just don't want you made into, you know, a laughing stock. A laughing stock? Oh, thanks, yeah. Can I come in? Yeah, all right, yeah. Uh, is he back from the bank yet? Yeah. Sounds like it's a go. Have you thought about what I've said? I'm not letting Kevin have any of my money, Greg. But I can't deny him the only chance he's ever going to get a find in it. You might regret it. Besides, if... Well, if I did leave him, there must be some other way of sorting out my half of the house. Well, none that I know of. <laughs> anyway, it's not as if I haven't got any money, is it? No. So, have you told him about the underwear parties, then? <laughs> you make it sound like it's some sort of orgy. <laughs> well? I'll tell him to. I'm sorry, Curly, but you know me. I speak as I find. Well, thanks for your honesty, Natalie, but in future, it'd be easier if you keep your opinions to yourself. Well, 
If you're happier in your little fantasy, then fine. <sighs> That's one thing my life is not a fantasy. And I'm sick of it. Oh, come on, Curly, it's not that bad. I mean, look, you've got a good job. A job is not a life, Natalie. No, I suppose not, but... You see, that's all I am. Norman Watts. Manager. Weatherfield. Furman's Freezers. I wear a boring suit for work. I wear a pair of jeans and a T-shirt every night at the Rovers. Apart from the uh, annual Weatherfield Traders Dinner and Dance. And I got that on my own. What, and dressing up like a Wally's gonna change all that? <laughs> see, that's it. I, I want to change. I don't have to dress up to be a laughing stock. I'm not already. That's why my wife's in Kuala Lumpur. She thinks I'm a sad prat. She wants a divorce. Roy. Ah, Mrs. Baldwin. I wish I could say it was a pleasure to see you. I don't know what to say. I think you've probably said quite enough already, don't you? Is Hayley here? No, she's gone home, and I thank you not to bother her there if you don't mind. Look, I'm as shocked and angry as you are that Mike sacked Hayley. Hayley took you for her friend. She trusted you with her deepest secrets. Well, I am her friend. And you can't believe how wretched I feel about all this. How do you think Hayley feels? It wasn't just a, a new job at that factory. It was the start of a new life. And you and, and your Neanderthal husband have destroyed that. Have you the tiniest idea what that could do to her? Ah, the curtain comes down on another day's profit, Sir Kenneth. Oh, we made some that, have we? Without pushing a packet of mints under the nose of every poor soul that walked in. For today, yes. But I still want to see them chewy mints shifted. I don't want products or staff resting on the laurels while Rita's away. Yes, well, before you put the cabin out for the Hard Sell of the Year award, don't forget that this is Rita's shop and they're her customers. Don't you worry, Ken. I only have Rita's best interests at heart. And, uh, uh, where are you going with that? But you don't leave money in the till overnight, Ken. What's the matter? Don't you trust me? We'll see you in the morning. Oh, what a day. I'm absolutely starving. If that Greg brings in any more new orders, I'm going to have to buy a bigger factory. Well, you better stop sacking your staff for no reason, then, hadn't you? Oh, here we go again. A decision has been made, and now it's done. And how am I supposed to feel about that? Oh, I know you let the cat out the bag, but it's no good crying over spilt milk. He, she, or it will get another job, so <laughs> don't worry. Oh, but I am worried, Mike. I'm worried about what sort of man I've married. Have you any idea what Haley has been through? Oh, I don't want to know. That is typical. You know, you're ignorant, Mike, in every sense of the word. Hey, hang on a minute. I've got a factory to Oh, run. come on, stop hiding. This has got nothing to do with running a factory. The truth is you are an ignorant, insensitive pig. Just when that girl needed a helping hand, what do you do? You pull your bother boots out and you kick her in the teeth. Well, you make me sick. Hi, Kev. Just sit down, I'm dishing it up. Hey, I'm starving. Where's the kids? They're upstairs. They've already had their tea. Yeah. Thanks. Kevin, I just wanted you to know that I don't mind about you using the house as security. I know there's nothing to worry about with where you'd run the garage. I'll have to wait and see. Nothing signed it out yet. And I. Well, I've got some good news for you. Huh? What sort of good news? I've got a new job. A new job? What sort of new job? Well, it, it's sort of promotion, I suppose. It, it's sales at the factory. How come? Well, I'd still be doing my day job there, but this is selling their new line. Sexy underwear. You know, like they have at them women's houses in parties. What, a night? Yeah, three nights a week. You what? You are joking, aren't you? No, I thought you'd be glad it's extra money for the garage. So we don't need any extra money. You've got 50 grand in your account. Will you shut up about that 50 grand? No, I won't. Because to be honest, Al, I don't understand. 
I'm going to be working all hours, God send us to keep this roof over our head now. And you're telling me you're going out three nights a week selling frilly knickers after you've spent all day in the factory? <laughs> Look, Sal, we've got more money in our bank account than we've ever had in our life. What's going on? What are you planning to do? Run off with it all? Don't touch that. We've got to eat off here. Yeah, well, it's all in order, isn't it? Give us a couple of secs and I'll shift it. Yeah, we should have shifted it last night. Yeah, well, my head was cabbaged, wasn't it? Have you seen this? My service stroke product is special because... The main advantage of my service stroke product over my competitors are... You know, I'm a backstreet mechanic. How am I supposed to answer questions like that? Hey, you'll have to get used to that now you're a saleswoman. Will I? Yeah, promotions, meeting deadlines. Hey, is Baldwin going to lend you his motor then, or what? No. Well, he's going to have to get you some of it. You can't cart your samples round on a bus, can you? Hey, you might get mobile as well. We only started discussing it last week. I don't know the ins and outs of it yet. <laughs> well, I'm trying to work out what the attraction is. It's not like you need the cash, is it? Yeah, I just want to do something that stretches me. <laughs> you won't say that a month from now. It's a challenge. Yeah, to someone pushy, you're not cut out for it. Oh, ah, yeah, you'd know, wouldn't you? I should know better than anyone, Sal. Look, face it, it's a poxy job with poxy hours. No mobile phone, no company car, no perks whatsoever. <laughs> you're driving hard bargain, don't you, Sally? I wonder if Haley's enjoying a hearty breakfast this morning. I very much doubt it. Oh, don't start that again. I'm the one being condemned here. Huh? It's like a witch's coven in that factory of mine. Why, what are they doing? Sticking pins in little dolls? Probably. Gould knows where their horrible little minds have conjured up. Well, easy to put a stop to all this, you know. Nothing to do I with it. I mean, all them. you need to do is give Haley a job back and she'll put a stop to it for you. And you'll have a fan for life. If I wanted a fan for life, I'd buy a puppy. Hey, careful! That's my article. I don't want to get stains all over it. It shouldn't be on the counter anyway. Oh, I was going to print you off a copy. Well, it's all right. I'll wait for the finished product. Now go and wash your hands. When's it come out? Next issue, I hope. If not, week after. What's up? Well, I'll not be here. I'm going on holiday. Hasn't Gail mentioned extra cover? Yeah, I forgot. Oh, well, I'll save you a copy then. That's a quid. What? Oh. Are you going anywhere nice? A psychic convention, Bournemouth. I knew you were going to say that. And then I'm going to stay with my Auntie Lorna near Eastleigh. I go every year. Yeah, well, keep your eye out for any stories for me. <laughs> I don't think they go in much for intrigue in Chandler's Ford. Oh, it don't matter. I'm starting local any road. You're Hayley. What do you mean? Well, my mum was telling us last night about her getting the boot, and I thought if I didn't exclusive... Oh, no, no, no. We could flog it to the Gazette. Definitely not. Yeah, but it's not fair. I mean, she were good at her job and this actor for now. Yeah, but we don't know the whole facts. I thought you were supposed to be her mate. That Baldwin's a bully. Now, she's probably too frightened to talk, but I'm not. A good journalist should never be afraid to rock the boat. Well, she wouldn't want the fuss. I know she wouldn't. Why not? Well, she's a very private person. meet a tall, dark, handsome stranger today with a new car. <laughs> well, right about the car, wrong about the stranger. Why is that, though? Because well, I ain't no stranger. I feel like one. Oh, are you pining for me? Yeah, pining like, pining like a pine corn. <laughs> we can't have that. Tonight, 8 o'clock, A fixed. I'll be there. Put your laptop back. Oh, Ta, was your muse with you? Hey? The muse, you know, the goddess of inspiration. Um, I don't know about a goddess, but I were inspired by summer, yeah. Oh, well. Cheers, Colonel. You're welcome. Anytime. Too easy. Hey, right here. Is that we're under M for me, Vince? Right. Numbers 015-395-322-48. Right, right, thanks very much. 
planning order, are you? No, no, no. I'm just trying to get hold of Rita. A bit of cabin business that needs sorting out. Oh, well, can't Alec help? He's getting pretty involved over there these days. Yes, a little too involved for my liking, which is why I want to speak to Rita. Clear a few things up. Thanks, Vera. Mm. Yes, did you hear that? Old Chinese proverb, Vera. Two big men plus one small counter equals trouble and a half. No, about Alec getting involved over there, they were right, weren't they? About what? Well, it's not Rita that's after this place, it's Alec that's after hers. Well, poor Ken better watch out, then. Oh, well, it's an old wind. So, have you made your mind up? Oh, yeah, uh, tuna, please, on brown. No, I meant about that slightly bigger decision that you had on your plate. Oh, the divorce. I can't believe I spilled my guts like that. I mean, you never even knew Raquel. No, but I know you. Well, you'll know then that I mean it when I say I'm sorry. I'll, I'll never bend your ear like that again. <laughs> yeah, this is as if I'd seen him yesterday. It's been nearly two weeks. Oh, don't I know it. Mind you, I suppose you did need some time to recover, though. <laughs> uh, do you mind if I join you, ladies? I don't know. Not very good out of it for my work, are you? Careful, Maxine. You're skating on thin ice there. Oh, come on. Take the notice, Curly. Come and sit down. Cheers, thanks. Oh, I say, look at the young executive. Don't you not ever stop? Oh, it's all for show. He's only got his pet lunch and his paper in there. Wrong. Thank you, Natalie. Actually, I'm surprised you haven't got one of these, Audrey. It'd be great for council business. Would it? Oh, yeah. You can type up your correspondence. You can update your diary electronically. All I've got to do is plug this into a phone and I can access the price of every Furman's product on the shelves from any point in the globe. Mm, so. well, I think I'll access another gin in here. <laughs> <laughs> well, his management, didn't he? Of course he knows what's going on. Well, go and ask him, man. I'd rather talk to Organ Grinder. Oh, when, though? Baldwin might be off all afternoon. There's only one way to find out. Been trying to find an excuse to see you all day. Is Mike due about this afternoon? As far as I know, he's only taking Peter up for, for lunch. I told Kevin we're working late tonight. Tonight? Yeah. Is that a problem? <laughs> Nothing that can't be fixed. Oh, hang on. Mike's just come in. Uh, meet me at my place. Six-ish. I'll phone up for a takeaway. Our first dinner together. <laughs> I wish it was breakfast. You don't know the full facts. I sacked Hayley Patterson because I wasn't satisfied with her progress, and that is the end of it. Well, I'm afraid we don't agree on that, Mr. Baldwin. Oh, tough! If you weren't happy with Hayley's work, you should have followed the proper disciplinary procedure, the way we see it. Oh, do you? Well, think what you want and get back to work. Oh, do you know, that's his answer to everything. I've consulted with the girls, and they all agree on this. Don't tell me. You want me to reinstate Patterson? We do, yeah. Or we'll ballot our members and take appropriate strike action. Well, I'll tell you straight on this, Ida. It's not worth fighting for. You will end up with egg on your face. If it happened to Ailey, it could happen to any of us. Too right. Yeah. yeah. It could Too right. Yeah. Ah, uh, Natalie. You're, you're the barmaid, aren't you? Well, I was the last time I looked. Yeah. Do you believe in, in Dutch courage? Only in extreme circumstances, Roy. But the secret is not to overdo it. All oh, right, well, I'll have a small sweet sherry then, please. Right. Coming up. No, really, Kelly. Me and technology just don't mix. <laughs> you should go and work the till at work. No, this is idiot proof. Look, you see this button here? Look. Oh, Roy! Now, you look like a man who would be interested in computers. Uh, not really, Audrey, no. no. Wait till you see this. I mean, it practically cooks your dinner for you. Kelly, I would love to stay and watch, but I've got to cut and a blow dry in a few minutes. Yeah, and so have I. Yes, come on. Sorry, Kelly. So, this is the virtual office, is it? I'm surprised you could concentrate with all the noise around. I wouldn't dream of it. You see, I lent it to Toya, the computer. She's just giving me back. Ah, at last, somebody else has recognised her hidden depths. Talk about out on the mouths of babes. <laughs> she said something to me this morning that's made me completely change my outlook. I realised I was a man of straw. Cheers. My God, she's driven you a drink. She's driven me to do what a man's got to do. In a minute. 
eh? What's this? She's forgot to delete her article. Oh, look! He's dragged himself away from the sherbet dabs at last. Listen, I thank you not to undermine me in front of customers and staff, Vera. Me undermine you? You're doing quite well on your own. And over at road and all, by all accounts. Meaning what? Meaning that you've been ruffling Kamala's feathers. Oh, and who told you that? A little bird. Oh, a little bird called Barlow. I'd like a word, please. I'm busy. Then I'll wait. You're right, Curly. Apparently not. Apparently, I'm a sad, mad dad figure. What? The kind of bloke that needs kicking in his combat pants and drowned in his own designer hair gel. Says who? Says Toya Laverne batters bit. The baby bites back. I, I know the problem, Mr. Baldwin. I, it stems from fear. I, I know because I've felt it myself. Uh, when Haley first told me uh, about herself, I, I, I was shocked. I rejected her. I, I felt she'd lied to me. But most of all, I was frightened. I was scared what people might think. I've never been a brave man. Spare me the sordid details, please. But, but there comes a time when you have to stand up to be counted. I, I, I want you... I'm asking you to give Haley a job back. <laughs> Join the queue. Look, it doesn't matter what you think about her past. She's a good worker. She's diligent. She's discreet. It's those women out there I'm thinking about. They've got families to feed. They put their neck on the block. They're prepared to go on strike because of her. Good. That just shows how unfair you've been. She lied to them. She hasn't. She got their support through false pretenses. And I don't think that's fair. Look, look, look at it from Haley's point of view. No, 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 Roy. Now, just hear me out, will you? I'm not like you. I don't care what people think. But I do care about honesty and the smooth running of this factory. Now, I kept stum about the real reason I sacked Haley, and it's all blown up in my face. Yeah, well, you can't blame the girls for one You thing. tell Haley this. I've been fair to her, and I expect her to be fair to me. I want her to put that lot out there straight. But she... I don't care how she does it. She doesn't have to tell them the truth. She can say I caught her selling samples in the market, anything. But get that lot off my back. So, so you don't care too much about honesty? I'm giving her the choice. Back off. Stop all this talk about strikes or... Or you'll tell the girls the truth. She's got until Monday to decide. It's Ken, Ken Barlow. <laughs> yes, I'm fine, thanks. How are you? Good. Actually, I was, um, I was wondering if I have a word with Rita. Oh, uh, do you know when she'll be back? Maxine. Oh, do tell me. I'm sorry. Greg! It's Mike. I swear he does this on purpose. Yeah, but it's Friday night. Why didn't you just tell him to get lost? I can't. Look, it's boring, but it's important. I'll ring you tomorrow, I swear. I'll take you somewhere really special. Yeah, well, I'll be washing my hair. Boring, but it's important. What? Where's Ken? Uh, look, I'll have to go now. So, yes, it was, uh, it was nice talking to you, too. OK. Uh, take care. Bye. I'm sorry, was I interrupting something? No. Well, then, could I point out that phone is for business use only? It was a business call. Oh, I get it. On to your old pals at the Gazette, where you tell them I'm treading on your toes. Actually, no. I was trying to get hold of Rita. Rita? Rita's gone away for a rest. Any problems, you talk to me. You are the problem. 
still smarting, are you? Because you left me in charge. In charge of what? Sacking the staff and alienating the customers, because that's what you've been doing. I beg your pardon. So just back off, Alec, while well, you've still got the chance. Are you threatening I'm me? So get on to Rita, and by the time I finish with you, you can forget the books. She won't even trust you with a penny shoes. Right, girls, two penny kitty while we can still afford it. Ah, we might be on starvation rations next week. Yeah. Thanks. Where was it? Four hours of lager, a dry white wine, a soda, and an orange juice, please. I, um, I saw Curly Watts this dinner. Did you? I hope your Toya can talk as tough as she writes. Curly saw the article. What article? Why didn't she tell you? She borrowed his computer, wrote an article about him, and then forgot to wipe it off. Well, were it not a nice article? No. Well, did he not sit funny side? I don't know. I couldn't see for the steam coming out his ears. <laughs> hey, Janice, will you come over here and explain to her? She thinks we're all going to be sunbathing come next Monday <laughs> afternoon. No, on Monday we have to give seven days' notice for a ballot. And if that's carried, you can street down Coronation Street if you like. <laughs> it won't come to that, though, will it? Yeah, I hope not. I'm looking forward to a decent holiday this year. Yeah, well, it doesn't look like he's going to change his mind. He sent poor Roy home with a flea in his ear. Ah, but he's got Benson's order coming in at end of month, and he's not going to miss that, is he? Once he sees that we're sticking to his guns, he'll have no choice. Right, girls, let's have a toast. To Baldwin's bottle, or lack of it. Yeah, I'll drink to that. Yes. Hey, I better mm. be going. Oh, well, I'll give you a ring if there's any new. Yeah, all right. Have a good weekend. See ya. See ya. Enthusiastic, isn't she? Well, she's always been Baldwin's blue eye, hasn't she? Well, she's not the only one with contacts. Our other manager is practically my stepson. Don't forget. Hey, what do you say? I have a word. See if we can make him see our point of view. Hey, you do that. And if it works, I'll street down Coronation <laughs> Street. <laughs> this is a pleasant surprise. I thought you'd be up to your eyes in packing. Yeah, yeah, well, um, I, I, I've been thinking, Hayley, yeah. Uh, I, I might cancel the trip. Why? Well, you might want me around. Well, what do you mean? I've got something to tell you, Hayley. Now, don't be angry with me. I did it for the best. You're getting me worried now. Well, I've been to see Mr Baldwin. When? This afternoon. What he did to you was wrong, and somebody had to tell him. I, I thought, well, as your significant other, it really ought to be me. Oh, Roy, that's the most romantic thing I've ever heard. Yeah, well, don't get your hopes up. I think I might have made things worse. Well, that's not possible. I'm afraid it is. Oh, no, he's, he's locking up. Well, even Mike has a night off sometimes. No, but Greg's working late. Mr Baldwin! Maxine, come on, now, don't do this to yourself. Well, I'm just asking what's yeah, going Listen, now face it. Lovey, he is just stringing you along. He just sees you and it suits him. And when it doesn't, then heaven knows what he gets up to. Love it, I am sorry, but it needed saying. Right, sweetheart, what was it? Nothing, no, I'm sorry. No, Maxine, no. Lovey, come on. Where are we? Told us under silence, surrounded by the mass. The fate is on the people not. One of these days, I'm going to waltz into your office and I'm going to do that in front of all the girls. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a death wish or something. Maybe I have. Well, maybe I just want to give them something else to talk about, but this stupid flaming strike. You don't really think it's stupid, do you? Most of them wouldn't give hell of the time of day before she was sacked. Now, all of a sudden, the man in the barricades. Ah, uh, it's a bit of excitement for them. No different from flirting with me over the timesheets. I'd call this a little bit more than flirting. Sorry, you're right. <laughs> this is serious seduction. <laughs> Romantic musical. <laughs> Table set. Carry on its way. Bottle chilling in the fridge. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> ah. Two cans of beer, do you? <laughs> I knew I'd forgotten something. <laughs> I'll nip out and get one. Well, shouldn't I go? What if someone sees you? I thought this was a business meeting. Oh, silly me. I forgot. <laughs> a strike. I can't believe it. I'd only been in job five minutes. I thought they'd all just shrug and carry on as normal. Well, their loyalty is a credit to them, I agree, but... Uh, and I hate to say this, would they still feel the same way if they knew the whole truth? Ida Clough, Janice Battersby. Janice was very kind to me. All right, let, let's presume she'd understand. 
But what about her kids? What about her husband? You might think them women are your friends, but they'll not keep your secret once it's out. They'll not be able to contain themselves. So you'd rather I lied? Say that I was sacked for incompetence? No. Who uh, may be let on I'm a thief? No, of course not. But what choice have you got if you want to lead a normal life? You're thinking about yourself. Be honest. When you said that about the Battispies, you could hear him wondering, oh, his girlfriend used to be a man, what does that make him? Well, yes. It frightens me how people will react. But if you do decide to tell the truth, I want to be here by your side, not the other end of the country, waiting for the phone to ring. I don't want to read about it in the Sunday papers. And I don't want to ruin your holiday. What are you going to tell them, then? I don't know, Roy. Maybe I'll just tell them the truth. Maybe I'm kidding myself. I can keep it a secret forever. I'll go and phone my auntie Lorna. No, Roy. Take the holiday of her But you're punishing me. No. I'm just trying to stand on my own two feet. Look, look. Try not to think about me. I won't think any the less of you, whatever you decide. But, but, bear in mind. Being brave feels marvellous at the time, but it's not always easy to live with. Thanks. Well, whatever I decide, you'll be the first to know. I'll not stop long, I know it's your night off. Last thing you want to do is to start talking sharp. No. But if people saw us chatting in pub, well, might put you in a difficult position. Why? Well, you're top management, and we're about to call a strike. Janice, can this wait? I don't mean to be rude, but... Do you want me to get that? No, I'll go. Working late, eh? It's funny how you're not there, isn't it? Funny how Mike Bolden had a right laugh when I saw him locking up. Maxine, what the hell do you think you're playing? You must just think I'm stupid! Who is she? Hiya, love. Janice. Janice and I were talking shop. Well, nothing that can't wait. I can see you've got things to discuss. Thanks. I'll uh, catch up with you over the weekend, then. You do that. See you, love. Sorry. Cheers. You made me look a right jerk. I thought... What did you think, eh? Oh, it had to be Janice, of all people. Be all round the factory by Monday. You said you were working late. Did I say it was in the factory? Did I? And even if I did, what the hell's it got to do with you? I don't have to explain anything to you. You're not my wife. You're not even my girlfriend. What, well, so I'm just some girl that you pick up and drop You're just you some girl who I sleep with when it suits us both. Grow up, Maxine. Can't you see how boring this is getting? want Maxine I'm surprised to see me are you well if you come to see Greg you better join it here how do you mean Maxine oh his time is very precious at the moment you know forget it Maxine it's all right I'm going anyway go after her Greg no go after her no Sally Sally Maxine What's up? Come on, something's happened, Ian. Not this, I think this is clean. Thanks. It's supposed to be waterproof stuff. He's, he's finally giving me marching orders. Greg has? Yeah. He was supposed to be going out with me tonight. He called off at the last minute for the millionth time. I went round there because he said he was working late and Mike Baldwin was looking up. Audrey said he's just been stringing me along. I went to the Rovers, I had a couple of drinks for Dutch Courage and I thought I'd just go round there and I'll confront him. And when I got round there, I just felt that there was somebody in there with him. In the flat? Yeah. So I just went barging in there, didn't I? And it was Janice. Janice Battersby. He went off at me. He just went mad. He just said they, they were just talking business and I'd humiliated him. I just know he's seen someone, Sally. How? I 
just do. You know, I mean, you must just know. You know I'm lying to you. Except he isn't. What do you mean? Well, he was working late. What do you think I was doing there? Mike's got this new project going, underwear parties. It's brought me in as a saleswoman for some reason. I can think of better ways of spending my Friday nights. That's what the wine's for. What? Well, if Greg's gonna spend two hours rambling on about some boring old target figures, I need something to keep me going. Give him a ring, Maxine. Hey, you're not going like that, are you? Mm -hmm. Well, give me five minutes, I'll change my shirt. Yeah, well, don't be long, cos I told Gail and Martin we'd meet them for a quick drink at about eight o'clock. Film starts at ten to nine. Meet them where? At the Rovers. Ring them. Tell them to find somewhere else. Why? Drinking at the Rovers got us into this mess. What mess? Familiarity breeds contempt. Mike, I don't know what you're talking about. Some nutter latches herself on to you at Furman's, right? You think you have to be nice, so you're taking in the Rovers for a drink. People see it and they think, oh, she's a soft touch. My employees see it and they think that I'm a soft touch, right? So what happens? Contempt. Solution, find another boozer. But, Mike, I like the Rovers. Tough. I beg your pardon? You phone Gail, I'd change my shirt. Oh. I don't know why you bothered, that's all. I just didn't want to get the wrong idea. The right idea? Greg, there's me stood on the step with a smile and a bottle in my hand. It's not exactly normal, is it? No, oh, you're way down the list of suspects. She caught me in here with Janice. Yeah, but Janice is... Married with two kids? I was going to say your stepmother. <sighs> look, the more you explain yourself, the more you look suspicious. Forget Maxine. She doesn't matter. What? You can be really hard when you want to be. Not hard, honest. What would you rather I did? Treat her with a bit of decency. Oh, so she won't go snitching to Kev? That's your idea of decency, is it? Don't panic. It's only the curry. ta -da! I'm all yours. What is it, the show? I wish it was. Oh, hello. What's eating her? What's eating me? It's just because you've had a bad day at work, you think you can come home and take it out on me? A bad day at work? Oh, you don't know the half of it. But I had a clough screaming strike one minute and Roy Cropper trying to psychoanalyse me the next. And I tell you what, if your mate Haley doesn't pull her finger out, I can kiss the Benson order goodbye as well. So, what has Haley got to do with it? She's got to talk some sense to those girls. How? Explain that she was sacked for a good reason. Oh, come on, Mike. I mean, you're not going to make her tell them the truth. Oh, come on, give me a bit of credit. No, uh, she can tell them what she wants. I'll back her all the way. Well, tell them what? I don't know, that she was incompetent, uh, insolent, that she was nicking knickers for all I care, but I'll back her all the way. And that makes you think that you're a soft touch? Oh, <gasps> my God! I'd hate to hear you being ruthless. Hey, hey! Where do you think you're going? For a large drink at the Rovers. Just don't mind up. Hiya. I'd like a word with you. I saw a light on us. I was crossing the road. I wasn't sure if it was... If I was burglars, what were you going to do? Mop them to death? What? Oh, oh this. No, no, Vera had a leak the other day. Oh, sounds painful. <laughs> Never mind that. Listen, what are you doing home? I could have come and picked you up. Oh, I fancy the train journey. Anyway, you've done enough running that shop. What do you mean? Well, I've relied on you more than I should have done. Maybe you said that Ken phoned this afternoon. Oh, that, yes. No, there's a lot of fuss about nothing. <laughs> oh, she was very cross, disturbing my convalescence because of a sherbet lemons order. <laughs> quite, quite. And I suddenly realised how much I was missing daft conversations about sherbet lemons and uh, magazine returns and... Um, and? Uh... Being in charge, really. Oh. But not the getting up at the crack of dawn. Didn't miss that for a second.
Oh, well, no. So, here I am, saying thanks for being a pal. I'll make it up to you, Ali. God knows how, but I will. Well, you could start with a kiss. Oh, Ali. <laughs> Look, don't let me detain you. We'll catch up when you're not so busy. Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow. Oh, just let me get my diary. Uh, yeah, I haven't got to make an appointment now, have I? Oh, don't be daft. No, this is my safety net. It was the doctor's idea. Do you remember? Oh, honey. Everything gets scribbled down in here, no matter how trivial. So, uh, I can count on you to remember who I am, then? <laughs> of course you can, Jack. Uh... <laughs> Look at the time! You didn't see that. It's a figment of your imagination. <laughs> Gotta go. Oh, Greg, why did it take you so long to get in touch with Les? What kind of a question is that? <sighs> Even six months would have done it. Hey? Kevin would have still been with Natalie, and I would have been a free agent. There'd be no need for us to creep about like this. Why did you hold out for so long? Me? Yeah. You knew I fancied you the day we met. I, I did not. And then you strung me along for months. <laughs> Respectable married woman. No, you're not. You're a hussy. <laughs> I'm not. Of course you are. You got that look in your eye. A hussy would want to stay the night. Don't tempt me, Greg. Oh, it's my vocation in life. <laughs> <laughs> How about a compromise? What? How about I stay for another drink? Suits me. Just a little. Just a little. <laughs> Here's to a little temptation. <laughs> Have you been staying on a Friday night? What's wrong with the youth club? The youthy burnt down when I was 12. Janice, stick that grill on, will you? Right. So, uh, have your mates been round or what? Not exactly. Curly Watts had a right go at me. Natalie said he were on Warpath. Oh, the nation trembles. Reckons I took the mick out of him with that article. You did, from what I heard. It was meant to be funny. What was? I was just going on about sad blokes who dye their hair and wear tight trousers to look cool. And the plonker took offence at that? He wants to be more careful next time. Do you reckon it's like Gufford a juggler? That's what sells newspapers. Oh, Les, don't encourage you, will you? Don't talk soft. There's loads of cashy slagging people off in the newspapers. You can't be nice all the time. Take that fat geezer with the beard. What's his name? Uh, the, the, Gary Bushel. Sex no prisoners, that fella. He's brilliant. And he's coining it in. Yeah, but it don't mean... You anything. stick at it, kid. You do right. Cheers, Les. You know, I've always said that about you, Sawyer. You know why you're painting? But you know how to play your strengths. Good on you, kid. Where's? Where's me toast, Jan? What time do you call this? Um, it went on longer than I thought. You've been in the Rovers, haven't you? No. Boozing. While well, your kids are wondering why you're never at home to read to them. Oh, gold star for Kevin, cos he put his kids to bed for once. Yeah, well, that's all beneath you now, isn't it, eh? Cooking tea, reading to your kids, now you're a career woman. Yeah, Kevin. You say so. Yeah, well, just choose, Sal. Either you want a family or a career. It'd be handy for us to know. Too loud. Your mum looks like she's got a dick. Hey, come on, girls. Coats on. Chop, chop. Taking them to the pictures. 
Give me five minutes. I'll come with you. Don't bother. Oh, I see. I'm being punished, am I? From where I'm standing, you seem to be having it always, Sal. One minute you've got me jumping through loops, next minute you're throwing it all back in my face. I thought you took me back because you loved me, but I was wrong. Because you wanted your pound of flesh. It's not like that, Kevin. All right, what is it like, eh? All this job stuff, staying out till all hours. You're acting like a stupid teenager. What, because I'm enjoying a job for the first time in my life? Is that not allowed? No one said you can't enjoy your job, Sal. You just seem to be forgetting you've got kids. You've got an husband. We notice when you're not around. Yeah, well, you seem to manage all right. Wrong! I'm not managing yourself. I'm at my wit's end. I can't put a foot right, can I? What do you mean? I don't know which is worse. Having you shouting at me or ignoring me. My nerves are shot. Don't exaggerate. All I want to do is make you happy, so. I'm wasting my time. So? No. So what am I doing wrong? It's not you. It's me. I don't want to hurt you, Kevin, and I don't want to hurt the girls. I'm sorry. We missed you, Sal. And I know it's daft because you've been here. I'm sorry, I've not been thinking straight. Come on, we're gonna be late. <sighs> Somebody's got the priorities right. Come with us. Do you reckon, girls? Do you think your mum deserves a treat? Yeah. Yeah. Morning. Morning, Ashley. Are you working today, Maxie? No, I've got six weeks paid holiday. Only I could do with a trim. If I pop in late, you think you could fit me in? Yeah, probably. Nothing all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Just you don't see yourself, that's all. Oh, yeah, I'll call in later on. I'll see what I can do, OK? Great, Maxie. Thanks. I'm going to work. I owe you an apology. I have reacted, I'm sorry. Just give me five minutes to explain. I'm going to work. Well, meet me in the Rovers at lunchtime. Oh, wait! What are you looking at? Yes, Chris. Rosie, you just stuffed your face with popcorn. <laughs> oh, but that was ages ago. Hey, I know. Why don't we all pile in the van and go to Chester Zoo for a picnic? Yeah. What, now? Yeah, you go and find your uh, plastic picnic set, then. Why not, Sal? Look, we've got to start making the effort, haven't we? That wasn't a pop at you. I know you want to give this job your best shot, and that's all credit to you. But it means we're hardly going to see you. We've got to start making the most of our time, haven't we? Instead of rowing all the time. Have a laugh, like we used to. Yeah, I'd like that. Just give me five minutes. I've just got a bit of business to do. OK. Right then, girls. Let's get this show on the road. Who wants what on the sarnies? Yeah, Betty, made oh. an honest woman of you. Oh, <laughs> lovely. Oh, Rita, you're back. <laughs> the bad penny. Oh. Uh, how are you feeling? You look wonderful, do not you? Oh, well, it's Mavis's cordon bleu. So, how's it been? That good? Well, Leanne and I have been fine. And Alec? <clears throat> I think it's time I wasn't here, love. Ta-ta. <laughs> bye, Betty. Bye. 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 Let's just say he's not a people person. Do I need to know this? Look, I tell you what, why don't you stick the kettle on and I'll stay behind this till where I belong. <laughs> well, I suppose we ought to have a ceremonial handover of the order book. Not on my account. Oh? I feel better, but I'm not 100%. Would you consider staying on for a bit, Ken? Oh, I know it's not your ideal job choice. No, it's not that. Is it the money? No. Leanne? Is she giving you cheek? No, Leanne is fine. So it's Alec. What's he been doing, eating paper, lads? I think that was next on the list. Oh, good job I came back when I did. So, if I promise to keep him at that side of the counter, 
then I will gladly stay on this. Done. Right. This is a pleasant surprise. The folder's just for camouflage, I hope. I'm not into talking shop just yet. I'm not staying. That sounds serious. It is. I think we should stop seeing one another. Oh? We're hurting too many people who don't deserve it. Innocent people. I wouldn't call Kevin innocent. I would. He's trying really hard. So are my kids, so is Maxine. What oh, belief of them? Oh, Greg. Look, you had a great night with me and now you're feeling guilty. It goes with the territory. It's more than guilt. I love Kevin. And you don't love me? You're not my husband. We've been through all this. I'm not arguing with you, Greg. That's all I've come to say, and I'm sorry. You're kidding yourself. And you're patronising me. I'm a big girl. Then act like one. That's exactly what I am doing. You don't even sound convincing. Sally! Sally! Oh, I've been stood up. Who you by? Hey, well, I am. We were supposed to be going shopping, only she's covering for Rita now instead. She does nothing but these days. Mm. I hope she's getting overtime. Hey, the poor woman's been ill. Yeah, and my bum's a cream bun. Look, it's true. She's had dizzy spells, lost her memory, everything. I mean, why do you think Alex's there every minute? They don't like leaving her on her own. All right. Hey, you don't fancy coming with us, do you? I've seen a lovely suit, I like it. Oh, you know me and Mark, it's love. But I'll have another one in there if you're stopping. <laughs> Nicker party. Well, it's not just knickers, Vera. We're offering a wide range of high-quality lingerie. Everything from your everyday brown brief set to your honeymoon trousseau. And as the hostess, you'd be entitled to a free gift from range. And obviously, all guests would be buying the drinks from the bar. <laughs> oh, I know how it works. We've had one before. Oh, was it a success? Oh, I got a red suspender belt. I don't know where it went. Great now. Oh, rep left week after, you know, executive stress. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You've got five minutes. I'm sorry. You've already said that. Look, I didn't mean what I said, I was angry. You know what a gossip Janice is? No, yeah, no. She's over there now wishing she could lip read. And your friend Ashley is waiting for me with a killer doll. Yeah, well, it's nice to know somebody cares. Max, I'm Janice's boss as well as her stepson. It's hard enough for me to keep the distance without you giving her ammo. We were just talking short. Yeah, I know about that. And the same goes for Sally Webster. I know. You've made her think that she's working for King Letch. Poor girl's mortified. Oh, I know. I feel really bad about that as well. Do you think I should go and apologise to her? No. No, it's better left. Can we straighten something out? I do like you. I care about you. You're just a bit... full on, that's all. Point taken. Apology taken? Yeah. So, how about dinner tonight? Maybe one night in the week. Like I said, point taken. See you around. Yeah, see ya. That's nice. Oh, the whole oh well, better. There's a strange man behind my bar. Don't give up the day job, Vera. Oh, Alec, it's you. Do you know I didn't recognise you for a minute? Oh, <laughs> yes, well, from now on, I'm at your beck and roll. There's a barrel knees changing and we want a tray of mixers. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, and there's uh, a knicker party in the bathroom Saturday night. Oh, what? Lounge in a you remember them, don't you? Little Sally's putting a party on for Mike Baldwin. Why wasn't I consulted? Well, I thought you'd enough on your plate running this place and a sweet shop. About the party. But you're never around, are you, to be consulted? Then let me make it quite clear, Vera. Rita's back and fending for herself. So from now on, I'm going to be very much around. You do well to bear that in mind. Oh, 
right. How's your head this morning? Sorry? Bit of a boozy session last night, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Got a bit carried away. Where are you off to? Just taking the girls, Chester Zoo. Bit of a picnic. Tell us inside if you want to. Time and a half on a Saturday, mind you. Picnic. That's nice. Greg. Uh, Kevin's in a good mood. But then he would be, wouldn't he? Well, Maxine looked pretty happy too. You didn't waste time, did you? You two not ready yet? I meant what I said. You're kidding yourself. Don't. You were jealous of me and Maxine back there. Have you come round to gloat? You think he wants you more than I do? Yeah, I do think that. Well, you're wrong. He wants the security. I want you. You've never told me that before. You know I want you. And what about what you want? Doesn't that count for anything? Ready when you are, Sal? Yeah, I'm coming. So, it's Saturday night in the Rovers. Yeah, Vera's more than happy to play the hostess. Oh, excuse me a minute. Well, I'll uh, leave you to your picnic then. Yeah, I'll see you out. Hi. There you go. Buy you and Sophie an ice cream while you're out. If there's any left over, buy your mum one too. What'd you say, girls? Thank you. Thank you. See you, Kevin. That's all right, right? You haven't answered my question. Doesn't it count? Yeah, it counts for a lot. So? I think we want the same thing. That'll do then. I know you never listen to anything I say, but I just want to say that I think that the way you treated Hayley was despicable. But you still love me. No, I'm serious. <laughs> she came to me for a job no, and... despicable, even by your standards, which are pretty rock bottom to start with. She came to me for a job and didn't tell me the truth about herself. Yes, she did. What, that she's really a man? She's not a man. She's a woman. All right, used to be a man. Anyway, look, what, what has that got to do with anything? I mean, would you tell anybody your entire life history if you were going up for a job? Because if you did, you would be permanently unemployed. You would. I'm not arguing. No, you're not, because you can't. Because what you did was mean and despicable. And it's something I shall never, ever forgive you for, Mike. Oh, do you want a lift? No, thank you. Hey. Is that right, what I've heard about Rita Sullivan? She can't remember how. That's what they're saying. She's going to have to be careful, then, isn't she? Running a shop. Handling all that cash and that. Well, at least she's got it to handle. We're going to be short in this house where things are developing over at Road. How do you mean? We're on the verge of walking, a lot of us. And what do you want to be doing that for? Because of the way Baldwin sacked Haley for no reason. Yeah, and they'll be sacking you if you get up to your clever tricks. Never mind walking out. We rely on your wage. Yeah, and Ailey's relying on us to stand up for her. And she's a fool, because everybody looks after themselves in this world. Oh, I'm glad you told me. I'll have to bear that in mind. Do that. Just don't come back here telling me you've thrown your job for some silly food who hasn't been there less than two minutes. Hello. Hi. Have you got a card that, you know, when you've done something wrong, you want to say sorry. One or two, yes. How many do you want? Well, just the one. Mind you, all the mistakes I've made, perhaps I could do with a packet. Ah, <laughs> well, get out of them in there, won't you? Hi, Hello, yeah. love. Uh, can I have 20 of your cheapest, yep. please, Rita? Oh, love, you better make that 40. I'll get our laser pack. Right, love. That's uh, 5.58, please. Right, love, Tara. Thank you. Oh, are yeah. you? How are you getting on with our Greg these days, then? Fine, thank you. Getting serious, is it? I think that's our business, don't you? Maybe, yeah. But I am entitled to take an interest. Entitled? And what makes you think that? Well, don't forget, love. I mean, Greg is our Leslie's son. So if you're planning on getting married, that'll make us two related, won't it? It'll make us, uh, oh, I don't know. What will it make us, Rita? Natural enemies. I was thinking more stepmother, stepdaughter, something like that. Mm. Hey? Then you could tell me all your secrets. And I could advise you on how to court with a Battersby male. Greg isn't a Battersby. Oh, I'd say you were, wouldn't you, Rita? Every inch. The way he expects his woman to trail about after him at his beck and call. Just like Les expects me to deliver him a pack of these fags. Anyway, I tell you, love, 
When you do marry him, you can call me mum if you like. I shan't mind. See you, Rita. See you, love. Bye. It's <sighs> just a pound. Love, please. Hiya. Oh, hi. How are you? Oh, I'm all right. In fact, I nearly applied for another job this morning and then I thought, no, I'll give myself more time. And, I mean, wherever I go, it's only going to go back again, isn't it? I told Mike that was the meanest thing he ever did. Oh, no. At least he didn't tell anybody else. I suppose that was quite kind, really. God, you're not defending him, are you? You haven't seen Mr. Watt, have you? Uh, he's in the dairy section, I think. Right. You know, you're too nice for your own good, you are. Not really. No, I'm just sorry I shan't be seeing girls anymore, cos we're really getting on. I felt like I've been, you know, accepted. Well, then why not see them? My nasty little husband can't stop you doing that. What are you doing dinner time? Cos I'm finished at 12.30, so let's go to the Rovers and you can see him then. Ah, Norman, there you are. Listen, I have to be out for a bit, but when I get back, stand by, cos I think I'm going to have some news for you. What kind of news? Uh, not bad news, don't worry. But not good news? Uh, depends how you look at it. Oh, come on, Eric. No, I can't tell you now. There's a dotted line to be signed on first, and, as you know, details to be finalised. Not T's to be crossed. Exactly. Yeah, well, thanks for keeping me informed, Eric. Only fair. Wouldn't want you hearing it from anybody else. Well, she was a good worker. You couldn't fault her, could you? Well, you two look like you're moaning already. You haven't even got in there yet. Yeah, we're just getting in the mood. Hey, what are we going to do about this early, then? Yeah, I will just say. Kev, has Sal gone in already? Uh, yeah, just missed her. Will you just give this to her to say sorry? Yeah, sure. It was for the other night. She came round to see Greg with a bottle of wine and Greg and I had, had a big bus stop and, well, I went mental. I, I just want to say sorry. She was what? In the factory? No, in Greg's flat. Oh, right. But if you can just give it and just say it, I'm really sorry. Yeah. I will. Thanks. Four and one is five and five is ten. Yeah. Only, uh, that was the 20 I gave you. 20? Yeah. I don't think it was. No, only street, sir. Because, look, that's all I did in my wallet. And I'll tell you how I know. Because I checked before coming out, thinking I should have asked our Jan to sub me. Because a man needs a bit of uh, walking around money. But no, she'd gone to work. So I thought, oh, well, never mind. I'll have to make do. 20. Yes, well, I have a little routine, which is that when I'm giving change, the note I'm giving change for, I put at the back of the till. And here it is. Ten. Well, I think your little routine's let you down this time, because that's not what I gave you. I gave you a twenty. Well, when I check up tonight, then I will know. Are you, uh, Are you sure you're not getting a bit confused here, Rita, love? I mean, I've heard mention that your memory's not what it might be. Yes, I am sure. And when I cash up tonight, we'll both be sure. Go on, then. I suppose I can trust you. I suppose you can. Would you believe I've, I've left me immersion on? You've I, what? I, I'll be back in a tick. Les? Les? Oh, don't you start. Look, that was a 20 I gave her. Now, I'm going to be out of pocket, all because she's wrong in the head. Uh, yeah, yes, I'm not, I'm not disputing that. You're not? Uh, no, well, you see, Rita, she's had one or two difficulties, you know. Uh, here, this should, this should settle it. Oh, that's very civil of you. Well, we're put on this earth to help one another, aren't we? We are, but there's not everybody who'd say it like that. Uh, no, no, no. So, uh, she's still with the fairies, then, is she, Rita? She's still recuperating, yes. Well... Cheers. So what's going on out there, then? Out where? Well, Les Battersby and Gilroy came out of your shop, put their heads together and uh, Gilroy were giving him some money. How much money? Oh, hello. Oh, uh, morning, Vera. Was it me you wanted? 
a summit we're selling? Uh, well, actually, I would have liked a few words, but uh, seeing as you're busy, I'll catch you later. What he means is he don't want to talk to you in front of me. This money we're giving Les Battersby, might it have been ten pounds? Yeah, yeah, it could have been. Go on, then. That's him. What, me? Yeah. He listens to you more than us. In old days, we had a union. We'd have been picketed them gates and then he would have had to listen to us. You're coming with me, aren't you? Oh, of course right. we are. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr Baldwin. We want to ask about Hayley and what's going to happen. Is she getting a job back? Is this some sort of delegation or are you just being nosy or what? No, it's folks that work alongside her. We want to know why she's got sack. You can't blame us for wanting to know. Oh, you want to know? Yeah, we do. Yes, we do. Right then, ask her. We have. She won't tell us out. Well, then you better respect her confidence, ain't you? I mean, if she won't tell you, she obviously doesn't want you to know. What, was it because of her work? Couldn't have been. Sorry, subject closed. And what if we say it's not closed? That we want some answers? Then I'd be saying to you, you better be careful you're not out there with Hayley. And I'd be saying to you two, you better be careful you're not being used by someone who just likes to stir up trouble. It's not like it was in the old days, Ida, when you used to get your orders straight from the Kremlin. These days, I decide who works in this factory and who doesn't. And if you don't like it, you know what to do. So now what? Well, they say a leopard don't change, don't they? They were a bully 20 years ago and is a bully now. Oh, come on. Let's get a drink oh, in. Good idea. So what are we going to do then? Leave it like that? Oh, yeah, because, lad, that would all it start. We're going to show him we mean business. And how do we do that, why? Well, that's what we've got to talk about, isn't it? You got a minute? Yeah, why? We'll get you one in, Sal. What do you want? Get us half a lager. Not oh, that one. You got a card here from Maxine. Maxine? Oh, she seemed to think I'd know all about it. How she caught you going in Greg's flat with a bottle of wine. So? Do you want to tell me? So? So now you think I'm having an affair with Greg? And are you? No! It doesn't matter what I say, though, does it? Cos you're convinced already. So what was you doing at his flat? We were going to talk about underwear. And before you make any clever cracks, I mean work. Talking about these parties that we're getting going with Mike. And why did you have to do it at his flat? Well, we can't get in the factory, that's what we have to do. Because Mike had locked up and Greg had left his keys inside. <laughs> <sighs> See, I said you wouldn't believe me. All right, what about this bottle of wine? What about that then, eh? Well, we were going to have a drink. I mean, if that's what you're accusing me of, then yes, I admit it, we were going to have a drink, yes. Not me, Maxine. And what's she doing now, eh? Eh? Do you want to have a look? She's apologising. Apologising. So, no, Kevin, it's not Maxine, it's you. You that's accusing me. Like you seem to want to do all the time. Honestly, it's like I'm on trial and the smallest thing I feel like I'm being hauled up to explain myself. OK. OK, then why didn't you tell me about it, Sal? What was there to tell? It was just nothing. And anyway, I'm not going to tell you, am I? Not when I know how you're going to react all the time. And think about it, Kevin. Greg is going out with Maxine. Maxine, yes? Yeah? Ten years younger than me. Single, glamorous, sexy. What would you want with me? So it's just work? Yes. I'm sorry, Sal. It's just... Oh, I don't know. But I'll tell Mike I'm going to stop. I'll tell him I don't want anything more to do with this underwear party business anymore. I'll tell him you're not happy. No. Well, I don't want this every time. We won't. Right. Well, if that's over, can I go and get me lunch now? I'm sorry, Sal. I'm sorry. It's OK. I'll see you later. You'll have another? Yeah, go on, then I deserve one. After all the ear bashing I've been having this morning. <laughs> and a large scotch. Right, nice. Hey, hold on a sec. 
Sally. No, look, there is a chance that Kevin might follow me in. And if he does, I don't want him to see us together. What's that? I'll tell you later. Tonight? I'll see you. Oh, see you Smart girl. Sally. That's what I meant when I asked you to work with her. Do you know what? She's more intelligent than that lot put together. Aren't you? That's not saying much. <laughs> there you go, 360. And one for yourself. Oh, that's very kind. Hey. Oh, blimey, that's all I need. You just go and sit with your friends, I'll bring you a drink over. What do you fancy? Pineapple juice, please. Right. Uh, can I have a white wine and a pineapple juice, please, Vera? Yeah, of course you can. I'll leave you to it. And what little game are we playing now? I'm not playing a game. Bringing your friend in here. Do you think I wouldn't be able to look her in the eyes, is that it? No, I didn't bring her in. She came to see her friends. Well, doesn't she have any other friends she can go and see somewhere else? No, I don't think she does, actually. He said if you won't tell us, then he won't. It doesn't matter. I'd, I'd rather not talk about it. How can he say that? But you didn't want to leave, did you? I didn't want to, no. Well, what did he sack you for, then? Can't you take him to a tribune or somewhere? I don't think so. I haven't been there very long. She was telling me she was thinking of applying for other jobs, then she realised she'd just have to go through the same thing all over again. So? Is that my fault? Yes. Totally and absolutely your fault. And you will never, ever let me forget it, will you? Well, I don't think I'll have to, will I? I think it's something you'll find hard to forget. <laughs> now, this is for your ears only. I don't want it becoming common knowledge, not yet. Well, you can rely on me, Eric. I've got no one to tell. Are you all right, Norman? I mean, in yourself? Yeah, I'm fine. Well, no, I'm not really. You see, Raquel wants a divorce, and then there was a girl that I was interested in, but she's not... Yeah, anyway, to... listen, I, I haven't very long. Oh, sorry. The thing is, you know, I've been after retiring for a while. Well, I finally managed it. Today, lunchtime, I put my signature to a deal that will turn Furman's into Freshco. Freshco? Have you not heard of them? American firm. No. Up and coming. In fact, they'll be up here next week and coming in through them doors. I've sold out lock, stock and barrel. It's the end of an era. Of course, I won't see it. I'll be in the Bahamas, working on getting my handicap down. But you will, Norman. It'll be a brave new world for you. Yeah, it will. And I'll tell you now. When negotiations first started, I said there was one point on which I would not be shifted. I said I wanted all management posts to be guaranteed, no redundancies, everybody to stay just where they were. Oh. But they wouldn't have it. Still, I wanted you to know I did the best I could. Thank you. Don't worry, love. We're not giving up on you. No, we're not. We're not. We're going to keep on at him until he gives you your job back. Well, I don't want you risking your own jobs. Tell your friend to hang about when the crazy gang are gone, will you? I want to have a word with them. She's entitled to come here, you know. You can't stop her doing that. I know. Huh? Put another scotch in there, please, Alec. Uh, large one. Yeah. You have your secrets, don't you, you too? You and that Rita Sullivan. If by that, Vera, you mean we don't discuss our private business in front of an invited audience, then yes, we do. You have your secrets, that's what I mean. Hey. Oh, cheers, thanks. Cheers, thanks. Ailey? Mr Baldwin, am I not supposed to be here? No, you can stay, I don't mind. If you want your job back, you can have it, all right? But I'm not admitting I was wrong because I wasn't. I'd every right to sack you and I will again if things don't work out. But what I can't stand is her moaning on at me all the time. So you can start again tomorrow, all right? Oh, thank you, Mr Baldwin. But I'm not sure that I want to. What? Well, after everything that's happened, I'm not sure that I wouldn't be happier starting again somewhere else. Well, that's all right by me. If you're not there on the dot tomorrow, I know that's what you're doing. And it won't be my fault, all right? Is it your pride that's stopping you going back? I suppose so. Yeah, well, I can understand that. Afternoon. Ah, I was wondering when you'd be back. 
Oh, well, a busy day. But then they all are, aren't they? Which is why I thought it'd be nice if we arranged a little outing or two, you know, take ourselves off somewhere where there are cows and stately homes and such like. Well, I have a question to ask you first. Oh? Why did you give Les Battersby ten pounds? Ten pounds? No, that was just a private matter. Nothing that you should be concerned about. You keep reminding me, don't you? Of what? Of how shifty and dishonest you can be. Going behind my back now and not admitting it. Uh, no! It was a ten pound note he gave me. But because he thinks I'm a daft old bat who can't even remember her own name, he thought he'd try it on. He thought he'd say it was a twenty. And because you think I'm a daft old bat, you believed him. Uh, look, Rita, it was a highly ambiguous situation. Not to me it wasn't. I don't need patronising and I don't need protecting from the likes of Les Battersby. And come to think of it, I don't need taking on any outings either. Let's maybe leave the table. Ah, I think so, yeah. What do you reckon, Mummy? Yeah, of course you can. So what are you doing tonight? Me? Nothing special. No? Look, Sam, you can go out if you want, you know. I don't want you feeling you got to stay in just because of the way it was going on. Well, we were going to do this underwear party business thing tonight, a dress rehearsal. Undress rehearsal, Mike called it. But no, I, I'd rather stay here. No, you wouldn't. Look, you would have gone, Sam, had it not been for all that rubbish you said at dinner. I don't want to go. Oh, tough. You've got to. <coughs> I shouldn't have said anything, should I? Yes, yeah, you should. Now, you go and get yourself ready. I'll tell you, you did it a little way. And you'd let me know if you weren't happy. So, the only thing that would make me unhappy is if I thought I was spoiling it for you. Now go. Thanks. So, what did she end up saying? Uh, she said she'd think about it. Oh, that's nice of her. Oh, come on, it can't be easy for her just walking back in after what you put her through. Well, I couldn't care less if she does or not. I'm covered either way. Meaning what? Well, if she doesn't turn up tomorrow, that's fine. It's her decision. But if she does turn up, Ida and the rest of the Red Guards will think it's their doing. I'm the one that wanted to get rid of her. They're the ones that wanted her back. So you're saying that it was deliberate, sacking her, then taking her on again? That you did it on purpose? I'm saying that sometimes I'm cleverer than I think I am. Sometimes I do something and realise afterwards what a brilliant move it was. <laughs> and Maxine had given Kevin a card from it, so she was sorry about the other night. Only while giving it to him, she told him everything that happened. <laughs> oh, great. So I had to talk more out of that one. Did you? Should have heard me. He ended up apologising, and then he insisted that I came out tonight just to show his absolute faith in me. Well, I thought I was clever. I don't know what's happened to me. Well, I do. You've happened to me. And you've happened to me. I just hope you're still not talking about going on strike, because, like I say, that is crazy, that. We just want to know why she was sacked. Then we know we're not going down the same road. I'm going to ask Greg after. Ah, uh, that's uh, 320, please. Cheers, Alec. Thank you. This is a £10 note, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just as long as we're all agreed. What were all that about? Oh, evening. Evening, Vera. Vodka and tonic, please. Follow us round right. the twist. There's a lot of that round here. Oh, well, Alec. Oh, uh, Good evening. Look, I didn't mean what I said earlier. Of course we can arrange something. Shall I talk about it later when you're not so busy? Well, I think not, Rita. All considered, I think things are best left as they are, don't you? Thank you. Oh. Yeah, I think he's in one of his moods. He's worse than any woman, you know. Oh, well, I up and down like a yo-yo. Well, I rather think it could be my fault. One of them's going to find out sooner or later, aren't they? One of... Kevin or Maxine or... Somebody else altogether and then what? Well, then we just... do whatever has to be done. Yeah, but... would that be you and me living together and Rosie and Sophie? Because I couldn't leave them. Do you honestly want that? 
us all living together. Yeah, I do. That's what I want. So that's what we're going to do. Usually at this time, I keep Roy company while he opens up. I thought he was away. He is, but I still like to come in. It reminds me of him. <gasps> but you are going back. I don't know what to do. I can't decide. But I thought that's what you wanted. Well, it is, but the way it's come about, it's all been so messy, and girls will want to know why Mike's changed his mind. What am I going to tell them? Well, they'll think he backed off because they threatened to strike. That's not true, though, is it? No, but, I mean, they're not going to know that, are they? Mm, I suppose. Can I get you out? Oh, you can have a um, cup of coffee, please, Toya. Have you had a row with Mike? No, I. Huh? Well, it's just that you're not knowing me at this time. Oh, no, I just fancied something on the way in. I, um, I did have a bit of a barney with him yesterday. Because of me. Because I said things that needed saying. I just caused trouble wherever I go. People are very fond of you. You talked to Roy? Yeah, I rang him last night. So what do you say? Oh, he just says I've got to decide for myself. Oh, good morning. Morning. Come to tell me you've changed your mind? No, but I think we ought to be clever about this. Look, Greg, if you want to back out, just tell me. I don't. This isn't just a fling for me, you know. I want us to last. That's why I'm trying to do things right. So what are you saying? Well, you want to leave Kevin and move in with me, right? Which is what we agreed. Yeah, but it's how you get there. If we do it all at once, it'll be a disaster. He is going to go ape, the kids will get hurt, you'll feel like you're guilty as hell, and that's just going to be pressure on us both. Well, so how else do we do it, then? Well, I think... You leave Kevin, right? But we keep quiet about us for a bit. Then we go public. Just like as if we've got together after you split, yeah? Well, that'd be less hassle all round. And it might even be good for the divorce settlement. How? Well, what sounds better? Um, responsible mother of two leaves husband because she's not happy, or flighty mum breaks up family because she can't keep her hands off a fancy. It's worth thinking about. Hey, Neely. Hey! Wow! <laughs> Get your job back. Yeah. Yes! Hey, was that for girl power then, eh? Whoa. He'll not yeah. mess us around anymore. Are you sure about that, Ida? I wouldn't start singing the red flag yet if I was you. You haven't got the voice. I wouldn't stare in it all, Mr Baldwin, honestly. Oh, I know you won't. Anyway, it's all over now. Let's get on with it, shall we? Hey, did he say what changed his mind? Oh, it was just a misunderstanding. Hey, you didn't, uh, you don't get pressure or anything. Oh, no, nothing like that. Of oh, course, you've got to watch him. <laughs> he wouldn't do anything like that with me. You what? Hey, you've a lot to learn about men, lass. Oh, he's rolled in then, I say. Love's young dream. What state of play is she in, then, this morning? I'll not dignify that with a response, Vera. Well, it changes that much. Look, we need to know what kind of mood you're in. Mind you, you could chalk it up on blackboard with specials of the day. Fish pie on. Alec and Rita off. Well, you can see what mood he's in. Well, I'll take my hat off to Rita mm. Sullivan. He spent his life having folk over a barrel, and look at him now, eh? She's given a right taste of his own medicine. Mm. Vera. Do I pry into the state of relationship between you and Jack? Only because we don't go AWOL from this pub every time we have a row. Yes, well, you can expect to see a lot more of me from now on, all right. Pat Gina, she. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Mind you, I believe it when I see it. Is it all off, then, love? Eh, hey, I don't know, Betty. One minute I'm a best friend, the next I'm an interfering old nuisance. 
Well, I mean, she has had a bit of a nasty turn. It'll take her quite a while to get over it, love. Vera does right to mock. I mean, I'm making her right, Charlie, and myself, oh, aren't I? Oh, no, love. No, you've done a lot to help her. I mean, everybody knows that. Uh, that's where I should have left it. Relationships? Pff, I'm too old for that game now. Nelly! You'll need these for tomorrow. So, um, so what do you think? It seems a long, drawn-out way of doing it. On the other hand, I thought of feeling less guilty. Well, this is it. But I'm gonna feel like that anyway, aren't I? Whether he knows about us or not. But he's not the only one, though, is he? What do you mean? Well, that's everyone else around here. They'll all be gabbing about it. Yeah, well, I don't care about them. I want to move away. And we will. It just takes time. And till we do, it helps if people aren't against us, right? Yeah, I suppose you're right. Anyway, uh, you don't have to use these. They're just a guide, basically. Hi. Hi. No, no, it's very good. Have you got any more of these? Of course, you know what would really tie this up, don't you? What? Kevin went back out with her. Natalie? Yeah. You'd feel less guilty, then. It'd give you a reason to leave. And... If no one found out about us, you could even come up smelling her roses. But she's seen Des. She is now. Fair not to. Well, I hope that wasn't the reason. You should be doing this for yourself, you know. Yeah, well, it's all worked out a bit best this way. Leaves me with another problem, though. What? I'm living a lie at that place now. How do you mean? Well, the girls supported me, but they didn't know the real story. So? I don't think it's fair on them. Oh, come on. It's not like you're cheating them or anything. I'm deceiving them, though. I'd just forget it if I were you. How can I? It's not going to go away, is it? No, I think I'm going to have to clear the air, Alma. I'm going to tell the truth. Not disturbing you, am I? No, of course you're not. Are these dead? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you ever talk to Natalie about what happened between you? Not really, why? Just wondered. Mm. What made you leave her in the end? You know what? Because you missed the girls. Because I missed everything, Sal. You, the girls. <laughs> I just realised what I was throwing away and I wanted it all back. So you loved me then? Of course I loved you. I still do, so what is all this? But did you love her? No. You must have felt something for her. <sighs> yeah, I suppose so. Then what? I thought I loved her. But I was wrong, OK? As long as you show me. I, um, saw Hayley on my way here. Oh, I bet that was a thrill. I think it's very big of you to take a bat like that. You taking the mickey? No! Mind you, you're not out of the woods yet, though. Oh, what's happened now? Well, she's not happy living a lie, as she calls it. Oh, well, she should have thought of that before she had the operation. Not my problem. Well, I'm not so sure. She, she thinks it's not fair on the girls at work keeping it all secret, so uh, she's going to tell them the truth. Oh, Gordon Bennett. What are you driving at, Sal? I'm just trying to work out why it's not been the same since we got back together. Lots and lots of reasons. Look, we knew it wasn't going to be easy. But you went for Natalie in a big way. You moved in with her. You said you were never coming back. I know. So it was a big turnaround when you did. But you don't stop caring for somebody overnight, do you? Just because you've left them. You've completely lost me now, Sal. All I'm trying to say is, well, maybe that's why things aren't working out between us. Because maybe somewhere deep down, you... Are you still in love with her? Uh, 
Sorry, Norman. Don't get up. Your lunch? Yeah. Uh, well, no. I mean, yeah. I mean, come in. What can I do for you? I won't keep you a minute. I just wanted a word about the takeover. It's definitely going through, then. Oh, yes. No going back now. Does that worry you? Only it can be a bit unnerving. New owners. Uncertainty about the future. Well, a manager that fears change fears, well, life. That's a spirit. Oh, well, I was going to ring Fresco, you know. Try and put in a good word for you again. What a top man you are. But obviously you don't need it, so... Uh, yeah, right. I'll uh, let you get back to your paper. Uh, there is a general feeling of unease. In the store? At lower levels. Understandable. Well, you see, I think it would put their minds at rest if you could put in a good word. A good word for them? No, no. For me. You see, if they know that management is staying put, it'll make them feel more secure. I see what you're saying. It boosts morale, smooths the way for the transition. That's a good point. Of course, it's not for me, you understand? No, of course. You're concerned for your workforce. That's one reason you're a good manager. I'm sure Fresco will take that into consideration. No, I'm glad I've had this conversation. I'll go ring them straight away. Are you serious about this? Well... We're coming out the cupboard, or whatever you call it. Alma told you. I thought you were trying to keep it quiet. I thought that was the whole point. I'm sorry. I know you've been to a lot of trouble, and I do appreciate all that you've done, but it just feels wrong to lie. Well, you managed pretty well up to now. I know, but I can't hide forever. Well, I think it's a terrible idea. Forget it. Your call's a riot. There'll be one or two find it hard to take. One or two? They'll be out of that factory quicker than you could spit. What do you mean? They refuse to work with you. They wouldn't do that. Look, I've known that lot longer than you have. They're not Guardian readers, you know. You're just saying this because you want to avoid trouble. Oh, too right I am. When they start baying for your blood, don't you come to me for sympathy. It won't come to that. I've got more faith in him than you. Well, if you feel like that, you give it a try, darling. You don't know out about this Haley business, do you? What Haley business? Baldwin sacked her, and then he gave her a job back. I just wonder why. I haven't a clue. They weren't carrying on with her. Her and Mike. Janice, I don't know and I don't care. And if I did, I wouldn't tell you. What Mike does is his own business. Just keep your nose out, eh? Alec? Look, we can't let this go on. I don't know whose fault it was yesterday, but I am sorry. Ah, well, me too. Can we be friends? There's nothing I'd like more, but... It doesn't seem to work, does it? I mean, whatever we do. Well, it's up to us to make it work. There's too much to lose. So, what do you suggest? Can you get off tonight? Yeah, I expect so. Then come and have some supper with me. Let's see if we can settle our differences. Now, look, are you sure about this? Positive. Eight, do you? Yeah, eight will be fine. I think we've got a lot to talk about, don't you? Well, I hope Baldwin apologised. Did he? It's all been sorted out now. Mm, I can't understand why he sat you in the first place. Well, you know that misunderstanding that I was telling you hey about? Hey, girls, time. now you dark horses. You what? What's all this about knicker parties? Knicker parties? Yeah. Vera were telling me that Sally Webster's going to be selling lingerie for Underworld. Well, it's first I've heard of it. Modelling it as well, apparently. Mm. Sally Webster? Mm. Hey, they could have had me, kid. Oh. <laughs> Actually, do you know, there's many a fella would prefer a full-bodied wine to a light sparkling one. There won't be any fellas there, though, will there? Well, you never know. <laughs> Wonder what Kevin thinks, so. Don't think Alfie would let me do it. Or Les me. How about you, Hayley? I mean, what do you think Roy would say if you went flaunting your bits and pieces in front of the opposite sex? Can't imagine. <laughs> There won't be any fellas there. It'll only be women. Hey, don't you be too sure. 
I went to one a few years ago and there were a fella doing it. What, modelling knickers? <laughs> <laughs> no commentary. Oh, right, I was going to say. <laughs> Weren't anybody bothered? What the heck? When Boo started flowing, we started eyeing him up. And then we realised... Well? They were on to the bus, weren't they? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you told him to shut that door. <laughs> I told him to shut his gob. It got that much lip on him. Oh. Vive la de France, I said. <laughs> Norman! Spoke to Fresco. Oh, yeah? Yes, head of strategy. Melvin Lush, nice man. And what did he say? I told him what I thought of you. Dynamic, thrusting, one of our best executives. Oh, thank you. Sounded him out on the future. They've decided they don't want too much disruption in this takeover. Oh, well, that's great. If a thing ain't buzzed, don't fix it. That's their motto. And since we're running like a dynamo at the moment, men with your experience have nothing to fear. Well, that's very good news. I'll tell the staff. You know, I've got this meeting in Preston this evening. Oh, yeah, he said. So I won't be able to see you till tomorrow evening, then. Well, you've got that liquor party tomorrow, haven't you? Oh, yeah, I'd forgotten. Well, you won't have to be there, though, will you? Uh, no, probably not. Is... is Sally modelling her? Yeah, that's right. She's not exactly what you call sexy, is she? Well, not compared to you, no. <laughs> well, why is she doing it, then? Well, it's not like it's a striptease, is it? It is for women. Well, I could do it. You don't want to go parading around in front of a load of old boilers like that. It's Sally Webster, yeah, but you're in a different league. So, how's your new career in retailing, Ken? Wonderful, Audrey. I think you're putting in a bid for W. H. Smith's next week. <laughs> go on. Now, it keeps you out of mischief. Oh, yeah, my life's full of that. It's funny, isn't it, how you always seem to get tied up with Alec. Do I? Yeah. Well, in the cabin lately, and then, um... That enterprise with all those ladies of a certain age, yeah? Bet you discovered all sorts of things about him that you didn't know, haven't you? Well, there's nothing like spending time with people to find out what they're really like. Exactly. I remember when we first met you thinking how discreet you were. Really? Yeah, that just shows how wrong you can be. Oh. I'm, I'm just off out. Out where? Well, Rita wants to talk. Well, I thought you were calling it today, love. Betty, I don't know what I'm doing, but I've no doubt I'll soon find out. I'll oh. see you later. OK, do. Hey, he's not going where I think. I'm afraid so. Hey, he's got it bad, he has. Oh, I don't know what she sees in him. Well, he's got his good points, I suppose. Staring at that ball dead every morning, it's enough to put you off boiled eggs for life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will. Got a strange taste in women. What's that supposed to mean? Choosing Sally to be a model for your underwear. Oh, that? Why, do you fancy it? Yeah, I might do. Hmm. You'd look quite good, come to think of it. I don't come cheap, though. Oh, forget it, then. How much would you pay? Ask oh, your boyfriend. It's his baby. So I could do it? Oh, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I wanted someone else, but he was keen on Sally, so... Really? Yeah, you sort it out with him. Betty, usual, please, love. Oh, that smells nice, Rita. Can I do anything? Oh, good heavens, no, Alec. You've done enough these last few weeks. No, that won't be ready for a while yet. Let's take us uh, drinks next door. Oh, right. After you. Thank you. Hey. Ah, that's better. <laughs> Cheers, love. Cheers. To us. Ah, that's nice. Good. It's, uh, it's better than rowing and fighting, eh? Oh, Alec, I don't know how we let it happen. And at our age, we ought to know better. Well, I think part of that was my fault. You know, fretting around and not giving you enough space. I must have driven you mad, have I? At times. But you did it because you care. I mean, after all, you did save my life. Well, I had to. I'd have had nobody to talk to round here if you'd checked the seven. <laughs> <laughs> and you kept the shop afloat when I were ill. Bah, well, that was nothing. Oh, come on, Alec. Can't have been the easiest of patients. Well, we're neither of us easy, Rita. Interesting people never are. <laughs> so, we've cleared the air, anyway. Well, it's cleared for me, yeah. There's just one more thing I'd like to say in that case. Go on. And, well, now we're on the same wavelength again. I've, I have mentioned it before, but, well, I think perhaps I chose the wrong moment. What is it? Well, it's this. 
Will you marry me, Rita? Fast asleep. Did you say this earlier on? About what? Natalie. Oh, I don't know. It's like I said, I'm just trying to find reasons. <laughs> Do you think if I still fancied her, I'd go to all this trouble to try and buy her out of the garage? Could be a foil to put me off the set. <laughs> you can't be serious. It's all right. I'm not upset. There's no to be upset about, Sal. What I meant was, if he still did fancy her, I could probably handle it now. <sighs> Let's get this right. You're saying if I fancied another woman, you wouldn't mind? All I'm saying is it, it wouldn't hurt me like it once did. I've grown a thick skin in that respect. <sighs> well, it'd hurt me if you fancied another bloke. All I'm saying is, after everything we've been through, well, you change, don't you? You'd be hurt if I had an affair. Yeah. Would you do not? Well, you've done it before. So that's not what I'm asking. It's like you're saying if I had an affair with Natalie, you wouldn't be bothered. Well, is that what you want? No. How can you even think that? Well, then you've got nothing to worry about, then, have you? <sighs> I thought we'd been through this, Alec. Well, we have and we haven't. I've already said no, haven't I? Well, this is why it's so confusing. I mean, you've said no, but you don't remember. I mean, I think if you hadn't had that turn with the gas fire, you would have said yes. But I didn't. Yes, but you only know that because I've told you. In fact, you only know you've forgotten I asked because I've reminded you you've forgotten. Would you mind saying that again in English? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I just... I just thought I'd have one last shot. You know, now your mind's a bit clearer. Well, I wish you hadn't. Especially now we're back to normal. And I never gave you any encouragement. But you said we had a lot to talk about at dinner time. Yes, about friendship, not marriage. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Rita. I, I just had to know. It is a refusal, I take it. I'm very fond of you, Alec. Well, I've buried two husbands, and I've no intention of starting out again. I've got my business and my little flat. I'm very contented, thank you very much. Can't I even hope? Well, of course you can hope, but you'll be wasting your time, Alec. I mean, for us to get married after all we've been through, it'd be a flaming miracle. So am I to put my best frock into the cleaners? <laughs> well, not on my account, Betty, no. Oh, Alec, I am sorry, love. Yeah, why I couldn't just take no for an answer in the first place, I don't know. I must be a glutton for punishment. Oh, no chance for Rita coming round to the idea, then? I very much doubt it. Oh. Mind you, she's right. We're too old, too set in our ways. Oh, give over. Me and my Billy are older than you two. We didn't give up. Well, no, but that were different. I mean, you two meeting up again after all them years. Me and Rita have been through too much together. Haven't we know each other too well? Mm. I tell you what I think. I think it's all down to that accident. Oh, no. No, I don't think we can put this one down to a confused state of mind, Betty. No, what I mean is, I think she, she's worried that you're asking her because you think she needs looking after. Well, part of me does want to look after her. I mean, what's wrong with that? <laughs> You know how independent she is. I know how stubborn she mm. is. I mean, once her mind's made up, there's no full shifter. <laughs> I'm not even going to try. <laughs> well, onward and upward, eh? Come on, girls, get your coats on. Can't come in, Sally, then. Yeah? So? It's for you. Come in. Frank, what are you doing here? I was hoping to get you on your own for an hour or two. That's if it's all right with Kevin. What? Here. Yeah, I want to give your wife the benefit of my extensive experience. All right. Sales training. Get her ready for this lingerie party this evening. Oh, shouldn't you be doing that across the road? No, we need a one-to-one -to, -one to go through all the products. So, uh, well, we can get any piece over there. Won't Mike mind if we're not in the office? Oh, I've already cleared it with him. So is that all right with you then, Kev? Do what you want. I'm sure Sally's already told you my feelings on her selling sexy underwear. Hey, don't knock it. She stands to make a tidy sum once she gets the hang of it. Yeah, well, more to life than money, Greg. Good night, girls. I'll see you later. Yeah. Bye, girls. See ya.
Are you trying to do it? Give me a heart attack. What do you mean? One to one. He's not exactly stupid, you know. Hey, I meant what I said. I'm here to work. Come on, we've got a busy morning ahead of us. Hey. Don't I get my good morning kiss? Of course you do. Come here. Joan, Joan, don't shrug when a customer asks you a question and don't look at them as if they're completely crazy when they ask for something we haven't got. Help them out. Offer an alternative, right? Just help them. And smile. And that goes for everyone else. I want all my staff putting out 110% effort Every customer that comes in this store, I want them treated like VIPs. Understood? Right. There's a stain on that. Go and get it changed. Oh. Don't argue, just do it. Yes, Mr. Watts. What's got into you this morning? I'm just trying to save our jobs. But are you still worried about the takeover? <sighs> just a bit. But I thought Eric was going to put in a good word for you. Eric Furman? is yesterday's news. As from today, we are all employees of Fresco PLC. So things are going to change, you mean? Well, I've been doing my homework on Fresco and I don't like what I've found out. How do you mean? Well, they're Americans for a start. Oh, I see. That's why you wanted to start being all smarmy with the customers. No, no, no. They, they place customer care at the centre of their retail philosophy. That's not the only reason why I'm asking the staff to be Smarmy to the customers, as you put it. You think they might wield the axe then? No, they've just got this reputation of being very hard headed if they see things that they don't like. See, according to my spies, Fresco senior management have a very nasty habit of turning up unannounced at stores just to see how they really run. Oh, I see. In fact, the American owner of this company. Alan Busselmeyer, or Al Fresco, as he likes to be called, has a nasty habit of turning up at supermarkets disguised as a customer. Well, surely he wouldn't come all the way from America to visit some crummy little supermarket in Weatherfield. Do you want to bet? Oh, who's put these here now? My cornflakes, they're completely crushed! Of course, they've got to be aware of the quality of the product, but remember, it's as much about the atmosphere as anything. You've got to get them in the buying mood. Yeah, well, I'm just hoping that a couple of bottles of wine might do the trick. Well, don't be too generous with the vino. We want to show a profit. I'm so nervous. I can't believe it. My heart's pounding. There's no need. You just like having a few drinks with the girls. Yeah, well, don't expect to make a fortune. I'm not used to selling like this. I can't believe someone like you has so little self-confidence. Yeah, well, that's what happens if you're stuck at home looking after two kids all those years. Yeah, well, I have every confidence in you. I mean it. Am I going to see you later? Of course. We'll need to have a debrief. I like the sound of that. <laughs> You've got knickers on the brain, you have. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Max. Hi, Hello, Maxine. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. Right, see you later, then. So what was all that about? Oh, just trying to g up the sales stuff. You've got quite a soft spot for Sally, haven't you? What's that supposed to mean? And you're a liar. What are you talking about? Mike Baldwin told me it was you who chose Sally for the nickel parties. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did. Look, I had to suggest someone. Mike was going to give it to Liz McDonald. You could have asked me. I told you. I thought you'd think the job was beneath you. I thought you'd run a mile. First I found out it wasn't you who chose Sally, then I found out it was you. I can't believe you're making such a big deal out of this. Because we could have been working together and instead you're working with her. All right, if it is such a big deal, I'll sack her. Sally, no, you've got a minute. Greg, I don't want you to sack her. Just leave it. So, what exactly is the problem? Look, I don't know, just I wish I would mention it to you. Yeah, did you want a word with me? Yeah, sorry, it was me. Um, I was just wondering what time the knicker party started. Um, six onwards. And, uh, can anyone come? Yeah, yeah, the more the merrier. I'll see you there then. Great. I could kill you. Hello, madam. Everything to your satisfaction? Oh, yeah, fine. Thank you. Lee? Alma, do us a favour, will you? This aisle's a bit mucky. Give it a sweep. 
Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Do you have any courgettes? Uh, I think you call them that here. Uh, back home, we call them zucchini. Oh, certainly, sir. If you'd like to follow me, I'll show you where they are. Thank you. I think he's here. Who? Al Fresco. Where? Looking at the fresh veg. Are you sure that's him? I think so, yeah. Right. He's definitely a mover and a shaker. You can tell that just by looking at him. And he's got that certain aura around him. What did he want exactly? Uh, courgettes, I think. Anything else? Looks like lettuce and celery. Are you going to introduce yourself? Oh, no. Oh, no, we can't do that. No, we've got to keep the facade up, otherwise it'll suss that we're trying to make a special effort. Just go act casually. Oh, well, that's OK, cos he's asking Dozy Jones something. What? I wonder if you could tell me if you've got any Graham wafers. Is there a problem, sir? Oh, two staff for every customer. I am impressed. We aim to please. Alec, I'll just have orange juice, please. Uh, yes, certainly. That's uh, 65, please. So am I in the doghouse now, then? I don't know what gives you that impression. Well, the face on you. You look as if you'd lost a pound and found a penny. Well, you didn't expect me to be dancing on the tables, did you? No, but I didn't expect the cold shoulder, either. I think that's your speciality, isn't it, Rita? Oh, sarcasm now, is it? Perhaps I should uh, go drinking somewhere else. No, that won't be necessary. It will if you keep this up. Look, can we go through to that back room? I want to talk to you. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's being decked out for the knicker party. The what? Sally's underwear do. Well, come round here for a couple of minutes. That's just customers want serving. You're talking about it's dead. Uh, come on for a minute. Hi! Hello. Not too early, are we? No, go on through. Uh, Judy and Janice are already through there with oh, a little I'm, Sally. All right, see you in there. Oi, oi. What? Is, uh, is Sally uh, modelling this underwear in the flesh like that? <gasps> no. Hey, if you play your cards right, I might give you a private show when they've gone home. <laughs> Can't wait. I didn't expect to see you here, Janice. Why? Well, there's nothing here you haven't seen already. Well, no, but they're meant to be around, laugh, these bars, aren't they? I am. I am. Hi. Right, Ian. Hi, Ian. Thank you. Maxine. Thanks, Sally. Audrey. Oh, this has to be comfortable. Right. All right. All right, ladies, I think we'll make a start. Um, welcome, everybody, to the first ever Underworld Laundry Party. This is an exciting new venture which brings a wide range of quality. Oh, I can't be doing with all this waffle. Do you want to see me knickers? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, this is the first time I've ever been escorted around a supermarket by the manager. <laughs> well, that's a personal initiative of mine. You see, we like to make our customers feel special. I can see that. I thought we had the monopoly on that kind of thing back home. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, over here, uh, well, our stores are in the dark ages when it comes to customer services, but we're not like that. Uh, don't worry about that. We'll pack it all for you. Oh, well, thank you. You're welcome. Maybe you'd like to take advantage of our uh, complimentary coffee service. You give customers coffee at the checkout? Oh, yes, we do, yes, yes. Next, you'll be telling me I don't have to pay. <laughs> <laughs> that is, of course, you take advantage of our uh, kind of loyalty card. Oh, no, no, that's OK. I'm only in town for a few days. Really? Are you here on business or pleasure or maybe a little bit of both? I'm retired. Retired, yes, of course. I, uh, well, my brother works over here. I just came over for my niece's wedding. Well, may I say, it's been a pleasure and an honour to serve you, sir. Thank you. Uh, can we give you a lift somewhere? Uh, no, uh, my niece is waiting for me in the car. Okay, well, enjoy the rest of your stay. I will. Uh, and thanks again. You're very welcome.
Well, I handled that extremely well, even if I say so myself. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Do you know he tried to pass himself off as an American tourist? <laughs> I didn't fall for that for one minute. Uncle Victor, Andy Joyce is out in the car. We thought you might fancy a run out to Castle Howard. I just want you to know, no matter how it looked, I was very touched by your offer. Oh, you were, were you? Yes. Um, I know I turned you down, but it was nothing personal. How can turning down a marriage proposal not be personal? What I mean is, it wasn't that I didn't want to marry you. I don't want to marry anybody. I feel as if I'm past all that. Fine. I'm very fond of you. Fond? Well, more than fond. You're not making it easy, are you? I'm not. It's you who's insisting on raking it all up again. Just so we can clear the air. I mean, there's been enough bad feelings between us. I don't want to think I can't come in here because of atmospheres. We're a pub. We thrive ourselves on having an atmosphere. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes, I do. And you can rest assured that normal service will be resumed very shortly. Good. I was very flattered. I am very flattered. And if I was ten years younger, five even, so that's what's bothering you. Your age, my age. Well, among other things. But we've discussed all this, Ali. But surely the fact that we're not getting any younger is a reason to get wed. Well, that's not the way I see it. Won't you reconsider? Oh, please, Alec. Look, I'm, I know I'm no oil painting, but we're up along. I mean, we've had some happy times together. We make a good team. Don't make me say no for a third time. I think you're right. You should find somewhere else to drink. Oh, get Manchester. <laughs> 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 hey, hey, ladies. This one is a particular favourite of mine. This one is oh, a Chantilly yeah. camisole. You know, I think this stuff has done my sex life more harm than good. <laughs> <laughs> you're a great advert, you, aren't you? I'm going to sell loads with you around. No, sell. I'm not saying it's not good quality, because it is. I can vouch for that. Do you know, there's over 300 stitches in that gusset. Dead strong. Yeah. Not a quality yeah, look for insecty underwear, though, is it, Janet? Oh, what what I'm saying? Anyway, yeah. <laughs> do you know, making all this fancy underwear, getting all them free rejects, oh, you think it'll do wonders for my sex life? Yeah, I yeah. am. No, novelty wears off. <laughs> I've got drawers full of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. drawers yeah. being the operative word. Hey, Sal, 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 what about that see-through slip you had earlier? You know, that creaming. This, the Chantel camisole, 100% oh, yeah, nice. satin right, and only 13 99 That's oh. it. I bought that on for my legs other night. It didn't yeah. even bat an eye. You're definitely not helping me, Janice. Don't worry, Sam. I'm going to have to go home without buying some more. No, but I know what she means. Do you know, it doesn't matter what I put on, our Jack is dead from the waist down. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't exactly make you feel sexy, does it? Slaving over a machine, making them all day. <laughs> <laughs> why don't men, hey, why don't men tart themselves up, That's eh? Right. Yeah. A, 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 and look sexy. Why, why, why can't hey. they make an effort? Yeah, well, Vera, I've got something very special for you in that department. Oh, yeah? <laughs> hey, how do you think you're a <laughs> There you oh, go. No, just half a glass for me. I've got to get back to the till. No, no, we're celebrating. Anyway, all you want for tipping me off about Bushel Mayor. You don't think you offered did it a bit? Nah, did you see his face? He was in raptures. I think the future of Weatherfield Fresco is looking very rosy indeed. In fact, in six months, I could be heading Fresco UK. Oh, well, cheers then. Cheers. <laughs> Come here. <clears throat> Anne. What are you doing here? I'm the new area manager. Hope you don't mind me turning up out of the blue. Didn't want you making any fuss. Are we celebrating something? <laughs> hey, hey! <laughs> looks like an eye patch! <laughs> <laughs> well, I must say, I'm glad I don't have to wear any of this stuff to get my dread going. Listen, you might have a 
figuring out Bridget Bardo, darling, but the rest of us did all the old we could get. <laughs> well, I'm not bragging or anything, but I must say, Greg's very attentive in that department. Oh, you're lucky, <laughs> And my Gary can be very passionate. No, oh. I you know I'm getting so jealous. Yeah, me, you know. <laughs> I'm coming yeah. now I'm pregnant, though. Yeah. Oh. oh, I'm men funny like that. Oh, yeah. Well, I must say, my Greg knows how to treat a woman, not like the other creeps I've been out with oh. before. Honestly. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, once we spent a whole day in bed. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some lovely nighties here, ladies. But you know what? You know what, right? Me and my legs got really frisky. Ooh. Up the stairs on a number eight bus. Oh, <laughs> oh, in front of everybody. No, there were only us two there. <laughs> he said it weren't near as we'd ever got to join it my life. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it were parked in garage. <laughs> Once did it in the factory. Oh, oh well. in Mike Baldwin's office. Oh, oh, no, I can't think of a better turn off. <laughs> Just going to the loo. <laughs> hey, Vera, look. There's no more booze left. Oh, oh okay. Right. Hey, how's it going in there? I am hating every minute of it. Why are they not buying? They're all drunk and talking about sex. Really? I'll have to put my head round the door in a minute. Especially your girlfriend, who takes great delight in telling the whole world every sordid detail about what you and her get up to. What's she said? Come on, Sal, you know the score. I do know I could punch her. We agreed it was best that I kept seeing her. It was you that told me to keep her sweet. Well, you're obviously doing a wonderful job. You obviously get a kick out of seducing women in that factory. How many have there been? I know it's hard, but it won't be forever. You just got to be patient. Oh, don't give me any of that, Greg. You're loving every minute of it. Knock it off, Sally. Two women on the go at the same time. It's every fella's fantasy. Come on, Sally, this is stupid. You're right. It's completely stupid, that whole thing. I don't know why I'm putting up with it. Hey, what are you doing in here? We're all twiddling our thumbs in there. I'll be through in a minute, Janice. All right, love. Half an hour and they'll be going home. Then we can have a proper chat, right? You can have a proper chat with your girlfriend, Maxine. That's if she's capable of an adult conversation. Sally. I mean it, Greg. I've had enough. Hey, well, what? I'm just getting another couple of bottles of wine. <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't worry. I'll put the money in the table. Look, never mind all that boozing. We could do with an extra pair of hands out here. Well, now you know what it feels like, don't you? Look, Vera, I'm just yes, saying... Yes, and we all know what's put your back up, don't we? What's that supposed to mean? Well, she's probably set the running jump, haven't she? Betty. Have you been telling her my private business? I thought she might show a bit of tact. Tact? She doesn't know the meaning of the word. Oh, we rumbled you ages ago. Now your little plan's about fired. You're left with me and him, aren't you? Mm. Well, it serves you right. What's that supposed to mean? Vera, Vera, they'll be gasping for a drop of wine in there. No, just hold on a minute. What exactly are you insinuating? Alec, Alec, ignore her. You know what she's like when she's had a couple of drinks. Listen, I speak my mind, me. Yes. My plan's backfired. What plan's this? Right, right. right. leave it, no. you. Go on. Oh. In there. Oh. Betty, do you know Go what on. she's on about? Don't ask me, love. Jack, you clearly know what she's saying. Come on, spit it out. She was getting a bit worried. She's got into her head that if you and Rita got married, then you'd try and work us out of this place. I do what? Yeah, well, I told her, didn't I? I mean, you, you couldn't do that, not even if you wanted to. Well, nothing could be further from my mind. What does she take me for? No, Alec. But you know what she's like when she gets a daft idea in her head. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Jack, but I think she's plumbing new depths here. If she thinks I'd get married for oh, any Alec, other reason Alec. than... Forget it, eh? Oh, no, Jack. No. This leaves a very nasty taste in my mouth. Very nasty indeed. John Freshko as soon as I left this place on the tills. See. Fortunately, Alan Bustleman took a bit of a shine to me. So I rose up through the ranks pretty quickly. Oh, good for you. In fact, he rang me from head office in Colorado this morning. Told me to give this place special attention. Colorado? So he's not in England now then? Oh no, he only comes to England once a year. Doesn't need to. Can do everything he needs to by computer. Sales and performance, staff levels. Got them all at his fingertips. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Right, well, I think I've got a pretty good picture of the place. I'll get up home. As you wish. Thanks. I'll see you very soon. 
Anne Malone. Anne Malone. I don't believe this is happening to me. Well, I thought you'd be pleased. Isn't she an old friend of yours? Friend? She's a psychopath. Well, I thought she was quite pleasant. Mind you, she wasn't too chuffed at us drinking, was she? Alma, she's deranged. She's a bunny boiler. She's dead behind the eyes. Oh, come on, you're exaggerating. You don't know what she's capable of. She used to have this weird obsession with me. Really? Yeah. And when I give her the knockback, she tried to get me sacked for sexual harassment. Oh, come on, you're not serious. I'm deadly serious. And I'll tell you something else. She wants revenge. And now that she's my boss, that means she can get it. <laughs> Blimey. It says here some bloke in America has got 24 kids to 10 different wives. Mm. That's enough for two football teams, that. I won't mind the 10 wives, but the 24 kids must be costing him a flaming fortune. You don't actually believe all that rubbish, do you? It's in the paper, isn't it? So it must be true. I don't know what you read that daft rag for, any road. You want to get a life of your own and stop being vicarious. You what? Vicarious. It means reading about other folks' lives because you're too sad to have one yourself. Oh, right, and where did you learn a word like that? I read it in a magazine. Oh, is that the bit in between how to bag your bloke or how to lose your fella? One piggling article in a kid's mag, she thinks she's flaming Jackie Collins. Yeah, well, you won't be saying that when I'm a famous war correspondent. You'd be tapping me for money and I'd tell you to get lost. Anyway, they should have had my second article by now. So that'll be two I've had in. Oh, and what have you called this one? My life as a war correspondent in Weatherfield, England. No, actually, it's called Sad Middle-Aged Nerds with No Lives. It's based on you. Oi, you watch your lip. I'm not middle-aged. Give it a rest, you two. Here you are. There's one for you here, Toya and all. That as likely as not, the contract for your first book, Toya, love. See, it's for only 16. You must have got my second article. Hey, there's a postcard here from your sister, Josie. We're in Morocco. You aren't. Ha ha. Love Josie. Hey, Josie, eh? Always good for a laugh. Oh, aye. Proper comedian, you're Josie. Hey, tell you, love, what's wrong? Mind your own business. Oi! Don't touch your mother like that! Oh, fuck off! Mrs. Baldwin, isn't it? Oh, yes, that's right. Um, Alma. Oh, yes, of course. Norman's drinking partner from the other night. Oh, look, I hope you don't think we make a habit of uh, drinking in the office. It, it, it was just that... Uh, don't worry about it. We all need to let our hair down once in a while, <laughs> don't we? You're a friend of Norman's, aren't you, Alma? Oh, he's had an unc at uh, Mr Watts for quite a while. Why? Oh, it's just that he hasn't turned up yet and I was wondering if something might have happened to him. I thought maybe you'd know if he was ill or anything, or is he always this late in the morning? Oh, no, no, Curly's never late. He's usually in before everybody else. Well, um, maybe his car's broken down or something. Yes. Well, never mind. No doubt he'll be through the door any minute now, full of apologies and with a perfectly good explanation. <laughs> there we are, and good luck to you too. Right. Well, that's the last of the good luck with your driving test cards sold. Would you like me to order some more? Hey? I see we're out of the good luck card. Should I get onto the wholesaler and order another batch? Why don't you do right. that? How many should I get? Two dozen? Three dozen? Mm. Well, which? Sorry? No, I mean, how many should I order? Two dozen or three dozen? Well, what, whatever you think. Well, well. No rush, really, is there? Not exactly snowed under with requests for good luck cards, are we? Or anything else this morning come to that? No visit from Alec? Checking up on us all? No. Actually, come to think of it, not seen much of Alec these last few days. Yes, well, uh, things are a little bit awkward between me and Alec at the moment. Wow. Well, you're probably better off without Alec watching over you while you're trying to get better. I mean, he does have a tendency to take over a bit, doesn't he? Alec would help him, he can. Not taking over, as you put it. Sorry, uh... None of my business. And you'll find there's plenty of good luck cards over there, if you'd only take the trouble to look. Hi, Kev. Not disturbing you, am I? No, nope. you're all right. Just thought I'd pop round to see if we're any closer to getting that deal through. Uh, just waiting for Sally to sign the document on the loan, and then the money will be yours. Right. I, um, hear she's got a new job. 
Uh, you heard right. Well, I never had you down as a new man, Kevin. I mean, most men would freak out at the prospect of the wine spending every evening selling slinky camisoles. Maybe I misjudged you. Maybe you did, eh? Kevin, I was only joking. No, you wasn't, Natalie. What did you have me down for? A narky little husband who likes being in control? Only happy when he's got his little wife under his thumb? All right, I'm sorry. Oh, you're all right, it's me. You just got me in a bad moment. Problems at home? Don't say that. Well, I would kill for a cup of coffee, so if you want to chat about it. Yeah, OK. If you've come round here to tell me I'm going to lose me job for not turning up, don't bother, because I just don't care. Well, where have you been? I mean, Anne Malone has been looking for you all morning. <laughs> I bet she has. But I've been phoning you as well. Where have you been? I've been here, on my own, ignoring the phone, contemplating my future with Fresco's version of Lucretia Borgia. Oh, come on, Curly. I mean, she seemed perfectly nice to me. And she was certainly very reasonable when you didn't turn up this morning. I mean, she seemed genuinely concerned. Alma, there is absolutely nothing genuine about Anne Malone. She's a mad woman. Under that nice, sweet, sickly smile lies a complete and utter nutter. And I, for one, aren't working for her. So what's she going to do? Well, what can I do? She's got it in for me. She wants to get back at me for what happened last time. Well, I'm not going to sit around and just let it happen. I've no choice, have I? I'll just have to resign. Oh, Jack, would you do the honours? I've got a couple of calls to make. Right, so what can I get for you, Rita? Vodka and tonic, please. Easy on the tonic. Is he uh, still trying to entice you up the aisle, is he? Who told you? Well, I, th I thought it were common knowledge about you and Alec. Yes, well, I trust you keep it to yourself. Because I don't particularly enjoy having my private affairs discussed over this bar by the world and his wife. Luke, look at me. If he's making you so miserable, why don't you swallow your pride and accept his offer? I mean, all right, he's no oil painting, but he does assure me that his doings, his parts, are, are in working order. One more crack about me and Alec, and I'll take my custom elsewhere. Permanently. Is that clear? Maybe she's having boyfriend trouble. Tire. How can she be having boyfriend trouble when she hasn't got one? She might have. I had loads at her age. Yeah, but Jan, you were a right... A right what? A right good looker, Jan. That's what you was. Where is Toya? What's wrong with her, with Toya? Nothing, but... But what? Well, she's got a great personality. And she's good at writing and everything. Hey, any road, if she has got a boyfriend, it better not be that e-code with a bony head. He's far too old for her. I don't want her learning things she's too young to learn yet. Mm. Les, she's 16. Have you seen the magazines she reads? She knows all about that stuff already. No. Sire. Blimey. Well, surely it can come to some other sort of arrangement, short of having to resign. Well, and spending the whole time looking over my shoulder, waiting for her to pounce. No, thank you. That's no way to live your life. I'd go mad. Well, can you try talking to her? I mean, she seemed very approachable to me. Alma, would you work for someone who tried to get you sacked for sexual harassment when, in fact, it was them that was doing the harassment? Well, no, but... Exactly. I... There isn't an option. I'm not working for her. End of story. End of career. Oh, well, I suppose I'd better start getting back. We don't want Anne to think we all go AWOL just when we feel like it. Oh, well, thanks for calling. I'll let myself out. Right. So, what about this computer, then? Did you manage to speak to Charlie West yet? I did, and he's got none in at the moment. Oh, great. But he's got an old typewriter. He's bringing it round in the morning. He was going to chuck it out, so it was a stroke of luck I got there when I did. Les, this is the 1990s. Nobody uses typewriters anymore. Why not? You can still write with a typewriter, can't you? Typewriters don't stop writing just because some bright sparks invented a computer, you know. Les. You are such a cheapskate, do you know that? What? All kids have computers these days. Do you want our Toya to be only one way out? She's lucky I didn't get her a biro and a pencil set. In my oh, day... Oh, dry up, Les, will ya? You sound like me granddad. 
The one chance you have of helping our Toya make some of herself. And best you can come up with is a clapped out typewriter straight off Ork. You know, you don't give a damn about those two girls, do you? All you care about is where your next pint's gonna come from. All right. All right. I'll see what I can do. Anything for a better piece. Okay. Yeah. What now? Look out, mate. Well, aren't you going to invite me in, Norman? I tracked you down. Look, oh, Curly, this isn't easy for me either. Ever since Al Freshgo told me we were taking over Furman's, I've been dreading bumping into you again. That makes two of us. I'm sure. And I know I don't deserve any sympathy. Sympathy? Please, Curly, let me finish. This isn't easy for me. Look, I know what I did to you was terrible. I've spent the last year feeling so guilty about it. But... It was a difficult time in my life, you know, after Andy and everything. I wasn't very stable. You can say that again. What I want to say is I'm really sorry for all the trouble that I caused you. And, well, that wasn't the real me. I'm truly sorry, Curly. And I've changed. I want us to be able to work together. What do you say? What do I say? I would rather stick a red-up poker in me eye than work under the same roof as you. We can't carry on like this. It's driving us both crackers. Well, maybe it's time you brought things to a head, you know, got them out in the open. How do you mean? Well, if she's trying to goad you into leaving her, then call her bluff. Hey. Look, I don't think she wants to leave you, and I don't think she wants you to leave her, but maybe if you said you were going, then she'll have to decide what she wants once and for all. Threaten to leave her, you mean? Offer to leave her, if that's what she wants. I couldn't do that. She might just say, yeah, go. Well, isn't that better than carrying on the way you are, eh? And staying together just for the sake of the kids. I know how you must feel, Curly, honestly. And I don't blame you for not wanting to give me another chance. But I couldn't bear it if you walked out on a good job because of something I've done. I feel guilty enough about what's happened as it is without that on my conscience. Oh, I see. That's what all this is about. Salving your guilty conscience. No, Curly, that isn't what I meant. What I meant... Well, look, what I came here to say is that Fresh Goes is a fantastic company to work for. Look at me. Look at how far I've come since I left Furman's a year ago. You're a manager already. Who knows where you might be in a year's time. I'd be more than happy to put in a good word with Al if it meant I could go some way towards making up for what happened last time. Don't walk out on all that because of me, Curly, please. All I'm asking is for another chance. What have you got to lose? You can walk out at any time if it gets too much. Now make sure you get a decent payoff. What do you say? Curly. Well, of course it's cold. You've been sat over it for the past half hour. What do you expect? Claire? I'm terribly sorry. I'll get you another cup. I don't know why you don't bar them all wrinklies. I mean, they're coming here, sitting all day over one cup of tea. You'll never make any money out of it. Toya, those old wrinklies are our bread and butter. If you're going to take that attitude, you better find yourself another job. What's got into you today, anyway? Mm, nothing. Hello. Oh, why the long face? I don't use well. You don't think I'm crap at writing, do you? <laughs> of course not. Why do you ask? Oh, it's that stupid magazine, Only 16. They rejected me article. Ah, oh, I see. I mean, it were a boring magazine for morons anyway. Well, it's not much consolation, I know, but chances are you're going to have to get used to this. 
So you do think I'm crap? No, of course not. That's not what I meant. No, what you meant is I'm going to have to get used to being rejected because I'm no good and I'm useless at writing. I didn't say anything of the sort. Look, every writer, all the best writers in the world have had a pile of rejection letters that high. I had 17 articles rejected before I had one accepted by the Weatherfield Gazette. Yeah, but... Look, it's happened to every writer since time began, from James Joyce to Toya Battersby. Did he write for the Weatherfield Gazette and all? Who? James Joyce. No, uh, James Joyce was a famous author. He, he's dead now. But anyway, the point I'm making is he had numerous rejection letters too before he finally made it big. In fact, he didn't really make it big until he was dead. Oh, well, a fat little could that is to anyone. I don't want to have to wait till I'm dead to get my articles accepted. What the hell's the point in that? Toya! Toya, listen! Toya! Oh, what's brought that on? Well, I just have to call it artistic temperament. Oh, Sally, can I have a quick word, please? Bye. Yeah, bye. I was going to double back anyway, but you saved me the trouble. I've been wanting to do that all day. Hey, I've got some news. Oh, yeah? You know, we were saying how the best thing that could happen would be if Kevin got back with Natalie. Yeah. Guess what I saw today in the garage. What? No! Yes. Natalie and Kevin together? Yeah. They looked pretty cosy to me. I mean, I couldn't be sure, but from where I was standing, they looked very... How shall I put it? Well, they looked close. Do you really think they're getting back together? Who knows? Maybe you should ask Kevin. Hurry up, Les, will ya? You're dying of thirst, aren't you? Hang on, I'm coming. Hey, I'll put it on the table where she'll be able to see it. Hey, up. Here she comes. Go and get it. We'll give it to her now. Hey, Toya. Close your eyes. Les has got a right surprise for you. I'm not in the mood. Hey, you'll be in the mood for this, won't she, Les? Yeah. Ta-da! <laughs> what do you think, eh? Isn't it a beauty? You'll be able to write all the articles you want now. What do you think I'd want a computer for? So you can write all your articles for your magazines. Like a proper journalist, like. Oh, stuff it. What the hell was all that about? What have I done now? Oh, ignore her. She didn't mean what she said about not wanting it. She's in a mood. We'll give it to her later on. Go on, take it back inside. Look, at least think about what I've said. It would mean a great deal to me if we could get along together. Maybe you could even come round for dinner with me and Simon one night. Simon? Sorry. Simon's the man I'm seeing. Well, more than seeing, I suppose. We've been together nearly a year now. I've just moved in with him. We're thinking of having a baby, actually. Oh, well, 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 good luck with it, then. Thanks. So, see you back at work? Please, please. Hi, this is the National Animal Freedom Front. We've planted a bomb in the offices of Only 16 magazine. Formby Towers, 7 Formby Street, London, EC197BA. It's going to go off in 20 minutes, so you better evacuate the building. Because, because, well, they did an article on cosmetics that were tested on animals. Well, are you going to evacuate the building or just stand around yabbering all day? So it's all right? Yeah. Why shouldn't it be? Oh, you just seem a little bit. A little bit what? Nothing. Got a good day at work? Yeah, okay. A bit quiet. No interest in visitors then. What are you getting at, Sal? Natalie pop in for a friendly little chat, did she? <sighs> Let's not start all that again, eh? There's no point denying it, Kevin. You were seen. 
Oh, yeah, by you. Well, I hardly think that's relevant, do you? OK. We was talking. But that's all we was doing, Sal, talking. Oh, yeah, what were you talking about? You and me, if you must know. About how I can't seem to put foot right in your eyes anymore. Well, it's nice to see you getting a sympathetic shoulder from good old Natalie. Oh, don't be daft! I'm not being. Doesn't that tell you something about us? Eh? Well, you were the one that said it. That you can't talk to me, but you can talk to her. Doesn't that tell you something? What are you on about? Why don't you just come out with it and admit it? You'd be better off with her. Sally, don't be daft. The whole point of what I was saying to Natalie was how, how I want you and me to, to sort things out. Yeah, well, have you ever thought that as long as you'd rather be with Natalie, there's nothing more for me to say? Sally, I keep telling you, I don't want to be with Natalie. I want to be with you. How many more times do I have to tell you that? I'm going to bed. Sally. Sally, you just can't... I don't suppose there's any chance of you rousing yourself and giving us hand. It's evening out there. I'll be through in a minute, Vera. I'm just fancying a little breather. Breather? You've hardly done out all week. You've been over at that cabin moping after that Rita Sullivan all the time. I beg your pardon. I've not been moping over anyone. Well, you could have fooled me. Oh, well, that wouldn't require much effort. Look, I am time to stand here arguing with you. I've got a bar to run, and that includes you. It's not man and Jack's fault if you show yourself up caught in at your age. Unless I'm very much mistaken, Vera, as a partner in this business and not one of your employees, I will work when and if I choose. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm on my break. And where do you think you're going now? Somewhere where I can get a bit of peace and quiet for a change. Perhaps I'll try the middle of the M6. Alec, Vera, I am up to there. Do you know, I've had it with him. Who? Him, Gilroy. Not surprised Rita Sullivan told him to get stuffed. But I'll tell you this, Jack, there's no way I'm in mean, good wages to go gallivanting, I'll tell you that for note. Hey, there she is. In a better humour now, are you? Look, love, I paid over 100 quid for that computer. And I know it's not top of the range, like, but like I said, we all have to start somewhere. And as soon as you bunged out a couple of articles for that magazine, well, you'll be able to afford a better one. So what do you say? Oh, good lass. I told you she'd see sense Janice love, didn't she? Aye. You did that. See, he might be a good-for-nothing layabout most of the time, but I'll say one thing for him. He has faith in you. We both do. Yeah, well, I wouldn't hold your breath. Oh, rubbish. You're going to be a great writer. We'll see your name in lights one day, won't we, Les? Will we? Oh, yeah, yeah. Are you too drunk or something? Give over. Hey, you're going to make us all famous. I know you are. I can feel it in me water. My toya. Famous writer. Oh, who the flaming hell's that? She's right, your mum. We're relying on you to make a fortune and get us all out of this dump. Mrs Battersby. Les, what have you been up to now? Uh, what can I do for you, officer? Les. I've been here all day, honest. It's my day That's up. That's what I'm worried about. Someone's made a hoax bomb warning from this address about three quarters of an hour ago. Any idea who that might have been? A hoax bomb? Give over. We've been in the pub, me and I, Janice. There's been no one here. Except. Good evening, dear. Yeah, these are all for you. Oh, thank you. Right, you kids can go if you're finished. You know, you must be soft in the head, so if you think I want Natalie back. Must I? Bet she'd give you a nice big bundle of her cash. Sally, that's what this is all about. Natalie wants her money back. Yeah, well, the two of you were very cosy in that garage from the sound of it. Yeah, well, you wasn't there, so don't go believing stupid gossip. Well, just tell me, Kevin, when you made your mind up about whether you're going back to her or not, cos I don't want to go through all them lies again. Like, I don't want to go back to Natalie. Not ever. It's you I want. Rosie and Sophie. Look, what the hell's going on, Sal? Oh, forget it. Forget I ever said anything. What is it? 
The uh, documents for the bank loan. Need your signature. Right. Hello, Toya. Mind if I join you? Do what you want. I'm off. Oh, I see. Well, don't forget our appointment today, four o'clock. Why? Do you reckon there's any point? Well, of course there is. Whatever do you mean? Right. Off across to the garage. Right, I'll see you later. Haven't signed it? No. Why, what's up? I thought you said everything was okay. I know, but I'm... Don't tell me you're flaming chains in your mind about the bank loan now, Sal. Kevin... What the hell's up with you? Are you losing your marbles or something, Sal? Is it not bad enough I've got to go cap in hand for a bank loan? And my wife's got enough money to buy Natalie out twice over. Don't go through all that again. Then what is it, Sal? What the hell's going on? Because I'm sick of it. I'm sick to the back teeth. I'm sick to death of you messing me about. And I'm sick of you. I'm sick of you going on and on and bloody on about money. It's my money, Kevin, mine. Like half of this house is mine. And I've had a gutful. And where the hell have you been? Ow. What's it look like? Oh, making more hawks bomb calls, will ya? Where is it this time? Buckingham Palace? Mm, don't be stupid. Hey! Don't call your mother stupid. You're the one that's stupid, phoning magazines and telling them there's a bomb. And it's not good for my health having coppers banging on that door like last night. Well, you shouldn't have such a guilty conscience then, should you? I'm not the one turning into a terrorist. This is that weirdo from next door's influence, Spider. What magazine was it anyway? Anti-pollution monthly? Only 16. Oh, and what did they do? Stop printing on recycled paper or something? Come on, Les, it ain't funny. Somebody could have got hurt. Oh, don't talk rubbish. I told you, don't talk to your mother like that. And if we have coppers on that doorstep again because of you, Art Sawyer, I'll give you a flaming bomb. Yeah, well, you don't talk to me like that. You're not me dad. Hey, that is enough. You are a grounded lady. You're not to set foot out of that house for a whole week. Do you hear me? Can't give a stuff. And that computer's going back where it come from and all. Get the lorry's number plate, did you? Why are you evil? The ungrateful madam after everything I've done for her. Now listen, Gilroy. Round here, if you don't work, you don't get paid, right? I put plenty of that on if I were you, you're gonna need it. What? War paint. Oh, I can handle Gilroy. Oh, glad to hear about that. Because I'm having nothing to do with it, Vera. With what? Look, it's not as though Alec was skiving. The only reason he wasn't here with us is because he was looking after Rita. Look, you know you are trouble, you're too soft. What do you think would happen if Boot were on other foot? He'd cut our wages just like that. It's about time he got a taste of his own medicine. But Vera, doesn't that just make us as bad as him? What? After all, he's put me through all these sleepless nights up for weeks. Fixing to put Rita behind that bar. But we don't know that, V. Look, he can have a share of the profits, and that's it. It's payback time, and he ain't getting any. All right. But I reckon you're going to need more than war paint by the time he gets here. I'd get myself a tin helmet if I were you. Go polish some glasses. That's all you're fit for, you, with your spineless dishcloth. Look, Alec Gilroy don't scare me. Greg, I need a I'm a bit pushed right now, Sonny. It's important. Kevin's had the papers come through for this loan. He's waiting for me to sign them. We well, can't. You mustn't. Oh, no, I know I shouldn't, but it's getting really awkward. Look, Sam, if you sign those papers, he'll get the loan. But you'll lose all chance of getting what's rightfully yours when you split up. And how do I explain that to him if I won't sign? He's going to think I'm a right cow. Who cares what he thinks? Make it all the easier to chuck him. What about his business? He needs that money. I need to buy Natalie out. And from what I saw the other day, you'd be doing him a favour not giving him the chance. Who knows? One day he might even thank you. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Of course I am. Before we go any further, I reckon it's time you bought yourself a new set of batteries for this calculator of yours, Vera. Oh, you do, dear? Yes, I do. I've seen better adding up at a chimpanzee's tea party. Look, there's nothing wrong with them figures. Nothing wrong? I'm paid more than that. Not this month, you know. Look, we only pay folk who do the fair share. I beg your pardon. No, well, what our Vera is trying to say, Alec, is while you were looking after Rita, 
it left a certain burden on your partners, us, like. This is outrageous. Listen, you're lucky me and him aren't paying ourselves extra cos we're due it. After all running about you've done after that Rita Sullivan. Hang on, I don't believe I'm hearing this. You're a shirky, you Alec Gilroy, that's what you are. After everything I've done for you two, saving this place from collapsing about your ears, if it weren't for my money, the only pint glass you'd have between you is the one you were begging with in the street. Yes, Alec, and, and we're very grateful, but, I mean, come on, fair's fair. Fair, Jack? I reckon I've been more than fair putting up with you two's amateur antics. Oh, stick a sock in it. You thought you could trample all over us. Right, Vera, you've made your point. Look, we caught you out. Accept it like a man. Only don't do it again. Oh, there'll be no fear of that. Don't you worry. If this is how you want to do business from now on, you can do it without me. Eh? Uh, what do you mean? I mean, Vera, the partnership is over. You're on your own. Well done, Vera. Very good. Hello, love. Didn't expect you on for dinner. Thought I'd drop in and see how Madam is. Seen any for over all morning. She's kept herself locked up in her room. Good thing for her, too. You know, she really upset me with that crack about not being a dad and the computer being knocked off. In it? That's not the point, Janice. I've always done my best for both of them girls. Try her as much as I, Leanne. Like, I might not be as regular as some dads, but I've always done my best to see neither and went without. I know you have, Liz. Do you know, if she had any idea what a real dad were like, she wouldn't be so fast with her tongue. Any road. I'm off down the rovers. You coming? I'll see you down there. Yeah, all right, love. Sit down. Hey, Toya. Get yourself down here, lady. I want to talk. Has gone out. He's gone down, Rovers. So now, are you going to tell me what the hell's going on? Now to tell. You really upset him, you know, with that crack about not being your real dad. Yeah, well, he can have his computer back. It's no use to me anymore. The magazine said my article were rubbish. Rubbish? Yeah. So, he might as well flog it for his bay money if he wants. I won't be wasting my time with it again. So, that's what all this is about then, is it? That magazine turning down your article. I suppose you think it's funny. No, love. No, I don't. I really thought I'd found something I were good at. Thought I weren't that thick after all. Oh, sweetheart. <laughs> You're not thick. Me now. What was it you wanted to talk about? I would have thought that was obvious, wouldn't you? I don't know. Truth is, Sal, I don't know where I am with you anymore these days. Right then. I'll make it as clear as I can. I'm not signing. Would you like to tell me why? I've thought about it. And I don't think it's the right thing to do. OK. So what am I supposed to do about my business? How am I supposed to raise my family? Your business will be all right, Kevin. <laughs> Natalie wants some money. She could sell it anyone. She won't, though, will she? And what's that supposed to mean? The two of you, in partnership together. Come on, Kevin, that's what you really want, isn't it? You're mad. That's what all this is about. You're flaming mad. No, I'm not. I'm just being honest, which is more than you can manage. <sighs> so what is it you want then, Sal? You want rid of me? Is that what all this is about? Is it? Because...
because if it is, I'll make it easy for you, Sal. I'll go and pack me bags right now. Fine, if that's what you want. Right, that's the wheels in motion. Look, don't you think you're being a bit tasty, Alec? I mean, all this talk about leaving. I mean, just think what, what you'd be leaving behind. You know? Two no-hopers and a ticking bomb on a short fuse. What would you do, Jack? I'll bid you a good day. Hang on. Where do you think you're going? You can't just walk out like that. Oh, no. Watch me. <sighs> Give him no opers. Somebody's better he's right, isn't he? You are? What hope have we getting the cash together to pay Alec out, eh? Greg. Sally. How are you? I thought you were at lunch. I'm glad you're on your own. That sounds promising. Kevin is leaving me. What? I told him I wouldn't sign the papers for the loan. He reckoned I was off my head and he'd had enough. And I've just left him packing his bags. That's great. You didn't tell him about us, though, did you? No, of course I didn't. It's easiest this way, isn't it? Yeah, step by step, that's the way. Mind you, it's one hell of a leap, isn't it? Oh, you're not kidding. I feel like I've had a mountain lifted off my shoulders. I know how you feel. Oh, everything's worked out just fine. signs are that Miss Malone's return to Weatherfield is good news for everybody concerned. Oh, good. I'm relieved to hear that. Hmm? Ah, Miss Malone, please uh, uh, take a seat. Uh, thanks, Mr. Watts, but actually there were a few things I needed to discuss. Oh, well, don't mind me. I was, I was just finishing anyway. <laughs> Bye. So tell me, what would you like to discuss? Um, well, maybe your office might be better, actually, a little later. That suits me. That'll give me a chance to tell you all about the Alma Recommends campaign. Can't wait. I'll tell you what, in the meantime, you can tell me all about this bloke of yours. Bloke? Yeah. You know, the one that you're plotting to have babies with. Oh, Simon. Yeah, that's him, yeah, Simon. Well, what do you want to know? Well, does he work for Fresco as well? No. No, he's a solicitor. Really? Well, that's good. Done well for yourself there, then. He's a partner in the business. Really? We're very happy. Well, that's good to know, yeah. Maybe I'll get to meet him someday, eh? Yeah. <laughs> See, the idea is simple. The shoppers see Alma as one of them. I mean, all right, she works for Fresco, but she's also a housewife. Now, what do housewives want? They want value for money. They want bargains. I know Mr Furman was always very keen on the campaign. Keen? Keen? He thought it was the most brilliant marketing idea since some idiots started cutting up chickens to look like dinosaurs. There's no doubt from the figures it speeded up some otherwise very slow-moving products. Look, the secret is simple. The shoppers trust... Alma. I see. Well, I'm sure they'll come to trust someone else. I don't follow. I said there were things we needed to discuss, Norman. Staff restructuring. What? Head office have made a list of staff. Redundancies? I'm afraid they've recommended Alma. Mrs Baldwin, that is. 
She's not the only one either, is she? This is ridiculous. We are not overstaffed. Norman, I know this sort of thing's always difficult, but according to our assessment, you are. No way! A fresh ghost store of this size would normally operate on a 15.2% lower staff overhead. There's really nothing I can do. I'm sorry, I would if I could. And when are you going to tell them? Perhaps it would be better if you tell the staff rather than me, Norman. After all, bad news is always better from someone you know. 44, 45, 46. Yeah! Now, come on, your turn. I'm bored. No, you're not. You're just losing. Come on, it's your throw. When's Dad coming home? I told you, Rosie. Daddy's had to go away to see a friend of his. Why? I don't know. Something to do with the garage, I suppose. Don't you know? Yeah, I do know. Now, come on, it's your turn. Is he coming back? Not tonight. It's too far. Where is he? Oh, for goodness sake, Rosie. If you don't want to play the game, just go up to your bedroom. Go on. You too, Sophie. Greg? Hi, it's me. If it's that bad, let me get you another drink. Alma, what are you doing here? I'm just waiting for Mike. Right. Well, do you want one or not? Uh, no, no, I better not. Suit yourself. No, what I meant was, um, I'll get you one. What would you like? Oh, thank you. I'd like a gin and tonic, please. Gin and tonic, please, Jack, and another bottle. Thanks. Coming up, son. Thanks. So, uh, what did our new area manager want to talk to you about in private, then? What? At lunchtime. Well, she obviously didn't want to talk in front of me. Uh, planning to make us all redundant, are they? Now, Alma, where have you heard this? I didn't. But it wouldn't be the first time those big organisations swallowed up the little fish, cos that's what they do, isn't it? Uh, that's what Mike calls staff reconstructing. Alma, Furman's Freezers is not a little fish. And you should keep these rumours to yourself. It's a very sensitive time for Furman's at the moment. I thought you said that everything was fine. It is, but it's a brand new company, isn't it? There's bound to be changes. There's bound to be changes in work methods. When you join a big organisation like that, it could spell the end of the old Furman's friendly family feeling to the staff. And anyway, you've got Mike, haven't you? You don't even need the job. Oh, come on, Curly. Mike's the reason I need the job. It's the only bit of independence I've got left. It's the only thing that keeps me sane. Yes. Cheers, Jack, yourself. Michael. Cheers. Hey, he's not turned in for night shift. Yes, I have noticed, really. Well, what do you think? Do you want my, uh, honest opinion? Well, yeah. You've blown it. Do you know, two tonne of dynamite couldn't have done the damage you did at that meeting today. Well, he had it coming to him. He was looking after a sick friend, Vera. Well, happen he was. Didn't alter the fact he dropped us in it right up to his neck. No. You did that. What do you think? Do you think he has dumped us, eh? I mean, just like that. Down the biggest, darkest hole he could find. <sighs> what do you think we should do? We. No, you, Vera. You should go round to his flat and tell him you're sorry. And take some cash with you. Yeah, happen you're right. Hey, but I proved a point, didn't I? Hey, hey, but before you go, Vera, wear some knee pads. Yeah, OK, I'll, uh, I'll see you tomorrow, then. Yeah. Bye. So, uh, how's the summer holiday treating you, then, lads? Are you trying to be funny? No, 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 I just know what it's like for parents, you know, with kids out of school for six weeks and underfoot all the time. So, uh, Toya's, uh, Toya's keeping herself occupied, is she? Yeah. You could say that, yeah. Oh, right, well, uh, what's she up to, then? Only making flaming oak bomb calls down to some magazine in the smoke. What? Well, she got it into her head. She could write, didn't she? And when they told her she was more Blackpool paid than Shakespeare, she cut up rough. See? And she's been doing a lot of swatting lately, as I tell you. We don't know why, but it'll all come to now. You know, you want to thank your lucky stars you're out of the teaching game again. Yeah, well, why's that? Well, take this bomb business, for instance. It goes to prove, doesn't it? Our Toya's got a right nasty street when she can't get her own way. 
God knows what'll happen when she flunks these exams. What about the kids? All tucked up in bed. Don't worry. Have you told them Kevin's gone? I just said he was away for the night. I need to find the right time. You've done the right thing, Sally. You won't regret this. I know. Kevin is in the past. Now all I want to think about is the future. That's my girl. I want to get out of this street and out of this house and as far away from Kevin as I possibly can. And the sooner the better. I want to start a new life. You, me and the girls. Oh, it's you. There's nothing more to be said that our solicitors can't say to one another. Oh, come on, Alec. Hear me out, eh? Well, make it quick, because I'm cooking my dinner. Uh, well, aren't you going to invite me in? There'll be no point. You won't be stopping. Oh, Alec. Look, you don't want to take any notice of what I said this morning. You take what I say with a pinch of salt. <laughs> Women's trouble, you know. I see. Look, you don't want to leave Rovers. Look, we're a team, aren't we? You, me and our chat, the best. <laughs> what has? A six-legged pantomime cow? <laughs> you see, it's that humour. Look, Rovers won't be the same without you. I mean, it'd be a shadow of its former self without you behind bar. Ah, well, you might have a point there. Yeah, makes sense, doesn't it? Anyway, listen, I've brought you money. And... Uh, there's a few extra quid in there. <laughs> Call it a bonus if you like. I'm sorry, Vera, you're short. You are? By at least 20,000 quid at my reckoning. That is if you want my share of the Rovers. <laughs> but still, I'll keep this on account for now. Mum! Mum! What's the matter, love? Don't mind when you try, Amanda. Well, go back to bed and we'll talk about it later, all right? Mum. Later. That was close. You OK? Fine. Oh, I don't want you to go. Mm. Rose, she's up and about. Rosie. All right, <laughs> Rosie. Right, onward and upward. Hey. What? Not yet. I think it's time I... Greg, we've just spent our first full night together, if you don't mind. A couple more minutes won't hurt. Hey, imagine when it's like this all the time. Yeah. Oh, I know it's going to be difficult with the girls and other people, but we can sort it out, can't we? Sure. Mum. Duty calls. Yeah, I'm always on duty. Mum. <laughs> Wait, where are you going? I'd better go before they catch me. I don't mind if they do. Not yet. No. Why? Think about it. One step at a time, eh? See ya. Mum. All right, all right. Do you want anything doing? No. Anything, name it. Shall I clean the oven for you? No. I don't mind. What about them cobwebs in the corner? Shall I get them down? No. What about the grease on the pans? I can chip it off. No. You can fix that curtain rail for me. Hey! No way. That is your job. From me day off? Listen, you. Three flaming months I've been waiting to hang them curtains up in our Toya's bedroom. She is fed up of getting into bed on all fours cos she's scared that them out back will see her half naked. Now get upstairs and fix it. Oh, well. Go and get some thanks. She's grounded. She won't be long. What? Money. You want to get out, don't you? Yeah. Well, that's the price you pay. Well, thank you. What? What is the point in me learning her responsibilities when you're doing the opposite? How do you mean? She's grounded because of what she's done. I know. But popping out for some fags ain't going to make any difference, is it? Oh, of course it is. It shows that you're not taking it seriously. It shows that whenever it suits, you can just change your mind. Well, it's about time you started acting up to your responsibilities. Now get up them stairs and sort out them flaming curtains. <sighs> 
Come on, Rose, eat up. No. Well, don't then. Go without. Honestly, I don't know what's got into you this morning. Where's Dad? I told you, he's staying at a friend's. What friend? Just a friend, all right? I want him. Well, I can't make him appear, can I? I'm not a magician, am I? I'm sorry, Rosie. Look, we'll go and see him later, shall we? No. No, I'm going to work and you're going to the childminder and that's it. I want Dad. We'll talk about it later. Look, I'm really sorry. I don't want to give it up, honest. I would have come sooner, but my mum grounded me. So what are you doing out now? Les has given us a break for fresh air. Well, I must say, I don't blame them. You're lucky to get away with the grounding. No. You could have had a custodial sentence. I'm talking young offenders' institution here, Toya. A bomb hoax. Whatever possessed you? I'm fed up. Oh, dear, what a shame. Toya's fed up. So the City of London grinds to a halt. Thousands of pounds spent on police time, not to mention the inconvenience you put everybody to. I know. It's just I really thought I were getting somewhere at last. I was doing something and people were giving me respect. And for a little bit, I wasn't just thick, Toya. And then when they said they didn't want it... Look, as I've already told you, rejection is something you have to learn if you want to be a writer. You know the Lord of the Flies? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. It got turned down. Never. By over a hundred publishers. No way. Four weddings and a funeral? Yeah. yeah? Got turned down. You know, that were bobbins anyway. What I'm trying to tell you, Toya, is that you have to deal with rejection if you want to be a successful writer. Now, is that what you want to be, or just somebody who falls by the wayside? Anne. Sorry. <clears throat> Miss Malone. Now, I know you have some very, very difficult decisions to make, and with respect, I think you should be guided by me. In respect of Alma Baldwin. No, no. Not in respect. With respect to Alma Baldwin. No, no. In respect. About Alma. Thanks very much, love. Ta da. Oops. <laughs> Morning, Vera. Hello, love. <laughs> Are you all right? Yeah, why? Uh, has he said out? Who? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, nobody. It's a lovely day. Getting longer by the minute. <laughs> Oh, I love where you've put your magazines out. Aren't they nice? Have you done a course in shelf management? Vera, are you going to make a purchase? Yeah, of course I am. Practical camping? Uh, yeah, well, we thought we'd have a change this year. So, uh, how's Alec these days? Yeah, I don't know. You work with him. Oh, I do, yeah. It's just that uh, I wondered if you'd seen him lately and if he'd said out. Oh, about what? Vera, what's going on? Oh, well, we've had a bit of an argument, a fracas, a row. Well, you've had them before. Oh, not like this, though. No, he wants to give the partnership up. Oh, yeah, he just wants to give it all up. Give the Rovers up? Never. Yeah, and we can't afford to buy him out. So, listen, if you see him, will you tell him to come and see me? Yes, I will, Vera. Yes, I will. Thank you. I've always felt rejected. Why is that? Dunno. Quite expelled from your labour school I went to. Well, I wouldn't exactly call that rejection. I mean, don't you think with hindsight maybe your behaviour had something to do with that? Setting fire to the invert, you mean? Maybe. Yeah. I reckon it started with my dad. Really? You never mentioned him. Do you see him? No. He walked out when I was a kid. I couldn't have been very special then, could I? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, maybe there were circumstances that were difficult, you know. Have you asked your mum? She won't talk about it. Anyway, I've decided. Stuff being a reject, I'm going to go for it. Well, good for you. Great. Right. 
And just to prove that nothing's ever wasted, what about a short story? A young girl goes for an interview for the job of her life, but when she arrives, there's a bomb scare and it's cancelled. How does she feel? What sort of scene does she find? Is it chaos or what? And then she spots the police leading a young girl away who made the hoax call and their eyes meet. Take it from there. Yeah, great. Could you write that down for me? Yeah, sure. Everywhere. I've been everywhere. There's no sign of him. Who? Oh, wake up, Jack. Alec, of course. He'll be in his flat, won't he? He isn't. I've been. There's no sign of him. Oh, what are we gonna do? We! No, you! You're the one with the big trap! Oh, Vera. I'm sorry, love. I didn't mean that. No, you're right. It is my fault. Me and my big gob. I don't know. We used to be together now. It goes on a trip of its own. But I swear to God, Jack, I never meant to upset Alec. No. I'll go and put kettle on it. I love you, Jack. Aye. I said, I love you. Hi, love, I heard you. Well? Uh, me too. I'll go and do kettle, eh? Hello. Oh, yeah. People got these. Thomas is killing me for what probably out there. And this. Because all that wrapped up in your story. Oh, uh, that's understandable. You know, I'm glad you came to me for lessons. You'll go far, I feel it. Yeah, well, I'm glad to know. In a potentially difficult business confrontation, speak slowly but firmly. Keep your body language affirmative. And look your adversary right in the eye. Right. Norman! Anne! <clears throat> I mean, Anne. I know you have some very difficult decisions to make. Ah, oh, yes, the pressures of management. I never realised what you were going through. It's given me a whole new insight. Eh? Well, anyway, I was just thinking. You're my role model. Yeah, well, but... Whenever um... I have a problem, I think, what would Norman do? Well, I wouldn't sack Alma Baldwin. Why? Because she's loyal and hard-working. We're all that, Norman. It's why we receive a salary. It's expected. Yeah, but she gives that extra 5%, the bit that isn't covered by wages. I assume this is a sound management appraisal and not some romantic entanglement. Alma! I'll think about it. What's going on? What do you mean? Don't get dumb. I want to know what's going on. Where have you been? Did you get your fags? Why? And since when's Ken Barlow been selling them? What are you on about? I saw you. You and Barlow. Weren't me. Now you are being stupid. I saw you, Toya. Now what's going on? Oh, get a life. Well, if you won't tell me, I'll get the truth out of flaming Barlow. Oh, let's come back. I want a word with you. Oh, yeah? What about? Don't you start. I've had enough Willicum, it's no nothing here. What's that Toya doing coming out of your house first thing in the morning? Oh, you better ask Toya that. I have done. She won't tell me. Well, I'm not at liberty to divulge. Not at liberty? Look, I've been having lessons, all right? You've what? Private tuition. You evil little perverts. <laughs> don't be ridiculous. Ridiculous? I've seen the leader, mate. Les, don't be stupid. Don't be stupid? Yeah, stupid. I'll show you who's stupid. <laughs> ah! ah. <laughs> Lessons. How the hell do you think I got my name in print? Think an angel come to me in the night? And you paid him? Yeah, out of the money I earned. So it's down to me how I want to spend it. And if I want to spend it trying to get out of that gutter you crawl around in, then I'm gonna so stuff you. You took money off a little girl. Only a token amount. Oh, aye. And how did she pay the difference? <laughs> ah, me flaming foot! Are you all right, Ken? 
Never a dull moment, eh? I didn't see you wading in to break them up. Well, I got here too late, didn't I? I heard the noise and I had just sorted the rest. Well, always best left to the women. Yeah, look, I, uh, I was hoping to catch you later anyway. Oh, yeah. I, uh, what a quiet word in private, if that's OK. What about? The whole flaming bit. Garage, Sally, you, me. I just can't get my head around any of it. I need to talk to someone. Is it OK for me to later? Yeah, Grover's. Yeah, about six-ish. Mm -hmm. See you later. Ah, there you are. What's all that fracas out there? Oh, just Les Battersby inflicting grievous bodily harm on Ken. On Ken? <laughs> oh, no, what on earth for? Hey, Rita, there was a time when I would have been interested, but that's long since passed into history. Give me 20 of my usual, will you? Oh, and what did you mean? There you are. Oh, Vera was looking for you. I see. She said you'd had words. Are you all right, Alec? I told Richard all blow over. Did I do wrong? Blowing over Vera Duckworth is not an image I care to dwell on. Blowing up Vera Duckworth I might entertain. Oh. If I could summon up enough interest, which I can't, so I won't. Alec. Look, you may as well know I'm dissolving the partnership. Yes, she told me. Did she also tell you that I'm leaving Weatherfield? I'm going back to Southampton. See you. Rita? You all right? No, I'm not, love. Why, what's the matter? I think I've done something I may regret. Oh, no. Yeah. It's a feeling, or well, you won't know, Sally, of having hurt somebody that you care very much for and not being able to do anything about it. Alec asked me to marry him, and I turned him down. And now he's getting out of the Rovers and leaving Weatherfield for good. And I've a horrible feeling. It's all my fault. Ow! Oh! Sorry. Tyre, can you just go, please? No, I can't. This is all my fault. Look, I'm really, really sorry. I don't know what got into him. He's just a bully. Uh, Tyre, go. I'll pop in later and see how you are then. Oh, don't... Now, I don't think that's a very good idea. I'd just like to have a little bit of time to myself. Please. Right, well, what are your favourite chocolates? Oh, Toya. Milk or plain? Or shall I bring you some cans round? Because that's what Les has when he's ill. Lager and crisps is cure for everything. Go! Oh! Oh, excuse me. Yes, dear. Uh, well, I was just off for my lunch, but before I go, I'd... Uh... I'd just like to sort something out. No. Pardon? No, you're not on the list. Oh, no, sorry, I... Uh, That's what you wanted to ask me, isn't it? Well, yes. Well, I mean, not, not, in, not in so many words, but... First rule of management, Alma, the preemptive strike. Oh, well, yes, thank you, but you see, well, I, I thought that... Well, what, last with... in, first out? Uh, yes. A relic of the caveman approach to industrial relations, Alma. Anyway, I couldn't ignore what Mr Watts said about you, could I? Oh, well, couldn't you? Oh, no, he spoke of you in glowing terms, glowing terms. Surprised your till wasn't melting. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that'll do. Thanks. Greg. Yeah? You were all right this morning, weren't you? Yeah, of course. It's just... Uh, it's just I didn't get... Yeah. I didn't get the chance to say goodbye. I mean, she's not normal like that, Rosie. Right. I mean, when you get to know the girls properly... Yeah. But you do like them, don't you? Well, I don't really know them, do I? No, but you will. I'm sure. It's just Rose is just a bit sensitive at the moment, but you're good with sensitive people, aren't you? I'm off to lunch. All right, mate. See you later. Yep. Yeah. What the... What the hell are you doing? 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 I'm recovering, that's what. Recovering? What from? All you had to do was put up a curtain rail. This is no curtain rail. This is Ken Barlow. What, Ken Barlow did that? Of course not. I went round and sorted him out. I popped him one. You popped him one? I'll pop you one when you were supposed to be sorting out my curtains. Get off, will you? It was molesting our tire. What? I don't believe this. Start again. Slowly. I saw our tyre coming out of Barlow's, the pair of them, looking very furtive. So I said to her, where have you been? And you know what she says? What? Nowhere. 
So I goes round to his and he admits it. Admits what? That he was given a private tuition. <laughs> you know. Private tuition. Where is she? In a room. Toya! Toya! What? Get down here, lady! Now! Oh, Jai. Yes, love. Have you seen any sign of Alec yet? Not a whisper, love. Here, are you talking about Alec? Aye, yeah. Rita's seen no of him neither. Oh, yes, I have. He came in the shop just after you. I told him you wanted to see him. Oh, aye, and uh, what did he say? He said he was going to Southampton. What, for a visit, like? No, for good. Pour another vodka in there, Jack, will you? Right, I love you. You're joking. Of course you was. Oh, okay, Kevin, I'm sorry. So am I. I just never, never dreamt she'd let you go. I didn't. I'll say this for you, Natalie. Your advice is normally spot on, but this time... Are you sure she's not bluffing? No way. I followed your instructions to the letter. I threatened to walk out if she didn't give me a firm answer. She virtually packed my bags for me. That's not all. There's more? I'm afraid so. She won't let me use the house as security for the loan. No house, no loan. No loan, no garage sale. I'm sorry. Oh, Kevin, there's no way. Come on, this is too much. You think I don't know? So we're still partners? Right, so. Well, you've got to get it sorted and double quick. I need that money and I need it now. I know. So what are you going to do about it? Look, I'm sorry about the partnership, Natalie, but I happen to have more important things on my mind at the moment. <gasps> like what? My kids, for a start. Disappointed in me wanting to learn? No. That you thought so little of us that you couldn't come to us and tell us what you were doing. You'd only have laughed. I most certainly would not. You might not, but he would. No, he wouldn't. Of course he would. Look at what he did today. Right, he showed me up. Accusing Ken Bowl and thumping him like that. How does he think that makes me feel, eh? On the street in front of everyone. He did what every good father would have done. What? Believe that his kids into dirty old men. He just thinks everyone's as mucky as him. And another thing, he ain't my dad. You dragged him home from somewhere. Well, I wish you'd tell him to crawl back to where you've got him. Well, I'm... Shut up! <laughs> to sleep. Listen, I've told you, Daddy's just staying with a friend of his. Listen, Rosie, I want you to be a big girl and try and understand what I'm going to say to you. Now, your friend Rachel, well, she lives with a mummy and she sees her daddy at weekends. Didn't she? Well, that's because sometimes that's how mummies and daddies live. They don't always live together. But it doesn't mean that you won't see him. Rachel got a new dad. Yeah, well. She hates him. Am I getting a new one? No. I don't know, love. <laughs> Rosie, shh. I'm getting it now, Les. Get off me case, will you? Look. Hey, don't you start saying out. You deserve everything you get. You know I could bring a charge against him? What, good to police? You wouldn't do. Oh, and why wouldn't I do that? Because they'd want to know what it were all about. Do you think I'd get involved with a 16-year-old girl, a neighbour, that I'd risk my reputation? Oh, aye, what reputation's that? Do you know how long I've lived in this street? What's that got to do with it? Just ask Mrs Bishop, Rita. They'd say you're mad to even suggest it. Oh, would they? All right. Maybe I don't think anything went on. So what's your problem? What's my problem? You know what my Les is like. You might have known he'd have jumped to conclusions. And what about Toya? Don't you think she should bear some of the responsibility for not telling you what was going on? Oh, I blame Toya. You're a grown man, aren't you? Can't you make up your own mind what's right and what's wrong? Obviously not. Because she's just plumb stupid. Who was that you were talking to? Ken Barlow. Barlow? What did he want? 
Nothing. He must have said something, so come on. Look, Les, will you please just drop it? We don't know that he did out. We do. Well, I do anyway. No, you don't. And if he didn't, he could have you for assault. <laughs> well, he could anyway. I wish he would. <laughs> then we'd get the truth. Well, I wish he wouldn't. Because I'd rather it just all blew over. What sort were you? How many times have we had to move? Well, I'm stopping here. I've got a job. I've got my friends. Our Liam's over at Road, and our Toya is taking her GCSEs, and I want a settled life. So do I! No, you don't! Yes, I do! All you want is an excuse to go shouting your mouth off and thumping folk. Listen, he got what he deserved, and if he shows his face at that door again, he'll get another dose. And what about our Toya? What about her? Have you ever thought what all this might be doing to her? <laughs> Have you, Eric? Are you sure it's not broken? Uh, I think it looks a lot worse than it is. He did the same thing to Curly, that man. Oh, he's an animal. There's no other word for it. Anyway, I don't want to talk about him. But why didn't you tell them about these classes? Because Toya asked me not to. I see. Yeah, I know, I know. All these years as a teacher, and I've gone and made the most basic mistake. I've been guarding against this ever since my first teaching practice. I know my dad's a lunatic, but what else did you expect him to think? I mean, Mum's as bad. She just goes along with him. She never stands up for me. Oh, she does. No, she doesn't. She never listens to what I've got to say. She don't want to know. Anyway, they've said I can't go around anymore. I don't know why you want to go around anyway. He's just a craze, like that rollerblading. Why don't you do aerobics or something? It isn't a craze. I like writing. Anyway, I've done that wrong and neither has he. So why shouldn't I go around? Anyway, I'm gonna. But go mad. At least Barlow treats me like a grown-up. Like I've got a brain. I can talk to him. He understands about me wanting to make something of myself. And he doesn't laugh at me if I say something stupid. Oh, they mean well, pair of them. So why do they treat me like a ten-year-old? Look, I'm not staying away for long. Mummy and Daddy will soon be friends again. I mean, you two fall out with your friends at school, don't you? And then you soon make it up. Everyone does. So don't you two worry, OK? I'll soon be back. She eating it? Yeah, good girl, aren't you? That'll be the childminder. Are you two going to be especially good today, like he asked? Yeah. yeah. Right. right, come on, girls, say goodbye to your daddy. You Bye. too, Sophie. Bye. And remember what I told you, OK? Go on, on have girls. a good day. I'll see you at tea time, then. Be good girls, won't you? So what did you tell her? You were playing silly beggars. I hope you didn't. You are, though, aren't you? I told them what they wanted to hear, that we'll soon make it back up and I'll soon move back in. Look, it's up to you, Sal. All you've got to do is ask. Everything's so simple to you, isn't it? More than it is to you, I'll give you that. Look, Sal, I don't know what the hell's going on in your head, but it's about time you faced up to the fact that you're the, you're the mother of two young kids and you've got a responsibility to them, whether you like it or not. You know where to work. Tell me, does your Leanne like Eccles cakes? I'm in a clue. Well, she won't eat anything with cream in her chocolate, Albert. Go on, give us two of those. I'll have one as well. Is Ken not working at the cabin now? No, not today. He's uh, nursing his war wounds. You didn't do out, Mr Barlow. I hope you're not going to start listening to Les. Of course not. Because it wouldn't like that. He was just helping me with me English. I believe you. We both do, don't we? Would it be all right if I took my dinner early? Go on, we're not busy. chance has she got with a father like that? Anyway, how much do I owe you, love? 70 pence. Hey, have you heard about Alec? What about him? Well, Martin was in the Rovers last night. Vera says she thinks he's leaving. Yeah, I did hear something. Well, it's a bit sudden, isn't it? I mean, I thought he was settled round here. What's brought it up? Hey, I don't know. Don't ask me. It'll be something to do with the Duckworths. That'll be it. The place won't be the same without Alec Gilroy. Can I come in? What? I want to talk to you. Oh, no, no way. Why not? Don't, just keep your voice down. What have I done? I mean, do you want to see me in hospital? Les is around the front. Yeah, but what about your mother? She's at work. Well, I'm not prepared to risk it. But I'm due a lesson. You must be joking. Well, why not? 
You want an explanation? Good heavens, girl, of course I can't give you a lesson after all the trouble you've landed me in. You can't blame me for me, Mum and Les. I might have known this would happen. I was mad to listen to you. We should have told them from the start. Yeah, but if we had, they'd have stopped me from coming. Yeah, that would have saved us all a load of trouble. You don't believe that. You said I could make some of myself. You treated me different to how they do. Like I'm not useless. Sorry, Toya, but it's out of the question. You know what this means? We're working class again. What are you talking about? We've always been working class. Yeah, but we've changed. We use a milk jug. Look, we're middle class now. Well, I am. I've got a licence. Look, it doesn't make you middle class because you've got a milk jug on the table and a name over a flaming door. But I'm a businesswoman. A respected member of the community. Well, I was. Yeah, there's a few folk round here that'd be glad to see us brought down. Anyway. Who says we've got to go along with his scheme? If we don't want to sell, we don't sell. Well, I think we should get a solicitor to tell us his rights. Oh, we'll do that and we'll lose everything. The prices they charge, we'll be in debt for the rest of his life. Oh, it's you. Uh, yes. May I? Hi, hi. Thanks. Look, uh, I don't want to fall out over this. Oh, changed your mind, have you? No, I haven't. Certainly not. I just think it'd be less painful for all concerned if we agreed to act amicably, a bit of give and take. Well, we have decided, amicably, to keep things as they are. What are you talking about? You can't. I'm dissolving the partnership. Well, we're not going to let you, are we, Jack? But I've been talking to my solicitor. There's no way you can prevent me. And I've been talking to mine, and he said it's a load of cobblers. Oh, oh did he? I didn't know you had a solicitor. Oh, yes, we've got one, yes. And a big one, too. Oh, what, what's his name, Jack? Never mind trying to change the flaming subject, Gilroy. We are staying here and you can't shift us. Well, I beg to differ. There's nothing you can do except agree a price and make a dignified exit. Unless, of course, you can raise the money to buy me out. But you know we can't. Well, then, let's get on with it, shall we? Get a move on. Are you on your own? Oh, Sally, come and sit down. Cheer me up. Me? You might do better with Les Battersby. You don't. I can't stand to be in the same room with him. You all right, girls? Nice day for it. Gives you goosebumps, don't it? So, are you still fed up about what you were saying yesterday? You know my trouble, Sally. I'm too sensible. Every time an opportunity comes up, I play safe. Cling to what I know. One of the reasons why I didn't go to Cartmel with Mavis. Couldn't let go of the shop. I could have made a career out of me singing if I'd been prepared to move to London. So if you had your time again, would you have gone to London? I don't know. It's all different now. Anyway, it's best not to look back. Trouble is, at my age, it's best not to look forward. Come on, Weed, so things can't be that bad. It's a mistake to let your head rule your heart, Sally. I know that now. Sometimes you should just forget what other people think and go for what you want. Hey, I say, you don't want to buy a spin dryer, do you? No. Do you, Alec? Eh? Want to buy a spin dryer? Guaranteed. Uh, guaranteed to blow up in your face, I shouldn't wonder. Ha, ha, ha. I'd rather use a mango. <laughs> Too late now. For me, at any rate. But if I were your age, Sally, I'd do things very differently. been up to now then? Mm. Giving Edward Spoyer private lessons. Oh, has he? Yeah, unless he's given him a black eye for his trouble. Well done, that man. No, I don't think you'll really have a good one. With Barlow? I wouldn't leave him alone with a double-breasted jacket. How are you fixing tonight? Well and truly. What do you mean? I thought we were going out. Well, 
can we get a babysitter from? I don't know. I haven't thought about that. But I'll cook you a meal when I put the girls to bed. Flaming Gilroy. So how much will we get for it then, Ask I don't know. Well, you must do. How much did it pay us? 25. Oh, well, we can't retire on that. You can't buy a house round here for 25,000. Know, we can't afford to retire, so get that out of your head right away. So how much have we got put by then? Oh, come on, Vera. Oh, daft question. I don't know. Coming to end of his working life, and what have we got to look forward to? Uh, bread and scraping. No, not necessarily, Vera. Trust me, we're not sung yet, love. Ooh, how many times have I heard you say that? Oh, I, I'm sorry, were you having a meeting? Yes, yes, but we're finished now. Come in. in. Ah, and uh, what have you decided? You win. We agree to sell. You are? I knew you'd see sense. Look, what are you talking about? Uh, look, besides, there's nothing you can do about no, it. No, 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 we stand defeated. <laughs> we're flaming dog. Shut up, will you? Listen to me. Yeah, do as the wise man says. We agree to sell you our share of the business for £100,000, don't we, Vera? Yeah, yeah, we do. £100,000? <laughs> you can go and whistle for it. Well, there you go, Alec. No brass, no sale. You're mad, the pair of you. When's Dad coming home? I don't know, sweetheart. He said he would, he promised. Is that him? That's probably Greg, come to do some boring old work. Say hello to Greg, Rosie. Hello, Rosie. Isn't it your bedtime? Well, she can stay up for a few more minutes. Oh, it's your age. It was like that by now. Would you like to read her a story? All right. What's this? That your favourite? No, that's Sophie's book. That's Rosie's. Would you like Greg to eat you and I'll make you a drink? No, I don't want him to. All right, love, will you go upstairs and I'll be up in a minute, all right? I did offer. There you go. Well, go on, then. What else? Ah, just that you'd put in a good word for me and that was enough recommendation in itself. <laughs> what do you mean? Huh. Well, she's never sang my praises before. Well, oh, she's changed her tune, hasn't she? Anyway, how are you a drink? What are you having? Oh, I'll just have another bottle. Oh, no, go on. Come on, have a proper one. All right. Um, a small uh, malt, please, Alec. Right, yeah. You still don't believe me, do you? I'd like to. Oh, yes, and she said that um, you trained her, so she owes it all to you. Really? As God is my witness. Thanks, Alec. Thanks. Right. Thanks. Well, cheers. I hope you're right. Oh, I am. Listen, I know I am. Are you busy? Well, I don't know where my erstwhile partners are. The sooner I get shut of them, the better. Jack, Vera, can you take over? I've got to go out. Run a pub. They couldn't run a flag up a pole. How long will you be? Well, I don't know. Why? I need to talk to you. I thought we'd said everything that had to be said. Maybe. Still. Well, look, I've just got to have a quick drink with my solicitor. I should be back in an hour. Jack! Oh, blow it. I'm off. Anyone wants a drink, they can help themselves as far as I'm concerned. Cheers. Hi. This isn't your local, is it? Of course not. I live yes. miles away. Well, what are you doing here? A fax came through for you just after you left. I thought it might be important. It was marked private, so I haven't read it. It's from Kuala Lumpur. Oh. I haven't read it. You think I have, don't you? No, no. Curly, I was trying to do you a favour. I didn't want to leave it in the machine. Anyone could have seen it. Yeah, thanks. All right. Can I get you a drink? What? A drink. Can I get you a drink? Didn't I tell you I've got a partner? I told you that. Yeah, I know. All I meant was... I think like... I know what you meant. You're right. Oh, I don't hold out much hope. <laughs> Sorry. Not much good with kids. No experience. Well, she's just got to get to know you. It's going to take time. 
You look terrific. Come here. <laughs> Don't, I look a right mess. I mean it. I was going to get changed. Don't. You look great the way you are. <laughs> <laughs> You're crazy, you are. Shall I make you something to eat? You must be starving. It's not a rush. Oh, Greg. If only there was nothing else to worry about. I could be happy like this with you forever. Hey, I know I could. It's all going to work out. I can't see that far ahead. I wish I could. How am I going to carry on with my evening job? I'm not with you. Well, I promised Mike that I could handle it all, and, well, how can I? The girls and babysitting. Oh, right. The only thing would be for you to do it. It'd only be a couple of nights a week. I really think they need to get to know me a bit better first. I'm only thinking of them. No, I suppose you're right. So no one else can do it? Well, it's a lot to ask, and I wouldn't trust them with just anybody. I'm going to have to have a word with Mike. What about Kevin? What, ask him to babysit? No. Get him to move back in. There you go. Oh, thanks, Alan. Cheers. Cheers. You won't change my mind, you know. I would daft to buy back into the Rovers in the first place, especially in partnership with a couple of wussocks like them. I must have been off my trolley. That isn't the only reason you're moving on. Oh? No, of course it isn't. Oh, come on, Alec. I know what the reason is. It's got nothing to do with the dockies. You think I've took umbrage because you turned me down? <laughs> you're way off beam, Rita, way off. Am I? Well, I took it badly at the time, yeah. But I've had time to reflect and, no, you were right. It would never have worked out. We've known each other too long. If it were meant to be, it would have happened long since, after Len died. We're both of us too old to change our ways. We'd be rowing after a fortnight. My meanness, your sweater bills. <laughs> what are you trying to say, Alex? That I bear you no grudges and that you were right to turn me down. But that isn't the reason. I should never have come back to Weatherfield. It was the biggest mistake I ever made. Well, I'm sorry to hear you say that, Alec. Cos I've had second thoughts, too. About what? About rejecting your offer. <laughs> you don't mean that... <laughs> well, you're not trying to say that you want to marry me, after all. Yes, Alec, I do. That's exactly what I want. <sighs> What's screwing everything up is the guilt, right? Yeah. You said to yourself, the girls blame you as much as Kevin. I don't know what he said to them, but they know he wants to move back in. So, if he does come back, they'll be happier and you'll be less guilty. Apart from which, you won't need a babysitter, will you? There's just one snag. Oz, I thought the whole idea was that we would get a place together with the girls. So we will. But where we've been going wrong is we've been trying to move too fast. Look, sooner or later, Kevin's going to get fed up and go off with Natalie. He may do, he may not. We don't know that. Or someone else. It could be months, years. Besides, I need to get to know the kids first. Thing is, if people find out we've been carrying on behind his back, that makes us a guilty party. All we've got to do is wait for him to put a foot wrong. Then we get the rest of our lives to be together. I can't wait that long. I want you now. Me too. That's why I've been thinking. We've got to spend more time together. I can't tag along to these parties. People soon start talking. So that's the evening's out. I can't manage with the odd few minutes here and there. Listen, how about we set up in business, me and you? That way we get to spend all our days together. What sort of business? Where? Well, same as I'm in now, but not tied to Mike. I know the business inside out. I've seen some great properties down by the Keys, overlooking the canal. Where do I fit in? Well, you practically ran the office in Mike's old factory. That's what I heard. So would I have to give up my job at Underworld, then? Well, yeah. But we'd have our own business. Split the profits, spend every day together. 
except when I was out on the road. So I'd be a co-director? I don't really have any experience. But you could contribute in other ways, if you wanted. How? Well, we um, need a bit of money to set up. Deposit on the property, office equipment, fax, that kind of thing. How much would you need? Say, two and a half grand? She'll be off sulking somewhere. That's where she'll be. I'm worried about her. So am I. But I'm not going to let my supper go cold. Oh, I can't eat out. Not till I know where she is. That'll be her game. Putting us through this agony and that. The worry of it all. Well, she's off swanning round the shops. Don't you want them sausages? I don't think so. Not at this time of night. Maybe that's her now. Sawyer! No, it's me. What's up? Toya, we've not seen her all day. Yeah, well, she was dead fed up this morning. She said that you wouldn't let her go round to Ken Barlow's. Barlow's? That's where she'll be! Liz, don't do it daft! Oi! Barlow! Barlow! Come here! You lay a finger on me and I'm going to the police. Where is she? I would tell you. Liz. Be careful. I haven't a clue. I don't believe you. Well, that's your problem, because I've told her in no uncertain terms the lessons are finished for good. Out of way. I'm having a look. Please leave it. She's not in there. At last! The voice of reason. Where is she then? I don't know. What are you doing up? I thought I heard front door go. Must have been next door. Well, hurry up and come back to bed, will you? I can't sleep not knowing where she is. She'll be all right, you'll see. She could be lying in a ditch for all we know. Uh, look, she's a sensible kid. She won't do out daft. If anyone's capable of doing out daft, it's how we tell you. Are you sure she's not at Harley Ann's? A nightclub, then? She doesn't go to clubs. Well, maybe she's started. She's 16, you know. No, it's not her scene. Well, maybe she stopped at her mates. She stopped at her mates before. Not without telling us. Well, maybe she's decided it's time she stopped telling us where she's going and who with and when she's coming back. You watch. She'll come waltzing through that door at any time now as if nothing's happened. Do you think so? I'm sure. Now, come on. Let's go back to bed. <laughs> Hello? Greg, it's me. Are you all right to talk for a minute? Yeah, of course I am. Maxine's not there, then? No. I've been thinking about what we were talking about last night. Oh, right. About the partnership. I'm not sure about asking him to move back in. I thought we agreed it was for the best. I know, but the thought of having to share a house with him again, having to pretend we've made up... He'd do the same to you if the shoe was on the other foot. He's no angel. So we just lie? Simple as that? Yeah, for the time being. Do it for the girls. Craig, we can't play happy families forever. They're gonna have to know the truth sooner or later, aren't they? Yeah, and when the truth comes out, you're gonna need to be in as strong a position as possible. It takes two to wreck a marriage, agreed? Yes. If we don't play our cards right, Kevin's going to end up 
looking like the innocent party. Do you want that? I just want you and I to be together with the girls. Well, then you're going to have to make some sacrifices, at least for the time being. Greg, I don't know how you can stand it. I would be dead jealous if you were getting your ex-wife to move back in with you. I know it's only a means to an end, and that's how you should be thinking. How many teenage girls do you know take a computer with them when they go clubbing? Hey? That computer you bought her, it's gone. Honestly? And so's half of her clothes out of her wardrobe. And that rucksack. She's run away, Les. No, oh, hang on. Hold your horses. She can't have gone far. Do you know, this is all your fault, is this? How's it my fault? You upset her. How? By thumping Barlow. I was trying to protect her. Oh, yeah, and look what good it's done. We might never see her again. Oh, stop exaggerating. Do you know how many runaways there are sleeping rough? Do you know how many of them turn out to be drug addicts and prostitutes? Calm down. We'll find her. Don't worry. She could be anywhere by now. I bet I know where she is. Where? Have you got our toy in here? You're joking. She's run away. We think. She didn't come home last night. Yeah, well, she didn't stay here. We had a falling out, you see. And, well, we thought that you'd be the first person she'd turn to, you know, if she were upset. How long has she been gone? Since last night. She could be anywhere, then. Well, you know where we're mates are. Eh? Can you ask around and see if anyone's seen her? Yeah, of course I will. Thanks. Where are you off to now? I'm going to see if she's turned up for work. All right, yeah, give us a ring Friday. It'll probably be after the weekend now. All right, then. Cheers. See you now. What can I do for you? I've come to ask you to move back in. What's brought this on? Thought you'd be pleased. I am. I just wondered why you want me back all of a sudden. Well, maybe it's time I grew up. Faced my responsibilities, isn't that what you said? It's a long time since you took any notice of what I said. You should be glad I'm doing it now, then, shouldn't you? I am glad. Just can't help wondering why. Making this so difficult. It's not what you want, is it, Sam? What are you saying? I don't believe it's what you really want. What? I think you're only asking me to move back in because you, you're feeling guilty about seeing the kids upset. Oh, I'm taking their feelings into account, yeah. And well, what about your feelings, Sam? Kevin, I've had to swallow a lot of pride to come over here. The least you can do is meet me halfway. I just want to hear something what makes me think it's what you really want. I wish we could go back to how we were two years ago. But we can't. I can't wave a magic wand, Kevin. I wish I could. At least give it a try. Of course I'll try. I want our marriage to work as much as you do. Do you? Yes. Bring my bags across straight from work. You offered her a drink and she said no because she's got a partner. What? Well, sounds perfectly reasonable to me. No, it's the way she said it. It was that look in her eyes. What? Look in her eyes. I've seen that look before. I know what it means. Don't you, don't you think you're letting your imagination get the better of it? Alma. Just because she didn't sack you doesn't mean she can do no wrong. No. She didn't sack me because she took your advice, because she respects your opinion. Nah, nah, it's a smokescreen. She's trying to wrong foot me. Or else she's moved on. If you change, put the past behind her. You should try it. You seen Kevin yet? I went straight over there after a rangy. And? He's moving back. Tonight. It won't be for long, I promise. Good. Because I don't know how long I can take it. You busy lunchtime? Why? I want to show you around the office I was telling you about. Apparently, we're not the only ones chasing it, so if we are going to go ahead, we ought to move quickly. 
I see. You're not getting cold feet about this as well, are you? No, it's just... It's a big step going into partnership with somebody, isn't it? I don't know how to run a business. Well, I do. I'll show you the ropes. Besides, it'll be no big deal. Are you, uh, have you changed your mind about anything else? I just want to make sure we're doing the right thing. Of course. And the last thing I want is to force your hand. Look, we, um, we shouldn't be having this conversation here. Why don't we go and see this place anyway? It'll give us a chance to talk properly. Yeah. Haven't you gone to work yet? She can't go to work in this state. It'll take her mind off it. What good stopping at home gonna do? I can't go until police have been. You haven't phoned the police. And the hospitals. That's what you do when somebody goes missing. Oh, God. When the hell is it gonna sink in, Les? She's run away! And they're coming round? Yes. When? Any minute now. Quick! Hide the telly! What are you hiding telly for? Because it's knock-off, innit? Like everything else in this house. I'll wring that girl's neck when I get my hands on her, putting us through this. Right, now what else is there? Oh, aye, the phone. The phone? Charlie West told me it was bankrupt stock. Well, I'm taking no chances. You're on your own. Yeah, Leanne's gone across to her mother's. They're waiting for the police. Their toy has gone walkabout. Is that family never out of trouble? Sympathetic as ever, Ali. Oh, I, I. Listen, I've been thinking oh. about what you said last night. I mean, you did mean what you said. Last night? Yes, our, our little tete-a-tete. -tete. Don't tell me you don't remember. Well, I remember having a hot bath and then I think I fell asleep in front of telly. Oh, you're joking. Well, of course I am, you great lummox. I remember every word. And I meant every word. Well, in that case, I think the sooner we get wed, the better. My sentiments entirely. And, uh, you are sure? I mean, you're not going to change your mind? I will if you don't stop asking me. Oh, well, I'm sorry, it's just taking me by surprise, that's all. Well, I think you'll find I'm a very unpredictable woman. Keeps people on the toes. Especially husbands. You won't regret it. I'm going to make you a very happy woman. You already have, Alec. And according to her employer, Mr Cropper, she went off for a dinner break approximately 12 o'clock and didn't return afterwards? He thought she was skiving. You might be right. Do you think so? Well, lots of kids go missing every day, especially after a family row. Most of them turn up after a day or two, when they start missing their creature comforts. Here. Yeah. That were taken about three months ago. Thank you. So what happens now? Well, we'll get a description circulated, but other than that, there's not much we can do. Oh, listen to it, eh? Hey, England's finest. Oh, shut up, Les. You should be sending out teams of sniffer dogs, fleets of helicopters. I think that'll be jumping the gun a bit, don't you? Besides, I should warn you, if we do find Toya, of course, we'll inform you of her whereabouts. And we can strongly advise her to come home. But we can't make her come home. Why not? Because she's 16. That makes her an adult. She's free to do as she pleases. Come on, Les. Get your coat on. Well, where are we going? If these lot can't do out, we can. Like what? We're going to look for her. Look where? Her mates, Red Wreck, City Centre. I'll crawl the streets until I find her. And I'll tell you something. When I do find her, I'm going to bring her home. I just wanted to apologise about last night. Apologise? Yeah, it was really kind of you to offer me a drink and I didn't mean to sound so aggressive. Simon doesn't like it if I go drinking after work. That's all right, I understand. Besides, I'd spent the morning in Liverstitch handing out redundancies, so I wasn't in a very sociable mood. Well, you wouldn't be, would you? Sorry, maybe some other time. Yeah, all right. 
So, what do you think? Well, it feels a bit cold. And I miss having all the girls to chat to. You won't miss slaving over a sewing machine and being paid peanuts. I must admit, I do prefer working in the office. Imagine what it's like when you're working for your own company. Nice big desk, top of the range PC. Oh, I can see you now. So what exactly would we be doing? Going freelance. Chasing orders for people like Mike Baldwin. A number of times Baldwin lost orders because of the price or deadline. And every time I knew that just one phone call to a supplier in Cyprus and the order would have been mine. Hours. Now, as long as I stay with Mike, my hands are tied. It's all down in the business plan, if you want to look. You've done a business plan? Of course I have. And have you told Mike that you're going to leap and set up on your own? <laughs> are you mad? He'll run me out of town. Yeah, but surely you can't work for Mike and set your own business up. Let's just say there might have to be a short period where the two jobs overlap. Oh, I don't like the sound of that. I'm not going to rip him off. It'd be like with you and Kevin, only the other way around. I'll leave Mike when I'm ready to leave. So what do you think? Are we going to take it? On one condition. What's that? That if you get a trip to Cyprus, me and the girls can come too. Done. <laughs> We need to put the rent down in advance. Can you give them a cheque? Well, how much is it? About 800. And then we need to open a business account, get the phone sorted, furniture and whatnot. Well, I need to get the money out of the building society. Well, why don't we do that now? And then we can have a drink to celebrate. Champagne, eh? Well, surely the old place ain't worth 100,000. Never mind half of it. Probably not, so what? So Alex's not going to pay for something if it's not worth it. We decide what the asking price is. Now, if he wants to pay it, fine. If he doesn't, we stay put. Oh, can we have a little conflab about this place, you know, while it's quiet? Well, there's been a slight change of plan. Are you talking about change of plan? I'll just be a second. He's up to summer, Tim. Why is he looking so chuffed with himself? I don't know, but I'll tell you this. If it were a straight contest between you and Alec Gilroy over who could diddle most people, my money would be on Alec every time. We'll see about that, Vera Love. You're going to get me shocked. It's gone two o'clock. Tell him we've been having a brainstorming session. It's half true anyway. Have you got any mint? Stink of boobs. Right, before we start. £100,000 to buy us out, remember? Uh, yes, well, there's been a slight change of circumstances. And not a penny less, otherwise we're not budging. No. Can I get a word in? By all means. Look, what I'm trying to tell you, and this has come as much a surprise to me as it will do to you, I'm sure, Rita and I are getting married. Never. I thought she turned you down. Well, she's had a change of heart, I'm happy to say. Aren't you going to congratulate me? So that means that you two will want to get your hands on this place. I knew it. What did I say? Hey, look, be believe it or not, our decision has nothing to do with the running of this place. What it does mean, however, is that I won't be leaving Weatherfield after all. So we carry on as we are, like? Oh, no, no. I still want to dissolve the partnership. But as I shall be sticking around, I think it's more appropriate if you buy out my half share. Eh? Well, naturally, I'll accept a reasonable price. Same price you offered me for your share, in fact. Oh, yes, 100,000 sounds very reasonable to me. You get yourself one of these. That's a bit beyond my price range. And anyway, my job doesn't come with a company car. Well, I'll have to see what I can do. Head office have really taken a shine to you, haven't they? Do you want to lift home? Nah, it's only ten minutes. I'll walk it. Are you sure? I practically go past the end of your street. Go on, then. Oh, no! 
Oh, Sophie's the winner! Yeah! Again, again! <laughs> hey, come on, girls, go upstairs and wash your hands. It's nearly tea time. <laughs> again, again, again! Hey, it's again. Sophie, I mean it. Go on upstairs, do as your mum tells you. Oh, they're just playing up because I'm back home. Well, at least they're happy. Yeah. Are you happy? I'm back home, I mean. Yeah, of course I am. You sure? We can get back the way we were, so. I know we can. Let's just take every day as it comes, eh, Kevin? I still love you, Sal. I better get that wash out. Don't. Thanks for the lift home. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, Norman, wait. Can we talk for a minute? Yeah, of course, yeah. You always look uncomfortable when I'm around. Well, I think I have every right to feel a bit uncomfortable. Yeah, I know it's going to take a long time before you can trust me again. But we still have to work together. We have to try and get along. Yeah. In three months from now, we could... What? Oh, forget it. It doesn't matter. No, what? What? Come on, what were you going to say? What? Listen, I need to tell you about something. Could I come in for a minute? Yeah, all right. What did you and Greg get up to at dinner time? Greg? Saw you getting out of his car looking all mater. Don't start all this again, Kevin. You took me for a bar meal to say thank you for all the hard work. I'm not stupid, Sal. It's a matter of opinion. You and him are up to something, aren't you? Yes, Kevin. You're right. We are. But it's not what you think. If you must know, we're going into business together. You doing what? You heard. We've been talking about it for ages, and today we decided to go ahead. There's no need to look so surprised. I know exactly what I'm doing. In fact, if I hadn't married you, who knows, I might have been doing something like this years ago. I just can't believe she put us through this. I can. Well, I've done it, haven't I? When? Before I went to Canada. Martin and my mum were driving me mental, so I just took off. Well, how long for? A couple of weeks. Where did you go? Um, Leeds, then London. <laughs> then I ended up working at an ice cream parlour in Torquay. And you didn't even phone or anything? No. Not even to put your mum's mind at rest? You don't want to put people's minds at rest, Leanne. Part of the reason you go, or at least part of the reason I went, is I didn't think anybody cared about me. Hello? Leanne, it's me. Where the hell are you? You don't need to worry. I'm all right. I'm on my way to London. London? You're gonna do what? It's all very hush-hush, but between you and me, there's gonna be a big reorganisation of the company. Well, new broom. About to be changes. Can't say I didn't expect it. Yeah, but this is the management structure, and the upshot is I'm probably gonna be promoted to regional manager. And they've asked me to nominate a new area manager. Well, why are you telling me all this? Why do you think? If all goes according to plan, we'll be working with each other even more. Hang on. Hang on a minute. Let me get this right. Are you recommending me for promotion? You're the most able person in the whole company. <laughs> well, I, uh, I don't know what to say. If you don't think you can handle it, if you don't think you can handle me, just say so. I'll understand. Well, I get a car like yours. <laughs> oh, excuse me. No more mutts. Hello, Mum. Yeah, listen, uh, can I ring you back in half an hour? I've got someone with me. Yeah, of course I remember. I'll be there next Wednesday. Tell Dad. I've got to go. See you now. Bye-bye. Sorry about that. That's all right. Anyway, I better be going. I just wanted to sound you out. Well, thank you. Um, thank you very much. That's all right. I hope it all works out, Norman. If anybody deserves to do well, it's you. See you tomorrow. Bye. We must have walked miles. My feet are killing me. 
would still be out there if it were up to me. I'm going to stick the kettle on. Our toy's just phoned up. Where is she? She was on the M1 somewhere. She rang from a phone box. Is she all right? Well, she didn't talk for very long, but, yeah, she sounded OK. Did you tell her we were out of our mind? We worry you. Well, yeah, I tried, but she wouldn't listen. Anyway, she only had 10p. She's on her way to London. London? What the hell does she want in London? She said... She said that she wants to find a real dad. I wish I knew where she was, right this minute. You're going to be late for work if you don't shape yourself. Because there's a lot of nasty people out there. That's what I would tell you don't seem to realise. She's too trusting. I said, you're going to be late for oh, work Oh, will you, you stop nagging at me? You get off to your own work. It's my day off, innit? Oh, trust you. What are you gonna do? Sit on your backside all day when you should be looking for our toy? I'll tell you something. <laughs> I would tell you wouldn't have run away to find a real dad if you'd have been out like a father to her. Give over, Janice. I've treated her like my own. Just the same as Arlie Ann. <laughs> yeah. You never really gave a toss about either of them, really. They were all that's left to me. I've been good to Toya. I paid for the food, haven't I? I paid for the clothes. No, you have not! I have. Well, let her proper father start paying for her now. And let's see how he likes it, shall we? Well, he won't, will he? Not him. Why do you think I put our tyre in her pram and walked out? You know, that's the smartest move I've ever made. <laughs> and then I go and do the most stupid thing I've ever done. Get myself aged up with you. Kevin, will you see to the girls? If I do it, I'm going to be late. So what? You're packing this job in at Baldwin's to settle with Greg Kelly? What does it matter if you're late? It matters because all these plans are still a secret. So don't tell anybody. We don't want Baldwin getting wind of this until we're ready. Oh, you're taking hell of a chance, Sal. You've got a good safe job there at Baldwin's. There's no safe jobs anymore, at least of all at rag trade. Oh, sounds to me like Greg Kelly talking, not you. I mean, what makes you think he's got the brains to set up a business? He is a brilliant salesman. He's brought in more work than Mike Baldwin's ever had. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. And he doesn't see why he shouldn't be selling it for himself. Well, he's a salesman, all right, and you bought it. And what is that supposed to mean? It means I can see exactly what's in it for Greg Kelly. He gets your money to set up a business. Do you think he'd want to go into business with yourself if you had got all this money to chuck at him? That is a lousy thing to say. No, it's not. I just want to, to make you see things clearly. You're just trying to make me realise I'm a stupid little housewife who ought to have more sense than wanting to make something out of her life, apart from clocking in in the morning and coming home at night to make your tea. Hey, we fixed Alec Gilroy all right. Should have seen his face. I did see it, Vera, and he's not finished yet, so don't you go winding him up, eh? Oh, stop winching, man. Look, we're not letting him buy us out, and we don't want to buy him out, do we? So he's stuck with us, isn't he? Oh, sh 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 send out, send out, is he? Is he? Hey, good morning. morning. My <laughs> word, it's a beautiful day out there. It makes you feel glad to be in the land of the living, doesn't it? Mm. <laughs> hey, you're in a good mood. Uh, and why not? And you will be too when you buy out my share of the Rovers. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, you'll be as happy as... Well, as pigs in monk springs to mind. Yeah, but we're not buying your share out, are we? We haven't got the cash. Well, so you borrow it. That's how things are done. Oh, no. No, we're happy as we are, mm -hmm. aren't we? Mm. Me and Jack are partners with you, so that's that, isn't it? <laughs> well, no, Vera. I'm afraid not. How do you mean? <laughs> well, I keep trying to explain it to you, but it's uphill work. <laughs> Look, we've got a partnership, right? Yeah, and we're keeping it, and all. Uh, well, no, no, you can't, Vera. You see, there are rules. I mean, laws of partnership. Ask a solicitor if you don't believe me. If you won't buy me out and you won't agree a fair price for me to buy you out, we've only one option left. What's that, then? Well, we have to put the business up for sale, sell it for the best price we can get, and then split the proceeds, less legal fees, of course, and go our separate ways. I mean, in your case, you'll have to find yourself somewhere to live as well as finding yourself jobs. It's not so bad for me. I mean, I've got my own little house across the street. Still, if that's how it has to be, if that's what you want, I mean, 
So be it. <laughs> Any tea in that pot? Now, here we are, love. Oh, thanks. Any fresh news of your toy? <sighs> no, not that I've heard. Mm. Oh, do you wanted to go off to see a long lost dad? I was less taking that. I mean, some fellas would be hurt, wouldn't they? Oh, no, not me, Dad. Janice is worried sick, though. Well, I think she's good reason, love. I mean, London's a rough place for a 16 year old who doesn't know her way around. Good morning. Morning, Alec. I'm here with an invitation to lunch. Can you manage without it, Leanne, about one o'clock? Yeah, no problem. Oh, no, no, no Rita, it's all right. I'll take my lunch break early and then be back in time for you to go out and enjoy yourself. Hey, yeah. now, we're not going to make a habit of this. Uh, Shop comes first. No, well, this is by way of finding a double reason for going into town. I thought we could look at wedding rings while we were there, oh. thus combining business with pleasure. <laughs> well, no, I, I, you know what I mean. Anyway, you know what I'm driving at. So, one o'clock on the dot. He's getting quite masterful since you and him decided to get married. He thinks he's getting quite masterful. I mean, they're happier for these little illusions, you know. So have you thought about where you're going to go on your honeymoon? Anyway? No, but Alex thinking of nothing else. I mean, he's talking about the Caribbean and um, that island where Princess Margaret goes. Must think. Mm. Brilliant. Mm. And a big posh wedding with all the trimming. Oh, I never had any of that. Me and my Nick. Must be lovely. I'm jealous. Don't be. Take it from me, you've no need to swap lives with anybody. See. All right. There you go, Alma. Oh, thank you, sir. My pleasure. Morning, Norman. Alma. Oh, hi. hi. Thanks again for all your help the other night. It's no problem. Um, actually, I was thinking it was Simon's idea, really, my boyfriend. Well, fiance, if that doesn't sound too old fashioned. What do you come for dinner one night this week? Dinner. Me, you and... Uh... Simon, yeah. Nothing too elaborate. Well, do you think that's a good idea, Anne? Because, uh, well, Simon doesn't know me very well. Oh, he always says he feels as if he knows you. Of course, I've spoken about you quite a lot. Well, I'm a bit uh, tied up this week, as it happens. Mr. Well, some other time, perhaps. <laughs> Things to do. It isn't easy to help Norman Watts, I don't know. He could have a big future with Fresh Girl, but he always seems so cautious, so wary. You'd think he had something to hide, wouldn't you? There's nobody in. Might be as well, really. If she knew I were after her, she might take off again. What are you chundering on about? I'm trying to work out what to do. I'm going after her. I'm going to bring her back home. Don't talk wet. You don't even know where she is. Yeah, I do. She's at her dad's, like she told Evelyn. Ann. Well, hang on. How does she know where he lives? Same way as I do, you barn pot. It's in his letter. Summerhill Avenue, Walthamstow. That's in London. Do you know, I knew she'd been rooting through my dressing table drawers. That's how she's found out. All right. Oh, yes, it's all coming out now, isn't it? So he writes to you, does he, this fella Clegg, who you told me you'd left long since? Well, you've kept that very secret, if haven't you, lady? Oh, don't start. Yes, he wrote. He wrote to me a few times after I'd left him, asking me to come back. Well, you never told me that. I wonder why. And he wrote to me a couple of years ago, after he'd moved to where he's living now. <laughs> Just in case, he said. Well, that's very nice, eh? All behind my back. Oh, for God's sake, Les, you've no to be jealous about. More fool me. Well, anyway, I'm going after her. I'm going down to London on bus this afternoon. Oh, no, you're not. You're staying here, and that is final! Just you try and stop me. You might not give a damn about her, Toya, but I do. Is this OK for you, love? Yeah, it'll be fine. Thanks for the lift. Oh, you don't know where Lightning Stone is, dear. Search me, love. It's somewhere east of here, I think. Anyway, good luck. Hey, watch yourself. You're in the wicked metrolops now, you know.
Right, that's my paper, Bill. I shall cut down, but I seem to need my daily fix of newsprint. I'm just looking home. Leon, give us a packet of fags. Janice has gone mental, completely round the twist. Why? What have you done now? No, it's her. She's going traipsing off to London after our tire. She's taking time off work. It's not the money. I mean, who's going to get my tea? No more news of Toya, then. None of your business. So keep your nose out, Barlow. If it wasn't for you putting daft ideas in her head behind my back, she wouldn't have cleared off the way she has. Well, that's not how I see it. I'm just surprised she stuck it as long as she did. You what? So she's desperately keen to learn to make something of her life. Have you ever given her any encouragement? No. You're asking for an uncle sandwich, pal. Yeah, your answer to every problem. If I were you, I'd ask myself why she needs to find a different father. And I'd be helping Janice to find her and bring her back home. But I don't suppose that's even entered your head. He can't talk to me like that. He just did. And it sounded like he made a lot of sense, too. Oh, not you as well, Leanne. Why is everyone getting at me? Oh, don't be thick, Dad. Our toy has gone missing and you don't give a toss. No, she has not gone missing. According to Janice, she has gone to visit her father. That's all. Who? A fella she hasn't seen since she was in nappies. A fella who's never come anywhere near her. You're the only proper dad she's ever had. Yeah. Well, putting it like that, yeah. Better have this. Is it for your place? No, the office. Oh, right. I've told Kevin, by the way, about you and me. What? You mean... Oh, no, no, just about the business partnership. Though I would like to be able to tell him everything. Well, don't. Not yet. How do you take it? The way he takes anything that shows him I want a life of my own. Sort of baffled amazement. Watch it. Hi, Kevin. Hiya. Hello, Kevin. You having one? Yeah, well, love, thanks. Uh, pint for Kevin, please, Vera. Right, love. Thanks. Well, I gather Sally's put you in the picture. She has, yeah. Just want to ask you how come you pick Sally as a partner. Is it because she's got money? Kevin! No, it's a reasonable question. That comes into it, of course it does, but it's not the main reason. Sally's ambitious, she's efficient, she's clever. Well, you know all that. Only you don't really, do you, Kevin? Hey, hello. Here. Yeah. How did you go on? Well, I called in the broad open the bottom dog, had a word with Bobby Frost, Billy Garside. I told them that Alex's share of the business was up for sale. Yeah, any takers? Well, they both more or less said the same thing. If anybody buys half share in a pub, wants his head feeling. Oh. Split ownership, they said. Always, always ends in tears. Oh, Chuck, what are we going to do? We'll have no home, no job. Why did we get mixed up with that flaming Alec Gilroy? I heck, they know how to charge. Mm. Audrey Roberts was saying I ought to have an engagement ring. An engagement ring? At our age? Nice big diamond solitaire, she said. Oh, no, ridiculous. An engagement ring at our time of life. <laughs> We'd be laughing stocks. Well, we wouldn't want that, would we? We would not. <laughs> of course, I mean, if you if you've set your heart on one, I mean, uh, only have to say. No. Oh. No, we're looking at wedding rings, aren't we? For the time being. Hi, hi. <laughs> if you see anything you like, it doesn't matter whether I like it or not. Of course it does. Now, which of them would you go for? Well, I've never really liked the heavy-looking ones. I don't know why. And the, the thin ones, you see, I always think look like proper wedding rings. I mean, some of these thick ones here look like they should be holding up a pair of curtains. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, the thicker ones cost more. <laughs> well, that... Do you know, that never occurred to me. No, I didn't think it did. Uh, no. no, you choose whatever you fancy. Of course, I mean, if you've got something that you're sentimental about already, I mean, so, so some women are like their mother's wedding ring, don't they? Yes. I haven't got one, though. Tell you what I do have, though. What? Two wedding rings from my previous marriages. I mean, what do I need a third one for? Oh, no, no, Rita. I mean, let me rings other fellas give you. No, no, I want you wearing mine. But not a thick one. Do you know? 
I sometimes think I'm losing my grip. I mean, what are we doing? Study and looking at retail prices with the contacts I've got. I know just the fella. He's a friend of mine in the wholesale trade. <laughs> yes, I'll give him a tinkle. <laughs> Leave it with me, Rita. Well, at least we had a nice lunch. I'm coming with you, and that is final. Hang on. You were mourning because she said I'd be losing wages. Well, you will be an all if we're not back before tomorrow morning. Well, it's more important things than money. Don't give me that. You want to come because you're jealous. Give over. Oh, yeah, because you think that when me and Ronnie Clegg get together, they'll be hanky-panky, don't you? It better not be. Oh, yeah, like you were hoping for with that Moira. Well, I'm not a tomcat like you. Hey, I can hear you two out on the street. Yeah, well, it's your flaming father. He wants to come to London with me because he doesn't think I'll be able to behave myself. I'm coming because of our trial. Because I'm just as worried about her as you are. Oh, well, good for you, Dad. Thank you. It's good to see that not everybody in his family thinks I'm a tow rag. Right. Well, have it your own way. Come on, let's get to that bus station. You going out? Don't tell me. You're meeting Greg Keller. Yeah, that's right. You've been working with him all day. You went to the pub with him at lunchtime. What the hell you got left to talk about? We can't discuss setting up a business at work, Kevin. Or in the pub. We'll talk here, instead of going out all the time. Have your important discussions here. Oh, yeah, with the girls running riot. They'll hear ourselves think. You would if I took them in the front room? Put a video on for them? What's wrong with that? OK, OK, I'll tell Greg to come round here, then. If you want to be petty about it, and it keeps the peace. Thank you. Incidentals. That's what does the damage at weddings. I said, that's what pars it on. Your floral requisites, your cars, your caterers... Yes, your yes, yes, all right, Fred. Now, for a young chap, you could call that a reasonable investment. He might be married for 40 years. That doesn't work out too bad per year. But take you. What are you forking out for? Might be just a few months, a chap of your age. Yes. Well, if you'll excuse me, Fred, I'm keeping my bride-to-be waiting. Aye. She'll have to get used to that, I dare say. What was Fred on about? Oh, wedding expenses. Oh. Of course you know why, don't you? He lashed out and then his bride decamped after, what, a week, was it? I haven't told Mavis yet, you know. About us, I mean. I'm dreading it. She'll tell me I need me head examining. Yeah, she never liked me. And I don't know why, because I've never employed her, you know. Hey, she won't be coming to the wedding, will she? Well, of course. She's my oldest friend. I want all my old pals there. Oh, well, in that case, I'll have my old pals there and all. You haven't got any old pals. I have. Who? Apart from a few old relics you used to have on your books, like dog acts and lightning cartoonists and balloon twisters. I know who I'll get to be best man. Mm -hmm. Wally Murphy. Wally? Who's Wally Murphy? Wally Murphy. Murphy's educated chickens. <laughs> Finest hen act that ever was. Did you never see it? No, I'm happy to say. Oh, it was a wonderful act. You know, in their prime, they could have clucked Mendelssohn's wedding march for you. <laughs> in, in unison, <laughs> like, you know. Right, so if you can get us one. Right, OK. I hope you don't mind me saying, but, um, Anne Malone, don't you think you're being a bit offhand with her? Suppose I am, yeah. Well, she seemed very nice to me. Yeah, but then again, you've not known her as long as I have, have you? Excuse me, is this Leightonstone? Do you know Thorns Road at all? Well, he might speak, I'll not bite. Alma, it's a long story, but Anne Malone went to a lot of trouble to get Eric Furman to sack me. Well, maybe she's a nicer person than she used to be. Well, there was a lot of room for improvement. 
Look at this, I'm very dope with. It's enough to turn a barrel of ale sour. Just excuse me a minute, I'll be right back. Right, okay. Uh, might I just say, Rita, I wish you every happiness. Well, thank you, Fred. Aye. Though, I can't help feeling I could have been the man to make you happy. Well, we'll never know, will we? Aye. The saddest words of tongue or pen what might have been. But like I said, I wish you every joy. Though whether you'll get any joy of Alec Gilroy, if you ask me, that's unlikely. <laughs> That'll be the day when you do us any favours. Vera, Vera, shut up, let the man speak his piece. Uh, no. Call me a sentimental old fool if you want, but here's the proposition. You sell me your half share of the business at a fair price. No. Listen, I haven't finished yet. On top of that, you go on working here, on wages. And on top of that, you go on living here just the same as you are now. Hang mm, about, hang about, hang about. You, you, want, you want to buy us out and then pay us to work for you? Exactly. And carry on living here? Yeah, you've got it. Where's, Where's the, the catch? catch? There's no catch, Vera. Anyway, that's the proposition. And though I say so myself, it's an exceedingly handsome one. In fact, some people would say I'm going soft in my old age. Anyway, you think about it while I get back to my good lady to be. I could murder a pint. Forget it. One pint, that's all I'm talking about. Look, you can do what you want, but I'm going straight round to Ronnie's and fetch you now with Toya, and I'm going now. Okay, okay, I'm coming with you. How far is it anyway? Oh, how the hell am I supposed to know? It's Wolverham Store. Summer Hill Avenue, Wolverham Store. Anyway, it's on tube. Come on, let's get going. All right, all right, but ease up, Jan. It's not life or death, is it? Daughter, I've run away from home to come and see you. You man, oh, clear off! Please, Dad, listen. I'm Toya, Janice's daughter. Your daughter, Toya. Can I come in? Only I've no money left. I'm hungry and I've got nowhere to sleep. Who's with you? Nobody on my own. Nowhere to sleep, huh? Yeah, well. You must come in. <laughs> <laughs> 